Hello everybody, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all doing well. Sorry there for the bad intro, but yeah. How are you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing well. My name is Azure Paradise and welcome to the Hono oh My God League Tournament Cycle number six, season number three. And today we're in day number two in semi-finals round number one, which is gonna be Big Ego Crew against Las Minitima in the finals number one. And I'm joined here by the one and only BKB and Chill, aka Alex. Alex, how are you doing today? Uh, doing very well, thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic and I'm very, very excited for today's uh, games and especially with the new teams that are showing up such as Last Minute Team and uh, Orcs of New Earth. And very two new faces or new teams that we're seeing in uh, the cycle. Yep, they certainly are. Um, I'm noticing that uh, Absentia has uh, been a replacement for the new support for Hellborn. So it'll be interesting to see how he plays. Um, Big Ego Crew staying with the same lineup and they go with the chipper at the first pick. Yeah, and then the Midas on uh, the Halbon. And I mean, yeah, Shipper, we've seen Big Ego Crew with the shipper, especially on Mix, many, many times. So that's nothing new, but. Okay, that's a new pick, though. I've never seen them play Geomancer, unless it was a scrim thing, but in a tournament, I've never seen them do that before. No, I don't think I've seen Geomancer either. Geomancer is obviously a fantastic hero. Um, does have the invis scouting ability, has a long range stun. Uh, can be a bit of a nuisance in the lane with its, re with its range auto attacks. I think it's quite a surprise pick, but one that I'm quite keen to see how they how they utilize. Indeed, and then a Tundra and a Midas coming out. And the bands are as usual. It's a Moira, Engineer, poor Magmas, and then Moraxis. Yeah, it's a fairly standard band. Um, Raxus, very good band, um, especially against the Chipper because it can obviously absorb the rockets. Um, Moira, very, very useful when Mex plays it. Engineer, very solid band. Magmus, nothing too surprising. Um, as we do see, obviously, Rally and uh, Tundra picked up. Tundra, a hero that I'm a massive fan of. I think it's very, very good if you put it in the middle lane. Very good uh, 1v1 hero. Obviously, obviously, the bird for scouting and uh, yeah, lots of. Lots of long range damage. Yeah, lots of mobility, lots of... Uh, like, uh, Thunder is great. He has a farming mobility, he has a, he has a very long stun, he ha has a lot of things to offer for the team. Especially as a mid-hero, he's incredibly powerful and strong. And then a Vindicator after the Tundra. Yep, Vindicator, no surprise, especially against the Rally. Just being able to use potentially cast a Glyph and his ulti when Rally wants to use his combo. Um, I do like it against spellcasters like Geomancer and Chipper as well. I think that you know those heroes obviously do rely on using their abilities um, and displaying as much magic damage as possible. So if you can get the silence in at you know the appropriate time, it does kind of mm. counteract those heroes to an extent. Although I don't think he will be that much of a hero if it was, for example, a tri lane coming out from Big Ego Crew and with the Rally, Geomancer, and Shipper, for example, if they were a top lane, I really doubt that the Vindicator would be a great of a pick, because his silence won't last that long, and it just needs a hatchet, which we see a hatchet on Volca every single time. If he's suicide mid, where it, no matter where he is, he always has a hatchet. So as soon as Vindicator places the book, he's just going to hatchet it, and that silence will not save that Vindicator, nor anyone in his team, unless it's late game. But even then, if they just focus him just a tiny little bit, he won't be that effective, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure about the Vindicator pick, to be honest, because I feel like at early early game, he's not effective at all, especially against the Legion lineup so far. It is effective in specific points where they're initiating on somebody, but other than that, if they are getting initiated on, unless he has his ulti, I don't think he can offer much in the early stages, but yeah. Yeah, it's a very good point you bring up. I think with Vindicator, it's all about positioning and placement. Um, I think if you're a support player that has the ability to, you know, kind of move around the map quite cleverly, um, position well in team fights, etc. I think the hero can be incredibly useful. But um, if you, you know, if you go frontline with Vindicator, if you get caught or picked off early, it does make it very difficult to take a team fight, obviously, because the hero is very squishy, dies very quickly, and uh, yeah. But um, Pebbles and Dark Lady picked up now. Dark Lady is an interesting pick. Um, no definitely a comfort pick for Zephyranth. Um, I think that it's going to be obviously very useful as it progresses into the mid to late game with the Shrunken and Vroom Cleaver. Um, but I think the Legion lockdown, especially with the Malakan, I think it could be potentially too much. But um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. 
So yep, yes indeed. And this is I feel like this has been the fastest picking phase we've ever seen. We we couldn't even have a chance to talk about the second bands, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're just oh, gonna jump gone. into it, I guess. <laughs> thinking this, thinking exactly the same. Yeah, so how do you think, if you look at Hellborn's team, how do you think they're going to line up? Especially with the Tundra, the Vindicator, the Dark Lady, and obviously the Parasite Woods. How do you think they're planning to lane this? Do you think they're planning to do two in the short lane with the Suicide? Yep, looks like a Suicide Midas. Uh, what do you think of what we're seeing at the moment? So it's going to be the Midas suiciding and then the Parasite, sorry, the Vindicator and Dark Lady at the short lane, huh? I mean, honestly, I am not so sure. That's a lot of silence, that's for sure. They're going to be facing a... It seems like they're going to be facing a rally suicide and possibly a uh, shuriken just roaming. But no, he's actually going to lane with him because he has the orb. So they're going to be facing a rally. And uh, I mean, to be honest, if the Vindicator fails just a tiny, teeny little bit, if he's out of position... I believe that that would be a dead Vindicator. I don't think he's going to survive um, the combo of Rally Geomancer. No, um, I think Rally, G Rally and Rally and Geomancer are a very interesting dual dual matchup in the long lane. Um, you've got Rally with the auto attacks, which are melee, and then you've got Geomancer with the ranged attacks. And I like the fact that they've got a lot of harass potential with the um, the Geo and. Uh, Obviously, you have Rally with the Compel. Um, so they may want to go for kills. They may want to play passive. Um, it's difficult to call at this stage, but I think, especially against a Vindicator, it's probably more likely they're going to play quite safe. Going to try and pull and get farm where they can. I think Rally is going to go for the rune control as well. And uh, yeah, they may make some nice rotations into mid lane, um, trying yeah. to shut down the Tundra and give Pebbles a good start. Especially knowing Shurkan. Shurkan is a very, very very effective player and he likes to roam quite a lot so it's very expected for him to just absolutely dominate the map and another thing by the way if Parasite keeps a little bit close to the top lane uh, Volca and Shurkan are gonna struggle a little bit at the top lane I feel like because they have a TDL and a Vindicator they, they, they are killable very killable but not that easily killable because they both have silence they both have um sorry Vindicator has the disarm and TDL is a little bit tanky if she goes with maybe a Iron Shield and then perhaps a Mystic. So we'll see how it goes for them. Yeah, it's interesting. Obviously, if we look at Rally and Geo, both have escapes. Um, so for Hellborn to pick up a kill, I think they're going to be need to really be quite far placed out of position. Um, and when it comes to TDL and Vindicator trying to go, trying to go for kills. Um, yeah, they're going to find it quite difficult, so I think their lane's probably going to be quite even. Um, as we do see Rally jump on the Vindicator. Yeah, some initiation. The Rally Compel does hit on the Vindicator. Vindicator is getting quite low here. And one more auto attack and Vindicator does go down, but Geomancer is in a lot of trouble. He does have the dig up, although he does get out and a nice Compel from Rally stopping TDL from going in any further. And a power supply coming in with the health pot from the TDL. Yeah, yep, it, so that's, it, it, that's... Sorry, go on. No, no, go on, you go on. No, I was going to say, it's exactly what they wanted, you know, with the Rally and the Geomancer, as I was kind of kind of mentioning briefly. Um, the lane kind of comes down to positioning, so Vindicator was obviously caught slightly out of position. Geomancer goes in with a long wing stun combined with the Compel, and uh, with him being very squishy, it's uh, quite an easy kill for them together. Mm, indeed. And I think there was almost a kill at the top haste rune, but Shorkan did stun the first side and take the haste out of him. And I think they might be initiating here, but a nice silence coming in from Vindy, but he's in a lot of trouble right now. The dig does come out, he is stunned and locked down the compel from the rally, and this is just too much damage for the Vindicator to handle. And the haste Geomancer wants more blood, but he does not have enough mana to go into further. And it seems like we have some initiation going on at mid lane, but nothing too serious. Yeah, so speaking of mid lane, obviously Pebbles against Tundra. Who would you give the advantage to? 
To be honest, I am not quite sure. I feel like both heroes are very, very hard to kill as they are both quite tanky. For example, the Tundra is on 750 uh, HP and then 815 HP on the Pebbles. I don't think that neither can kill each other unless one of them does a massive mistake or has a DD rune or something very special like that or a gank. So, and last hit wise, I feel like they're quite the same as well. So I'm not. I really don't choose a side here. I feel like they both have to be on the same level. Yep. I was, I would agree with you. I think it's a very even matchup. I think it probably comes down to room control mostly. So you know, if you give a double, yeah, if you give a double damage or haste or something to set up um, on pebbles, he's probably going to be able to kill Tundra. Um, but yeah, you know, Tundra's very tanky, has got yeah, base damage. Yeah, and coming down on the TDL. TDL is getting quite low here, but I doubt she'll be in that much trouble. She does have the power supply, and th that does counter the uh, Geomancer W, which is Earth Grasp. So, yeah. yeah, so if you look at the GPM chart in that lane, you can see TDL barely on 200. So she's obviously finding it quite difficult, as we kind of expect when Legion do get the Bloodlust kill. Um, but Geomancer's at 270, Rally's at 320. Um, so I think the Dark Lady obviously just needs to kind of sit and play passive, pick up as many creeps as she can, and uh, obviously just stay, as stay alive as long as possible. Yeah, and some initiation, uh, or trial of initiation was happening on Vindicator, but Vindicator did dodge it. And there is a 12 charges power supply on the rally. He does compel on the TDL. TDL is still a little bit quite tanky though. Parasite is going further on the rally. Rally is getting quite low with the TDL and the Geomancer. There's a lot of potential of a lot of kills here. But Geomancer is the one who's end up gonna go down. And rally is playing very dangerous here. If, if he gets a compel, I think that is a kill on the TDL. But it's a little bit too far, I feel like. Should be a little bit careful here. Yeah, it was close. Um, just want to give some credit to Parasite for the rotation. Uh, very useful to obviously have a jungle like Parasite. Who can come in and help the short lane, especially if they're mm. struggling. Uh, picking up a nice kill on 2 who's obviously now dropped his GPM quite significantly. Parasite, unfortunately, is only at 200, so he's not farming particularly well. So I think if he can make up for it by ganking in the short lane, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be pretty effective. Would you prefer the Parasite to gank at level 1 in this game, or would you have you preferred him to just stay in his lane, or his lane, sorry, in his jungle and farm a little bit longer? To be honest, I'd rather he just stayed and farmed a bit longer. I think that, you know, if you are struggling in the short lane, um, yes, it's useful to have a Parasite, but he's probably thinking, okay, Legion have two escape heroes. Am I going to waste time ganking, you know, to a point where I may not be able to pick up a kill? Um, and if he goes to gank. TDL, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but TDL is no, getting quite low here. And the silence from Vindicate. And TDL actually decides to go in, which is, to be honest, quite questionable in my opinion. With the Iron Shield and the Power Supply of Rally, what do you think of that move? Um, to be honest, I'm not surprised. I think Zephyranthi is one of those players who likes to play quite aggressively when he's on carry. Um, I've seen him do it in lane phase. Quite frequently, where he'll often man up, he'll try and pick up a kill and then just die for it after. Um, so, with it being him, I'm not too surprised, but I don't think it was the best move. Obviously, because he's been struggling anyway, I think he just wanted to try and grab a kill to to pick up some more GPM. Um, but fortunately, he just managed to kill Rally, and uh, yeah, he suffers for it. Mm, yeah, and the bot lane, Malikin did use his ulti and sort of on the Midas and attempt to kill, but he survived on 10 HP, unfortunately. But yeah, but to, to be honest, um, at the top lane, I feel like TDL can just spam her hatchet and W to just last hit every single creep here. I don't think that she needs to get anywhere close to Rally or Geomancer, and I think she would be on a solid 300 GPM by now if she was doing that. Yes, she does have a Vindicator, she does have a Parasite that is capable of low-key carrying, being a semi-carry and helping her get some space mid-game to late-game and she can have that space to farm her Cleaver and then maybe farm some stacks with the help of Vindicator or Midas or etc. Because they have a lot of... their their lineup is very good, so Midas can clear up waves, Parasite can farm, Tundra can gank and farm, and Vindicator can gank and farm. Well, actually, like, just gank globally, even. And TDL can just farm, so I, I even, even know it. Uh, sorry, so, <laughs> uh, some initiation going on at the top lane by TDL 
And Parasite is actually ganking the Geomancer right now. Geomancer still has a dig though, and the compel, so... Yeah, this is what you were talking about at the beginning of the game, how Parasite did not want to gank because they both have escaping abilities, and now we see it. It's very difficult for Parasite to do anything in this lane. Yeah, um, that's a good point you bring up about TDL as well, when you say about the hatchet and the, uh, mm -hmm. the tank so And another really initiation going on on the Volca, aka the Rally. Rally is getting quite low, but the nice ult from Geomancer with the Compel does end up killing Parasite. And the nice nice rotation sorry, from Mix with the Shipper coming into the top lane. And the Tundra with the Invis is counter ganking the Shipper. Shipper does end up going down. The Geomancer does not have enough mana to dig or anything, but he does have the protection from Shipper. He does have enough mana now, but a little too late. Vindicator Silence does not end up hitting him. He does end up digging in a nice compel from the rally, saving Shurken, aka the Geomancer. This is not looking good for the lead help on side. No, I have to say fantastic um, team play from Volker and uh, Shurken. On the rally in the Geo, uh, the Geo ulti was uh, landing on two heroes, picks up the kill on Parasite. Yes, so many things going on at the bot lane from the Dutch Onage, aka the Malik and to the Midas, but Midas does survive. It is really hard to kill that uh, Midas, huh? <laughs> yeah, Midas is a fantastic Suri, um, suicide hero. I like. I like the fact they put it suicide, but I think that against the Malekun, he's obviously not going to really pick up any farm. He's level 6, so he's getting some decent experience, but I would like to see the Midas perhaps rotate to top lane, try and pick up a kill on to Geo or the Rally, and just give TDL some time to time to recover, boost the GPM mm. yeah. as much as possible, because, you know, she's pretty much the only hope they have of winning, especially well, as it transitions to a mid to late game. I think it's going to be very difficult, because Pebbles just took a double triple stacks with Mix. It was a heavy and a medium camp, and he is now 150 gold away from his PK at a minute 10. That is quite impressive. He is yeah, sitting at 460 GPM, and the uh, the Tundra does initiate on the Pebbles with the Midas, and Pebbles does end up going down and losing some of that gold for that PK. So that's that PK is going to be a little bit delayed now. I'm pretty sure Seth is very unhappy with that, but it is what it is, I guess. To be fair, I can find I can kind of feel for him. You know, I play pebbles quite frequently, and when you get like a 50 to 100, yeah, and gold. the rally compel on the TDL with the nice dig from the short can, aka the Geomancer, and the Vindicator is gonna go down with the TDL. Unfortunately, it's just too much damage coming out for the top lane. They just simply cannot take it, and this is where I said that this is where my thoughts come in from TDL uh, maxing her W with her hatchet and just staying as far away as possible from Rally and Geomancer and just farming every single creep with the hatchet and uh, her W. Yep. This is where I think, uh, that came from. I think a lot of the, you know, uh, the way that Legion are playing, particularly because they're quite aggressive on top lane, I think a lot of that comes down to experience. You know, we've seen Volker and Shawkan play, to play together for a very long time now. Um, mm. And they are so, so strong in lane. Um, Especially when you give them the heroes that they're very good with, such as you know, such as Rally on Shawkan and then, sorry, Rally on uh, Volker and then Geomancer with uh, Shawkan, which he tends to play um, sometimes in TMM. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm thinking with regards to obviously I've said the playing the Vindicator and then Zephy on the Dark Lady. I'm not too sure how frequently they've been playing together. Okay, okay, the rally to the TDL and Pebbles with the surprise peak has shown it for the first time on the TDL. TDL does end up going down. Vindicator is in a lot of trouble, but the tree spot with the shadow does it make him survive for a really long time now. A nice disarm from Vindicator, but it is actually enough to save the Midas. Midas is alive. The rally and the Geomancer does end up going down. Pebbles does initiate on the Midas and finish him. He's quite tanky though on 1200 HP. He is very, very difficult to kill, and he's looking for more blood. He does have enough mana for speaking. He does have enough mana for everything. He does, uh, man, like he does miss the stun in the end with a nice TP attempt. But the bird is there. They do see him, but no stuns from the Hellbound side, except for the uh, Midas and the Tundra's ulti, and that's an easy TP for Satellitium. And uh, he got the PK quite earlier than I expected after his death, to be honest. I did not even see that coming, and I'm watching the game from Spectator Mod. And a nice initiation going on at the top lane from Geomancer and the Rally, and yet again, the same story is repeated for the poor TDL, and uh, it's not looking good for TDL, man. 
No, it's not. Um, she's only five times now. 170 GPM. Definitely not where you want your Dark Lady to be. Um, mm -hmm. But it just comes kind of back to the point that I was saying about the experience of Volga and Shawkan. So, so strong when they go long lane together. Um, and yeah, doing exactly what they need to do. Keep the Dark Lady shut down. Vindicator's not really having much impact at the moment. Um, and the pebbles with the PK, I think it's just going to get worse, to be honest, for Hellborn. Um, yeah. You know, Satellisium is a very active ganker, so uh, I think he'll be roaming uh, around the map. There's a, like a gank going on at top lane right now with the Tundra, and Busy does end up outing the Geomancer. Geomancer is getting quite low, with a nice silence from Vindicator on the Volca, aka Rally, and the Vin Parasite ulti, but the Compel on the downhill is going to make him survive. Mix is there to counter. Gank the Parasite, but it does not seem like he's gonna keep going, and Pebbles going on at the bot lane, trying to kill the Midas with a nice combo, and Midas just uses the power supply, making him in 10 HP, he's gonna survive that, Midas just respond with a stun, and the TP, is he gonna be able to make it? Yes, he will! And Midas is alive, um, look, look at the bottom lane, did you see that how Midas just survived there? I did. Uh, this is a thing I've noticed in a lot of players. When they chase a player in Shadow, they don't click A, which is the command attack, and then they click on where they want to go. They click M or the right click, which is move. Yeah. Have you ever tried that and like click attack and then go to the shadow, which means that uh, my hero will attack whatever it comes to. So as soon as I see him out of the shadow, my hero is just going like, to attack him immediately. Speaking of yep. some initiation going on the top lane with the nice power supply from Volka does make him survive for quite a while, but unfortunately it is not enough. DDL is going down very quickly to have HP right now. Pebbles does initiate, he was very patient there waiting for someone to get close to him, but the TDL is the important target. I mean, not that important anymore, 190 gold from killing the TDL, but yeah, he does end up killing him without getting another kill on anyone else or doubling the combo. To be honest, I would still class TDL as an important target, even though she's kind of a very poor game. Yeah, of course, yeah, very but poor like, game at the moment. Yeah. Right now, I feel like he is not the top most important for me as a Pebbles. If I was Sate, I would prioritize killing Chandra over TDL, because he's the only one with the capability of turning this game or doing anything in this game. And uh, the course. second yeah, one yeah. would be Midas, in my mind, but I am not like an immortal player, so might be mistaken. <laughs> no, 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 I do I do agree with you, but I just, I still think going for TDL at every opportunity is just the way to go. Um, TDL would die to a four pebbles combo because she has no vestments, mm. she has no HP items, so yeah, yeah TDL on vision is the, you know, is the target you want to go for. Um, even a pick on to Parasite would be pretty useful just to kind of keep him shut down because he's still struggling. Yeah, and uh, some speaker attempt or initiation attempt on Tundra there. Did he have a ward? That was actually a random attempt on him. Oh, interesting. Uh, there's a hero we haven't spoken of this entire game. Smashing he just the, uh, smashed the tower. Malikan. Yep. Yeah, Malikan. Yeah. Uh, Dutch is uh, yeah, probably having a lot of fun in this game. He's in a 610 GPM without taking part I feel in the like kill. His board, maybe somebody um, should like get some fun in this game. Yeah, to be fair, like Legion are uh, just playing the game to exactly how they want to. They want Dutch to free farm. They want him mm. to you know get his his core items before he joins the team fight, and then they're probably yeah. going to look to end the game soon. Um, obviously. We've got Pebbles with PK, Geomancer with PK, Rally with PK, you know, Chip is there obviously for the Rockets and the Ultimate and the, uh, yeah, the Focus Buffer. So I think they're going to probably group up fairly soon as we do see a jump. On the Parasite, by the way, Parasite is going to go down quite quickly. Yeah, he's not going to survive even with the Vindicator ulti. Not much to see there. No. So if you're playing on Hellborn, what do you think they would need to do to get back into the game? Honestly, I, I don't know. Like, don't because. Know. The reason behind that, okay, so one thing I would think of right now, why aren't they smoking to Malikan? Malikan has been unthought of this entire game, and I feel like he, he's in a lot of positions where he's capable of dying, but it's just they're not thinking of him whatsoever, like they even forgot him, and initiation going on at the bot lane, but the Vendi does respond with a nice silence and disarm, but TDL will fall, it is unfortunately not enough for him to survive, and the Malikan with the ulti, and the slam attempt from the rally, but Malikin is gonna go down very quickly here. Is he gonna, with the lessons, he does end up going down. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. He is easily killed. 
He's not the Malekin we used to know. I mean, he's level 15. Yes, he does have the magic armor of the old Malekin before the update, but he's still easily killed. And this is why I'm confused, but some more initiation even going on from the Shortcan to the Parasite. Parasite does end up going down with a nice compel from the rally, and they do end up finishing the Vindicator. And a nice stun by Pebbles with the nice ulti from the Geomancer. And the Midas does end up going down. The communication on team uh, Big Eagle crew has just always been impressive. This just the rhythm is incredible, honestly. Like the way they play there after the TP and everything always impressed me, honestly. But going back to what we were talking about, which is what would they do, is gank the Malikan. I feel like it's the only option they have. They don't have anything else to do. And honestly, I don't think it will win them the game because. There's so much out of control, and what I mean out of control, the Pebbles is out of control, the Rally is out of control, the Malikin is out of control, even almost the Geomancer is out of control, so it's very difficult for them to come back, even if they shut down the Malikin, there's still the Pebbles, the Rally, to shut down as well. So how they're gonna do that when they're in their position right now. So this is why I am really not sure what they're capable of doing anymore. Even if they ganked the Malik and even if they killed him five times in a row, I don't think it's gonna matter. He still has his Hyper Crown anyways. He's gonna deal a lot of damage in the fights. It's not yeah, like he yeah. doesn't have a single item or anything, you know? So it's very difficult to tell. Honestly, I have no clue what to do here. Like, I have no idea. Yeah. Just going back to your point where you said about Smoke ganking him, the Malikan early, I think they were just worried that Chipper would sit behind with the focus buffer and then they would try and gank him and Malikan would turn and pick up maybe one or two kills. That would probably be my guess. Um, I think they were probably quite focused on trying to save the Dark Lady um, and mm -hmm. trying to recover her farm as well. So yeah. I can understand why they didn't gank Malikan. Um, I think Vision might have been another issue as well because Vindicator was struggling to get outside. Vindicator going on with the Tundra, but the Vindicator does respond with a nice ulti in a silence with the disarm. The Tundra does end up turning on the Pebbles. Pebbles is getting quite low, but Shurkan does respond to the Tundra. Tundra does end up going down and the mix is here. Okay, the Shipper Rally does end up initiating with his PK and a nice compel on both the Fireside and the Vindicator. Geomancer does end up initiating with a blind stun on the Midas. Very impressive stun and Mulliken's here. Is he gonna ulti? Yes, he does possession to both the Fireside and the Midas and Dutch Ownage dealing a lot of damage getting both the what was it? I think it was the Midas and the Parasite down, and TDL is the only one that is alive, pushing the bot lane, trying to get some farm, but now they're going on the Kongor. This is getting out of hand. Yeah, a lot I faster. Think, um, it is. Volker spots a double damage. I think he wants Dutch to take it, but Dutch is like, no. So he's going to take it, and they're going to take Kongor, and to be honest, I think this is probably the beginning of the end. I think. Yeah, there's not really anything I want to do to recover. Tundra is at 3.30 GPM, which is nice on your mid hero, but if everyone else is suffering, Dark Lady is barely above 200. All of Legion here is above 300. You've got Malik at 600. Pebbles at 500. I think, yeah, it's going to be uh, coming to a close probably fairly soon, but, you know, I might eat my words. Mm. And Malikan does barely TP out of the. Uh... Hellbaw Nations, and now he's going to the Hedera Congo, and now he's gonna get a token and two stacks on his entire team, so that's not overkill whatsoever, no. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, they might be looking for pushing the racks after this one. Top lane does seem like the easiest lane to go for right now. Yeah, um, I think they're gonna gather and probably go top. Maybe even mid to take the mid tower, just for a bit of extra gold, but... Just want to point out the items um, on Legion. I think everyone's bought exactly what they need. I like the Gnome's Wisdom on Geomancer. I love the tablet, um, especially against Vindicator and the Midas. Um, Rally's looking to build a staff. Pebbles has spell shards. He's going to build a staff uh, mm. at some point as well. So, uh, yeah, they've, you know, they're building. They either have or they're building towards everything they need. And I think they're just going to look to group yeah. up uh, very shortly. Yeah. Actually, Alex, I want to ask you a question. What do you think of Alchemist Bones on one of the Legion side, one hero of them, this game? Um, I think if... Oh, you see some initiation bot lane on yeah, Parasite? initiation bot lane on the Parasite. I don't think he's gonna survive this one, unfortunately. Run, Parasite! Oh my god, what a nice ulti by Parasite. That was actually pretty sweet, not gonna lie. That was actually pretty sweet from Parasite, but unfortunately it is just not enough for him to survive, but very, very well played by uh, Noob McNoob, to be honest. I did not expect no, that coming. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I didn't either. Nice, nice attempt from him. Um, some light entertainment there, which is always good.
Um, but yeah, you said about the Alka Bones. Mm. Was that for, for Legion, yeah? Yeah, oh, just one sec. Um, because the thing is, every time I see Shorkan or Dutch or any 2K MMR player talk about Alchemist Bones, they always mention it as such a such a bad item. So I was wondering, you as a 2K player, what do you think of Alchemist Bones against the Parasites? Just one, one hero on your side. What do you think of that? I think it's perfectly viable. I think it's, to be honest, this game, I think it's a waste of time because Parasite was having a bad game anyway. Mm. It's, it's one, 154, his impact's very low, GPM is very low. You know, if I was on Legion's Discord, I wouldn't be there thinking, oh my god, let's kill Parasite, we need to get some bones. It's True. a case of, it's just a kind of bonus if they were to pick it up. And some Loki initiation happening, and Dutch Owners is getting really low, but it does not matter. He has a token, and Pebbles does initiate on the TDL. TDL does end up going going down and Dutch is actually still alive with the Geomancer nice initiation on the Tundra with the rockets from Mix and the ultimate finishing the Tundra and Tundra and TDL are down but the Tundra and TDL actually do buy back in the end Volka is in a lot of trouble but he does compel himself out and Malikin still has the, the token he does initiate on literally everybody and everyone is just melting down at this point Midas, Parasite, Tundra and TDL does end up going down and that's the GG vote coming out from team Last minute, Tima, sorry, and that's a 1 for 0 for Big Ego Crew. GG well played for uh, Big Ego Crew. Yeah, GG. Um, they executed the game plan just how they wanted to. The heroes they picked up, we see all the time. Um, I'm quite surprised that Chipper wasn't banned, um, or even Rally, because I think they are obviously extremely, uh, extremely effective. Um, and I think a lot of it comes down to the draft, to help on draft is a little bit kind of I'm unsure about the parasite pickup to be honest. I think mm. it gives you know, especially when you've got a Geomancer and Raddy's hot plane, it's not the most useful. Um he did pick up one kill which was nice, but uh, you know that top lane was probably the reason why they won the game anyway. So the parasite didn't work out how they wanted to. Um and then Dark Lady, you know, you need to secure as much farm as possible and Legion's team was just too active and too dominant for her to really recover. True. Uh, yeah, they, they did, they did, like, okay, so what I was trying to say, the, the early phase of the game, they did play it very, very, very well. They dominated every single lane, especially top lane. Top lane just did so, so well. They stopped the TDL, and I feel like there was a lot of, and don't want to say mistakes, I feel like it's very, very difficult to play against the Rally Geomancer lane. That's that's for sure. Like nobody can deny that. It was a very, very difficult lane to play against. But I feel like they could have played it a little bit safer. They could have played it a little bit smarter. But I feel like the main reason all like uh, this absolute domination happened at the early stage of the game was because of the picking phase. And it, just the lineup of Legion against the lineup of Hellbon was just way, way more superior. The, like, the Legion uh, picks were way, way more superior than the picks of the Hell 1, unfortunately. And that's just my opinion. I don't know. I might be mistaken, but yeah. Um, I, I'm 100% with you. I think uh, Legion definitely won the draft. And um, with the experience they have as well, they just executed it exactly how they, how they needed and they wanted to. Um, and then, obviously, if we look at the GPM charts. Every hero has got farm. Um, so, yeah, Hell 1, yeah, outplays and outpicked. Yeah, that is indeed, and like this this was game number one, by the way, this is a best of three, so uh, stay tuned for uh, round number two, we're going to be right back in about five to ten minutes, and uh, yeah, we'll see you then.
Hello, good afternoon everybody, welcome. Hello, good afternoon everybody, welcome to game number two of Last Minute Team vs Big Ego Crew. Um, we're here in the semi-finals after Big Ego Crew did take game number one fairly comfortably. I'm, my name is BKB and Chill, I'm joined by my co-caster Hansi Pro. Hansi, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, I'm looking forward to some good games. I hope we can come to an end like with a game three or something like that, that would be really fun to see. Yeah, thank you for you to get a, obviously a nice comeback.
from last minute team. I think it would make up, make and set up for a nice game three. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing a bit more of an even game this time. Um, as we do go into a few bands to begin with, we do see the Engineer band and the Flux band from time to die um, against Big Ego Crew. And then Shawkan does return with the Magmas band. What do you think about these bands to begin with? Um, I think they're very common bands. The Flux Engine band is always really good to ban because uh, we've seen a lot of big eager crew playing the flux and engineer on a uh, shuriken uh, and mechs and it's a really deadly combo so getting those out of the game is like really comfortable for the other team and the magmus is just always a good ban here because you can roam around the whole map and set up uh, kills on middle lane as well yep i definitely agree with you i think you know all four bands are fairly standard at the moment i think engineer flux is very scary um as we go into the first pick from my last minute team time to decide to pick up the rally um are you a fan of seeing rally first pick i would actually like to see uh them pick out the Moraxis right now because moria's banned and Moraxis has been really shining the last few, few cycles um uh, it's a really strong hero you don't see it a lot on tmm but in tournaments it just shines it's it's super good to send alone and with the Moria out of the, the hero pool, like, it's, yeah, I, I don't see why you shouldn't pick it up. Yep, I definitely agree. I think Raxus would be a strong pick. Um, we do see a Luna, we see Chipper and Electrician. So, Big Eager Crew are opting for Chipper, which is a standard first pick for them. Um, very, very solid hero. You've got loads of harass, you've got the focus buffer, you've got lots of um, team saving potential with that. And uh, yeah, the Sword Blades obviously do lots of damage in team fights. And then we do see a Kinesis and Bubbles as well. What do you think about those two? Um, I mean, the Kinesis is always good if you, like, now they picked up Bubbles and Rally on the, uh, uh, on the other team. So I, I would say picking up Kinesis is always good because you have a lot of Qs you can steal from the, the team right now, uh, which will be very good for you. Like Bubbles Q, Rally Q, Mac Miston. So th those are the type of Qs you want to steal if you have a Kinesis on the team. Yep, I like Kinesis. I like, especially like Kinesis is if you have a compel or as you say a shell surf, just because you can jump in, you can set up, and you can try and lift a hero, which could lead into a kill. Um, we're seeing a few carries banned now, so we're seeing the Ugi, we're seeing the Hammerstorm, Sam Wraith, Swift Blade. Let's just talk about the Sam Wraith. Do you think the Sam Wraith is a viable ban, or do you think it's something that should have been left in the hero pool? I think it's something that should have been left in the hero pool, to be honest, because. Um... We've seen Sandwraith in previous cycles, and it hasn't really shined. Even though you get a lot of farm on it, it seems like uh, the teams haven't been able to really play around it a lot. Um, when you have a Sandwraith on the team, you need to be able to set up kills with four people. You have the Sandwraith ulti that can follow up, of course, which is super strong. But, I don't know. Um, when pe people picked up Sandwraith, it seems like he's just been counterpicked by Predator, and he just seems to... Eat him, up, eat him up, so I don't know. Yeah, Sam Wraith is one of those heroes. I am quite a big fan myself of Sam Wraith, especially if you can get the farm on him. I think he's used for mid -get, well, pretty much all stages of the game. As soon as he hits level 6, he can have a good impact in the early game. Mid game with his Thunderclaw, he can obviously roam around to try and sort, pick up farm and sort out some ganks uh, with some help teammates. Um, I'm looking at the ban on Tempest, which was played yesterday by Noob McNoob. Um, had a very good game on Tempest in the uh, the 80 minute game. Do you think Tempest was worth the ban, or do you think it's something they could have left out? I think Tempest is actually really worth the ban right now because uh, we've been trying a lot, uh, like we've been seeing it a lot in scrims as well. Tempest just seems to, if you play correctly, it just seems to shine. You can send him jungle when you get level six or seven. Uh, just send him top lane, stop the carry from farming, push out the towers. Having a third man, if you're running 2-1-2, two, two, uh, like with the solar bottom uh, and the Tempest in jungle, and sending a third man top to disrupt the carry's farm is, just always seems to be really strong. Yeah, so speaking of the jungle, as you mentioned, um, last game we did see the power site jungle played by Noob McNoob. Um, he is not going to be playing jungle this game. Um, so they're going to be transitioning to more of a traditional laning phase, which I think would be a good idea because the Parasite did really work out very well last game. Um, and we do see the Pebbles picked up, which is going to be played mid lane by Satellitium, um, one of his, definitely one of his comfort and stronger heroes. Um, and we also see a Puppet Master. Malikin. And your... a Malikin. And a Malikin. What do you think about the Puppet Master, first of all? 
Uh, Puppet Master is really, really strong. Uh, I just have to say this right, like, right off the bat. Um, Puppet Master is strong in Team M. He's strong in scrims. He's strong in tournaments. If you get a good farm on Puppet Master, you can just melt in and carry super fast. Um, it has good reliability on the lane. To me, it looks like they're going to run a try lane with the Let's setup they have. Um, I, don't, I don't reckon they would send uh, two melees together or a melee with a bubbles on a lane. So for me, it's looking like a Captain's rally, puppet, a lunar lane maybe with Pharaoh middle and bubble suicide, but I don't know. Yep, so if we look at Hellborn's lane to burst the wall, we do see the Kinesis support and the Malakin, which I do like. I like the fact that Kinesis can steal a Q and that makes him obviously a much stronger laner. Um, if you take a look at middle lane, obviously Satellism is going to be there on Pebbles, facing up against the Bubbles. Yeah. Who would you give the advantage to in a Bub versus Peb matchup? Um, for me, if Bubbles plays it correctly, I would give it to Bubbles. Um, it's hard for the Pebbles to set up a combo on the Bubbles if Bubbles positions himself all the time. He can dodge the stun um, somewhat. Like, uh, the Pebbles stun is funny because it lasts a little bit longer than you would expect most of the time. So if he gets level 2, take cover, he would be able to uh, cover through the whole duration of the stun and he would be able to dodge it. But if it's only level 1, he will... Uh, end up taking some damage uh, at the end of it. But Pebbles will never be able to toss a creep, for example, at the Bubbles to harass or anything, because you can just take cover and dodge all the damage. You can also dodge his spells with the Q, uh, also really nice. So I'd say Bubbles is a decent Pebbles counter. Yep, I, just, I would agree. And I think that it's interesting how we don't see a hatchet picked up on Bubbles, which is... Yeah, quite surprising, especially when you're playing against Pebbles, he has such high base damage and his auto attacks are fairly smooth. Um, it's yeah, something that I wouldn't really expect. So I'd be interested to see how many last hits he does manage to achieve in mid lane. Uh, if it you looked... take a look at if you take a look at top, we can see a tri lane from Legion. So we can see a Luna, Puppet Master, and the Rally. They might be setting up a bloodless kill on to the Malikan. What do you think about this tri lane? Do you think it's fairly strong or do you think it's slightly I mean, you have, I mean, you have a lot of catch, actually. Uh, if the rally like, compels in and uh, stuns either the Malikin or the Kinesis, they're going to have a lot of damage because they have the Puppet Halt from Puppet Master and they have the follow-up stun from Aluna. And Aluna stealing the attack speed from Malikin so he can't heal up or anything is just really strong in general. Um, especially because Malikin didn't skill his sword. Uh, level 1, he, he went for heal W for more damage output and being able to heal from creeps, which is kind of greedy, uh, but they didn't know that they were facing a, a tri lane in it. Initiation there with the puppet show on to Malikun. Aluna comes in with a stun. Kinesis goes back in with a compel onto Aluna. Aluna's very low, being harassed down by the chipper with the rockets. Beck Chalkhanders pick up the kill on to Absentia. Kinesis does get a return picked off by Rally. Puppet Master also being harassed very, very low. So, uh, yeah, an interesting sequence of events. Yeah. Do you see the Bloodlust, bloodless, though, however, picked up on to the Chipper, which is... Uh, this what? is why we see Chipper really shine, like, in the early levels. Being able to send out all those rockets for, like, burst damage, poke damage. It's just... Yeah, sorry, mid lane Pebbles goes onto the Bubbles. Very low HP, but he is going to man up, and he does get the kill onto Noob, but Noob, so well turned there from Satellitium. Does pick up the, the kill. Um, and, uh, yeah, picks up a nice, nice juicy bit of goals. Yeah, Bubbles must have been caught out of position. I didn't really see the, the initiation of the Bubbles. Maybe he went in with Soul Show, got a little bit greedy, I don't know. Yeah, so Pebbles was really low. Um, I didn't see exactly what happened, but I saw Pebbles as he turned with the stun. So I think that Bubbles overcommitted. Pebbles saw the opportunity to return kill him. And obviously, yeah, picks up a really nice kill. Yeah. So if you look at bot lane, we can see the Pharaoh playing 1v1 and sitting at 310 GPM against the electrician on Volker. Volker is doing very, very well. 16 last hits. As we do see more initiation in middle lane. Fortunately, I missed it, but Pebbles and Mechs do pick up the kill onto Bubbles once again. So uh, yeah, really, really good start there yeah. from um, Peb in mid lane. This is why you need to be careful on the on bubbles, not being caught off by pebbles all the time. Or you're gonna start steamrolling, and you're gonna have a really, really hard time the rest of the game. 
Bubbles is a hero you can kind of recover on because of the shell shift and the W, but having a pebble to steamrolls and get an early PK, that's never a situation you want to get into. No. Do you think it would have been smart for Bubbles to take take cover before the silence, or do you think he yeah, made the right choice? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, being able to take cover from some of the damage from the stun or the toss, anything like that, it's just super important. Um, especially when you play against the Pebbles, like here Obviously, for example. Yeah, we see yeah. more initiation in the mid lane. Pebbles does go in for the combo, does a lot of damage to Bubbles, but Bubbles is going to be absolutely fine to survive with just under 200 HP. Pebbles is now using the bottom to regen up some mana. But no, just going back to the bottom lane quickly, we do see Electrician on 25 last hits, doing very, very well against the Pharaoh. Who would you give the advantage to in that 1v1 matchup? Electrician for sure. Uh, Electrician is just such a strong solo laner. Like, uh... Oh, sorry to interrupt, we see some more initiation in the top lane. The Puppet Master gets in with the Puppet Show, Rally unfortunately misses the Compel. Malika chucks the sword, does a little bit of damage, but he's going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, and Chiba wasn't even around to help them, so... Yeah, it just seems like with Legion, they just seem to be lacking a little bit of coordination. Maybe communication's off, uh, uh, Rally does compel out, he's being harassed and chased by the Chiba. Taking a few rockets to the face, taking a <laughs> few rockets to the face. It's a lot of damage. Yeah. I, w I would say um, the lineup top uh, favors Team Biggie crew. Uh, because of the Kinesis being able to steal the stun from the rally and having his secondary spell, the W, also does a lot of damage, applies a lot slower. And Chipper on the lane is just always strong. Like, it's in it's, Chipper is like Engineer. Uh, put Engineer on a lane, like, it's super hard to, to not uh, be super strong on that lane. Uh, I guess the same with Chipper. Yeah, I think both of the heroes with the skill sets just offer so much in so many kind of different ways. Um... I would like to point out though that even though the Legion tri lane is suffering slightly, they do have Puppet Master over 300 GPM. He's at 330, if you compare that to the Malekin who sat at 2, well, 190 GPM. Yeah. So the, uh, yeah, the farm is definitely going to the Puppet, as we do see a bit of a drop onto Malekin. But, uh, Kinesis turns with the Compel, Malekin chucks the swords. Puppet Master does have his four Steam Boots though, so he is relatively tanky and he is going to take a Health Potion to heal himself up. It's gonna be hard for the Malikin to uh, outlast at the Puppet with the Puppet's E ability. It does so much damage as well. Um, on top of that, Puppet is ranged, but I do think if Big Eagle decides to force some fights here, uh, they're gonna start steamrolling the top. Yeah, speaking of Puppet Master, do you think, in terms of his skill build, do you think it's most effective for him to max Whiplash, or do you think he would have done better with maxing the Disable, such as the Puppet Show, or even the Puppeteer's Hold? How would you skill build Puppet this game if you were playing in the tri lane? Probably maxing the W. Um, being able to turn a teamfight around with, for example, if Malekin jumps in, uh, being able to turn the Malekin to hit his teammates, put up some pressure damage. Yep, yeah, so bottom lane, we do see some initiation on to Pharaoh. Pebbles comes in, Electrician tank in the tower. Pharaoh is put up the Hellfire, so he's gonna take deal some return damage as he does eventually go down to a Volca. So Electrician picking up that kill, now sitting at 450 GPM. Pebbles with a nice haste through making the most of it. And we do see some more initiation top lane as they do go on to Manikin. Manikin chucks out the sword. He is going to survive with 40 HP as Pebbles does pick up a couple of kills. Is he going to get a third? No, Puppet Master is going to just about survive. He's very, very low. Does go down eventually and they do finish off the Aluna. So Vex on Kinesis does pick up a couple of kills as well. And that is a genocide, a very early genocide for Big Ego Crew. What are your thoughts on that? Cluster that was a sword? really good rotation from Satellition. Like, being able to go bottom, set up a kill there, and instantly port top and set up more kills. That's what you that's what you like to see from a mid player. Being all over the map. Like, he really oh, took... Lane, electrician's going down to the Fairy. Fairy's pushing out the Hellfire, and he does pick up the kill on to Electrician. So, I think Volk yeah. there was perhaps getting a little bit greedy. He didn't realize the potential for Fairy's damage. And, uh, yeah, nice uh, return kill from time to time. That was really important. Stopping Electrician early game from... Just free farming is always important because he can steamroll like so many other heroes. And if he starts getting his items, he can be really hard to kill. As soon as. Oh, um, 
Okay, so unfortunately, Hansi Pro has cut off from the car, so I'll be solo casting for a while until he returns. Um, but yeah, he was just mentioning about the electrician, obviously becoming very tanky and becoming quite a nuisance with um, a license build that he, I would expect him to go into a Gnome's Wisdom, possibly a Frostfield plate, um, just dealing out loads of loads of damage, um, loads of healing as well, um, just keeping himself alive as long as he possibly can and spamming the electric shield, which can obviously do quite a bit. Um, we do still see Puppet Master sitting at 360 GPM with the Steam Staff, so it looks like he's probably going to be building towards an Assassin Shroud. Uh, mid lane, if I take a look at Bubbles, Bubbles does not have the best of times, unfortunately. He's just, just got his level 7. He is teleporting to top lane, so it looks like Legion are about to set up a gank. As we see a puppet show onto Mannequin, Rocket comes out from Pharaoh. Pharaoh lands the old spell onto Mannequin, traps him, but Mannequin does get Kapow down and he's forced to throw away. However, Rally now goes on to Mannequin. We do see Pebbles come in with a combination. Mannequin ulti is on to Rally, just pick up the kill on Rally. And Pebbles is very, very low himself. Chipper is now dealing some damage with the Rockets and the Rass onto Bubbles. Bubbles is about to shell south away. We do see Kinesis chase on to a Luna, and we see the Toss come out. And Satellitium lands the Smackdown on to Absentia. So, uh, yeah, fortunately, no pit kills picked up from Legion. Um, they were very close to killing Pebbles and Malekin, but uh, Beaker crew escape very, very narrowly. Um, and we take a look at Electrician in the enemy woods, just farming some, farming some jungle camps. Um, Pebbles is also doing the same, so he is uh, yeah, looking to try and pick up the early PK. He's sat at 400 GPM, 1300 gold saved up, so he should be getting a PK relatively soon. And uh, yeah, going very, very well at the moment for Big Ego Crew. Um, similar to last game, lots of farm on Pebbles, um, lots of farm onto Volker as well, playing that tanky initiating hero. As we do see Pebbles waiting for top rune, I do wonder what he's going to get. Oh, we're just getting an illusion, so he's probably going to finish off some more stacks into the woods. Top lane, we see a sword throw come out from Mannequin. Aluna comes in with a stun, the puppet show for Puppet Master, who's compelled in. Is Mannequin going to die? Bubbles comes in with the kelp field, does lock him down, and they do finish off, and Puppet Master does pick up the kill. We do see now an ultimate onto Aluna. He says chucks her in the air. Electrician comes in with a stun, Chipper comes in from the side in the jungle. Pebbles unfortunately misses the stalagmites, and Legion do manage to escape, so... Yeah, nice one-to-one -one trade there. Um, something they will definitely take because Malikin was picked off. Um, he's only at 240 GPM as well, so he is not having the best of times. And uh, yeah, something that was definitely a trade in favour of Legion. As we do, you know, we'll take a look at bot lane. I can see Ferru just farming, trying to... He's got a Bracer picked up. Um, I do wonder if he's going to go for an Astrolabe. Um, I think Time to Die does like to buy Astrally on a few other heroes. I do think he's probably going to build a Hellflower at some point as well, just to obviously silence and you know try and shut down one of the one of the heroes from Hellborn. Um, but uh, yeah, just taking another look at Bubbles. Bubbles still has his red boots, not having the best of times. Bubbles farming the wave. I think he wants to go in here. Yeah, we just stunned the Bubbles. Lands a combination, chucks it back in. Yeah. Unfortunately, the compel misses from Mex and he does shell surf away. So, a little bit of lacking coordination there as we do go back into top lane. Leg chucks out a stun, immediately cancelled. Bug Master turns with the ultimate. Electrician taking very little damage and he's going to be absolutely fine. Um, actually, unfortunately, Time to Sight also misses the ultimate with the lack of range. But uh, yeah, it seems like Puppet Master is fairly close to that Shroud. He does have 400 gold saved up, 800 away from the final part. See some initiation on the electrician here, Puppet Show. Rally chucks up in the air, Rally is going to just about escape. Zephyranthi does die as well, so Puppet Master is also finished off by Volker on the electrician. And we do see some more action here. Aluna goes down as well. Pebbles comes in with the PK onto Pharaoh. Pharaoh just trapped his teammates. He is going to go down eventually. I don't know how long he's going to last, but he is trying to run for his life. Pebbles chucks a stun out and he does eventually die. So, yeah, nice team fighting game for Big Ego Crew. Very coordinated and um, doing what they do best. So they are now pushing towards the mid tower. Electrician is going to tank the wave, so the tower is probably going to fall at some point relatively soon. 
Puppet Master goes back to top lane, trying to farm as quickly as he can so he can pick up the Shroud. Shroud, I think, would be a good pick up here for Puppet, um, although I don't think it's going to be enough. I think Hellworn having a 500 GPM electrician with a Gnome's Wisdom and 2000 gold saved up, and the Pebbles with a PK is probably going to be a bit too much for him to have much of an impact, but uh, yeah, we'll wait and see. Um, the electrician is farming the jungle, so he's going to be. Continuing to boost that very high GPM of his. Looking to maybe build, as I said earlier, I think possibly a possibility of plays. We see some initiation in the middle lane. Pebbles jumps in with a PK. Does pick off the bubbles. So making full use of that PK um, and not dying to any counter initiation, which is always what you want to try and do with the pebbles. You don't want to get caught afterwards when you are picking up a kill. So uh, yeah, well played them. Satellitium, who is on seven kills at the moment, having a very good game. So we can see Dutch in the woods uh, uh, trying to recover his farm. He's now up to nearly 300 GPM. So he's not doing too badly considering he did suffer a fair, to a fair extent in the try lane. Um, I think that he's probably going to be building that Thunderclaw into a hyper crown, just trying to get as much attack speed and farming potential as he can. As we see Pebbles jump in the middle lane onto Bubbles again, the Bubbles does get picked off and the TP to, is immediately cancelled. So another nice kill there. Satellitium starting to snowball. Um, I think he's probably going to be looking at building spell shards next for a bit of extra damage. Um, maybe even the staff again, like he was going to do last game. I don't think he's going to make his build too complicated as he does spoke towards the Legion top lane. Nope, goes back towards Congo. So he's playing very aggressively, which is unsurprising because when you have the PK and when you are going into your kind of snowballing mode, you do like to kind of pick up as many kills as you can. Bot lane, we do see some initiation on to Electrician. Electrician is ganked by four heroes here, very tanky. Does use the Purge and Clenching Shock to try and escape. But with the Gnomes, obviously, and the shield, he is potentially going to be fine here. I don't know how long Legion want to chase this for. Nope, Legion do leave him alone. So, yeah, unfortunate they missed the kill on to Electrician there. Um, looks like they may be going back in with a bit of a surprise element with the Kinesis running around. Have a chance to electrician. Power throw comes in with a stun and the compel. Electrician does go down. Have a hold on to Kinesis. Kinesis does also go down as well after he chucks the ulti onto Pharaoh. Chipper is completely out of mana and he's going to be absolutely fine. So, yeah, nice couple of kills from Legion. Just kills that they wanted as well onto Elec and to the Kinesis. Um, electrician is quite surprisingly very very difficult to kill sometimes um but uh yeah i think the gnome's wisdom has quite a lot to play with that and just taking a look at the mannequin mannequin's farm in the woods obviously with his life still picking up the thunderclaw fairly soon i am interested to see what bubbles well not bubbles sorry what loon what Rally does go for next. I think Rally's probably going to be looking to finish off his Steam Boots um, and then build his PK. I don't think he's going to go for a Star first of all. Um, I think with his farm and the way that he's suffering, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to get it anytime soon. But I do wonder what Hellborn plans to do next. Looks like they're just going to play a farm game as we see some initiation on to Pebbles with the ultimate. Pebbles just chuck him away and he's going to be absolutely fine. So unfortunately they don't catch the pebbles there, but um, Hellborn do take the top tower. So Electrician pushes in the top tower, pushes in a few creeps as well as Legion do move towards the top lane to uh, yeah to push the wave up. So yeah, I, I had some technical difficulties, but it looks like uh, I have it up and running again now. I just need to find a way back into the game. No worries. Good to, uh, good to see you back. Okay, so we see Malikon who's popped the ultimate. He's going to be farming a triple stack next to next to Kongo. Um, I don't think he can... Uh, yeah, so we can't tank too much of the damage, but he's going to go back in. See him life stealing and healing up. Um, I think Malikon was nerfed last patch, so his healing is not quite as effective as it used to be. But um, he is able to nearly clear out the triple wave, um, and he's going to... Go back in once again. Chucks out the swords and finally finishes off the triple sack. So his GPM is now rocketing towards that 400 GPM mark. 
bot lane we see Fairy throw out a rocket he's going to be trying to push the bot bot tower but uh, unfortunately with the Fairy you can't do too much in terms of tower pushing um, I think with the double steam staff he's going to be picking up a health flower which is something I did mention earlier I think he is quite far away though so he won't be getting it anytime soon but um yeah, top lane electrician still pushing the tower. He does pick up the. F he he does talk, he does pick he does pick up the uh, frost field plate. So I do wonder if Hellborn are going to group up soon, especially with the items they have: spell shards and pebbles, frost field plate, gnomes, the electrician, and then a tablet soon on Chipper. But it looks like they're playing pretty safe for now. Malikan farming another double stack, so he's going to be picking up his hyper crown fairly soon in about one thousand gold. Puppet Master with the Shrouds, with the Lifesteal, going to be picking up the Whispering Helm in about 100 goals. Um, I think that he's going to be going for a Shrunk and Head After. Can't really see any other option as we do see Hellborn take down the tower. So, uh, yeah, some more gold, more gold coming out for Hellborn. Elex back over 500 GPM. Um, possibly could be going for a Portal Key next. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Very still pushing out the bottom lane. With the Hellfire right. and the Rocket, so that tower is going to be down, going down relatively soon. Finally made my back way into the game. <laughs> my way back into the game. Welcome, welcome back. Thank you. So, uh, I see I've missed a lot. Yeah, um, you have. <laughs> I, no, I was just talking about how, with regards to Electrician, it picks up the Frostfield plate. Um, is that an item that you would say that you were a fan of? Uh, yeah, like, um, I mean, Frostwell's always good. It slows down the attack speed of the enemy team with the movement speed as well. Um, it's not necessarily the best item you can go against a team who mainly relies with their carry on the uh, magic damage. Um, I might have gone for Shrunken Head, to be honest, but, um, Frostwell is never a bad item to pick up. Yeah, it also has the gnomes now. I see, uh, which is super. Like I talked about earlier, it's a super strong item on electrician with the amount of healing he gets back from it. Yep. So we just see Congo picks up from Hellborn. Um, looks like they will probably be taking their Congo soon as Dutch does TP on the Malikan towards the Ancients. So yeah, it looks like a token will be coming out fairly shortly for all uh, Big Ego crew. If they do pick up the token, what would you like to see? Do you think they're going to gather up and push, or do you think they're going to force a team fight somewhere? Um, I, I think uh, if they take off the token here, they should force bottom at least. They don't have tier 2 tower yet. They're going to take bottom tower, push off the lane there. Um, looks like they're fairly decent ahead, so they could start poking the tower a little bit with the Congor buff. Uh, and the Melican's probably going to take off the token, so I'd say they should try and uh, put some pressure on their base with the token at least. Yeah, so we see token left on the floor, it's like Pebbles is going to pick it up. Okay, oh. so Pebbles does take the token over Malikun. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, it's it's okay because Pebbles going to be initiating, so they're probably thinking about, okay, Pebbles going to go first, they're going to use a lot of stuff on him. Bubbles yep, just so we do him. see, sorry to interrupt, we do see a jump on to Bubbles with um, Porter Key Peb and the combo to finish him off instantly with the spell shards. Um, Bubbles, fortunately, only has steam boots, so he is relatively squishy at the moment. And uh, yeah, nice kill pit up. Yeah, I would like to see them uh, take bottom towers now. Uh, maybe even get bottom racks with the bubble step for 20 seconds more. They can get a chunk of damage into the base tower. We do lose top tower, but I think that's fine. Yeah, they're not uh, to be too concerned about that. Obviously, we have a tier two as they go towards the base now. Pebbles with the illusion rune. And um, yeah, obviously with the tower buff as well. It's gonna ensure that they can push the tower relatively quickly here. So with the pebbles, we do see a glowstone. Obviously looking to build up that staff of the butter fairly soon. The cliff is used by Legion. But no, going back to uh, Pebbles and the Staff of the Master, do you think that's the right choice or do you think you should have possibly gone for a shrunken head? Because we do see some initiation after Bubbles, Toss and the Rockets do finish him off. Buyback comes off instantly, time to sign fortunately. Obviously he's on to the creep wave. Yeah, Bubbles is now picked up, he dies instantly so he does die back. And Puppet Master is also picked up and it looks like he's probably going to be the end of the game here. Yeah, I think that's, picks uh, up the quad yeah. kill, can he get the Annihilation? No, unfortunately he doesn't. Dutch Ronin picks up the last kill as Puppet Master does use the combo onto Malikun. 
does quite a bit of damage actually with the power through. But um, Pebbles just jump back in onto Papa Master. Can they finish him off with the rockets? Yes, they can. And Shaw can just pick up an annihilation on to the support chipper there. Very well played. Chipper too strong. Something he'll be something he'll be very proud of. But uh, yeah, annihilation for Chipper. Um, some racks as well. A die back for Bubbles. Uh, a very interesting fight to uh, to finish off the game as we see the CC vote called out and Legion do concede. And, yeah, it uh, yeah. would be very hard coming back after that fight. So yeah, Big Eager Crew do pick up the victory and do finish off the semi-final with a two to zero win. So Hansi, unfortunately, you missed some of that game. But what were your thoughts? on the on the finish uh i got the start of the game and i got the finish of the game and i would say it looked like big ego crew just communicated better um it looked like they knew their their teammates play style a lot more uh when to initiate when to back off their positioning was really good especially on top laney phase it was really nice to see uh i know that big ego crew has been playing together as a team for a longer time than Time to Die's team has. Uh, and I, I think that definitely shows in this game that practice, practice, practice. Like it shows um, the more you practice with your team, knowing when to go in, what, how your teammates play, it's really important. Yeah, I think a lot of it is down to experience. I think Legion, are, as we know, they were a new team. Uh, last minute team is their name. So they were fairly recently formed um i haven't really been seeing them scrimming at all so it would have been a massive ask for them to be beat big ego crew here although they did play really well yesterday but uh yeah big ego crew doing what they do best um ganking very nicely coordinating very nicely pushing when they need to and uh, yeah wrapping up the game relatively quickly at the 23 minute mark yeah but yeah any more any more final thoughts uh no, uh, not really. I just thought it was an interesting game, what I got to see of it. Um, a little bad fight at bottom lane, maybe, at the towers. Bubbles TPing and getting caught off again after buybagging uh, buy instantly. Um, the Pebbles not really getting punished for jumping in. Stuff like that. But yeah, it, it was an interesting game, to say the least. Yeah, so that will wrap it up for game number two of this first semi-final. Um, please stay tuned for the next one, which is going to be Good Clan Rejects against Donkey Kong. And um, yeah, we hope to see you shortly.
Welcome back to Han OMG Cycle 6. We've got Team Donkey Kong versus Good Clan Rejects. I am joined by my teammate, Satellitium. Satellitium, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah? Did you uh, enjoy our game today? This is the second semi-final, by the way. So if you missed the first one, it was uh, Big Ego Crew versus Last Minute Tima. And uh, Big Ego Crew took that in two games. But... Yeah, if you're joining, rejoining us, then uh, this is the second semifinal, and uh, we're going to see who's actually going to make the final. So, there was one match that wasn't casted, and that was Donkey Kong versus Polymorph. And actually, in a big upset, Polymorph ended up losing to Donkey Kong. Very interesting, actually. I expected to Hex to come out of that uh, as the winning team, so this is very interesting. It might be way better than I ant anticipated. Yeah, for sure. I also thought that Donkey Kong was going to be... Um, they're they're very good individual players, but they haven't really figured out the team thing yet. So uh, we're going to see that right here with this cast, I think. Yeah, that's going to be exciting for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's also that, you know, Testy's team, they have this very... They always have a plan, which is just to outfarm the enemy team, pretty much. So they try to win the laning phases as much as they can and then only go for plays that they're 100% sure of. But Donkey Kong is, I think, a lot more volatile in how they play, so we can maybe see some interesting strategies from them. We've got uh, a draft going on, though. We've got Moyer, Magnus, Electrician, Engineer being banned. These are pretty much the standard bans right now. 
except for maybe more access as well. And then we have Aluna being first picked by Donkey Kong, which is just in general a very strong hero. Yeah, as, as you said, it's very standard. Uh, electrician's pick or uh, electrician ban is is usually a, a, a ban if you see if they have like a, a like a a certain <laughs> electrician player you're scared of. Uh, hold that though, because they pick Glacius. Not a hero I'm a big fan of, but... I'm not a big fan of that hero either. The only reason you'd pick it is for the uh, chilling presence, so I really hope that they make good use of that. The added damage from his ultimate is also very powerful, but it's not the same as an Aluna sniping from very far, because I feel like Glacius really needs to put himself in danger whenever he goes for anything. Yeah, there's very short range on uh, the imprisonment, which is like his strongest skill in the early game. And... I don't know. But uh, like the Americans have been playing it to great effect, so we'll see. Yeah, I also feel like people, they seem to be maxing Ice Imprisonment, but I'm personally under the impression that Tundra Blast <laughs> is actually a lot better early game because the slow actually lasts for 4.5 seconds. And with a lot of the tri lanes and du dual lanes we've been having, that attack speed slow is actually so much more valuable than people realize. That's why Aluna is also such a great hero right now. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I haven't played Glacius in years, to be honest, so I have no idea how to how to scale the hero right now. But as you said, like four and a half seconds, so 20, uh, 20 attack speed slow is very, very effective. Yeah, only early game. Later on, that really tapers off because it's not a percentage slow, but it's a uh, static amount. And, you know, with everybody just getting stats all the time, they're going to get more attack speed. And they're actually going to go for quite an early Soul Reaper pick, so... This really looks like they're going to be farming a lot because they usually run that in the mid lane with yeah. uh, Testy, right? Or short lane. They've been actually, I've seen them play in scrims, play Soul Reaper Curse long lane with Testy a couple times as well. So okay. it could actually go anywhere here. And Soul Reaper, of course, farms incredibly well with Judgment plus uh, Inhumane Nature for infinite mana. Oh, yeah, for sure. But why would you combine the Soul Reaper with the Glacius then? Because his inhuman nature is pretty much enough uh, in the curse. lane. So yeah, they are going to go the Soul Reaper curse like you predicted. And on the side of Donkey Kong, we actually have Warchief, which really isn't a hero that's picked that often. This is exciting for sure. They have a uh, classic heroes in the Luna Chipper for the first two picks, and then the the Dark Horse here in Warchief. It'll I, be exciting to see how like the ultimate impact fights. It's very, very strong. Yeah, I think uh, especially with a Chipper and a Luna who generally have low cooldown abilities anyways, it's going to be a, it's going to have a huge impact to just power throw even more often. And I think if you Warcry and then a Luna is level six and just has one power throw rate, then you can get another red throw off within the time of Emerald Red. I think you're right. You should be able to get two snipes, which would be like. Very, that would be strong. sick. That would yeah. be sick. Absolutely so sick. I mean, when you get level 11 and stuff, it's going to have less impact because you just get extra charges of the ability. So then it wouldn't have the same uh, impact. But I'm really excited to see how they're going to make this work because I don't think Warchief is really the classic offlane hero that he can go solo versus a dual lane. So I think they need to dual lane it and maybe try and get a lot of farm on it early on because it's not really a hero who can split push or anything like that. So after the laning phase, he's basically going to be farming by uh, getting kills, right? Yeah, uh, he doesn't have a great farming ability and it's kind of tough to lane. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they manage to put him or where they put him. Uh, hmm. Bans have been coming out though. Yeah, f yeah, we got the Sandwith, Swiftblade and Pebbles. So... Uh... I'm not sure they would ever pick Pebbles, but I would actually like them to ban the Gladiator right now because they have so much damage reduction already with the Accursed and the heals from Soul Reaper that I can see a Gladiator on top of that making it very difficult for them to actually kill anyone. Yeah, they're going to lack damage if they let them have Gladiator and uh, Math Pro have, have played that against us to great effect. He's very, very good in that Gladiator. So. Yeah, exactly. So what I would do is uh, I would at least uh, ban the Gladiator. And what's interesting is n neither team has actually picked up the Monarch this game, which I thought was quite a uh, favorite for both teams, as Bunny Lover plays the Monarch quite well as well, and Testy's team really enjoys picking that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a defensive uh, style hero that fits like uh, the American usual draft very well, and a comfort pick for each inside, so it's interesting it's not getting picked off. They did ban lots of forest though, which they also have been playing on the Hellbone side. 
Yeah, I do really like the combination of a Luna Chipper though, because you have so much long range uh, extra damage. So if you get one good stunner hero, so they don't have that right now, but let's say they pick up something like a Moraxis or even a Gauntlet or even a Kraken, something like that, they can really get some good harass in from really far away, making the making the supports relevant through the mid game. For sure, like if they have a, a strong stun, maybe even Tundra, like setting up Avalanche. And then you could just put four rockets and two red power throws into their face. Like, you can kill anyone at any time in the game. Yeah, exactly. Even with a curse sitting behind, they're still going to get hit by all the rockets generally. Because yeah, the stun of temp the stun of Pebbles yeah. is just really good as it keeps stunning versus a curse. So they are going to go for Zephyr. And I think that's also, in a way, them taking that away from good clan rejects. Because Tessie also likes to play that. But with Soul Reaper already having been, having been picked up, I really don't think it's good to pick it right now. They did ban the really strong counter in Lords of Forest versus the Zephyr, so that's that's a heads up play right there. Yeah, and also they they could have maybe looked to pick up the Soul Forest oh, themselves uh, into the Soul Reaper Curse, a hero that's good against both heroes, but they usually, or they chose to ban it and they get the Zephyr themselves. So also good, good drafting here. Mm-hmm. But look at this, though. They've got Puppet Master Soul Reaper. I think they pick Puppet because they know it's quite a strong hero versus Zephyr, as he doesn't have a lot of max HP. So he's he's very able to be bursted down by a Puppet Master, actually. Yeah, before Zephyr gets that barrier idle, it's very, very squishy. And if you can get like a 11, 12 minutes route, you can start to pick him off be before he gets super tanky, stop the snowball. Yeah, I would actually like to see them pick up another carry on the side of Legion. Pestilence, they're shadow picking it right now, but I think an Arachna or a Calamity could fit really well with the Zephyr. But they that are move. they are lacking a good setup stun, so Pestilence is also quite a decent pick, I think. It's not my favorite versus an Accursed. No, Slash could do it has been playing the Pestilence, and to great effect, uh, as I could tell from the scoreboard for the, for the previous game versus Hex, so maybe they just feel like it has some momentum and it's going to be good here. Yeah, they pick up the Pestilence. Interesting. Yeah. I would have actually preferred um, something like a Kraken or a Moraxis or Tundra. But nah, not Tundra versus a Curse, by the way. I uh, I scratched that. Scratch Gladiator it, oh. for them would have been good as well, actually. Gladiator, yeah. I feel like the Pest is kind of meh here, to be honest, because of like... It's a physical damage hero, and Swarm is so effective, but they have zero physical damage on the Legion team. Yeah, so it's only Pestilence's damage that's really going to be buffed, and they go for the Bombardier, and that's going to be their mid hero, as they are going to run the Soul Reaper Accursed long lane. Yeah. So how would how would we deal with a Soul Reaper Accursed long lane? Hmm, I think uh, we'd start out 2-1-2 two two and just rotate and kill them. I, I mean, think, they're... honestly, a Chipper can solo both of them. <laughs> I mean, level one. it's always so, so strong at level one. Like, the, the first couple levels of rockets Let's are just in incredible, on. so... Yeah, and because they have no escapes, uh, they can't actually get away quite... can't get away easily, so I would actually like them to get focus buffer on the Zef on the on the chipper, because they only yeah, have magic damage as well. Focus buffer is for sure the skill you're supposed to level up here on chipper this game. Yeah, also versus the bombardier in the mid game, as well as... Um, Versus everything on the Hellborn side, actually. Chipper is a really good pick versus uh, this team versus right now. Lineup, yeah, for sure. I feel like uh, Tatos on support Chipper is like usually underrated and people don't pick it up, but this game buffer is just like so amazing here. They don't have uh, like any physical damage outside of Puppet Master for, uh, like auto attacks. Oh, but they are going to be running a Pestilence Aluna top lane, but I think that's going to be a really tough lane for them because Puppet Master is just so strong in lane. Puppet Glacius, they, if they catch the Glacius though, he's going to fall very quickly. I would have really preferred the Warchief in top, actually. Because he has an easier time catching the Glacius in the woods. I do, yeah, for sure. But I do also think that, that uh, the Warchief is going to do better versus a Bombardier than the Pestius. It's a tough yeah. matchup. Uh, it's for a both tough heroes. matchup either way. Yeah, for both heroes. But I do think the Warchief is a bit better because of uh, the extra range of Spirit Walk. You can last it. With Spirit Rock uh, outside of uh, attack range from the Bombardier. Yeah, I would really actually... You know, I don't feel like they're going to actually win top lane on Donkey Kong unless they do some really good plays, but I would have actually preferred a Luna mid lane with the Warchief because then mm -hmm. Bombardier gets nothing. 
Yeah, I was thinking 2 1 2, they could do that super effectively as well. Or a 2 2 1 is what I meant to say. The dual mid here could be very strong versus Bombardier as the hero is just so susceptible to ganks. It's very, very squishy. Yeah, exactly. And with a Warchief, he can always join his teammate by just using that Spirit Walk. Yeah. So they can a put a lot of movement. harass in. And I don't think top lane is going to be the easiest lane to win for them, as I've been saying. But I think the definite lane we got to look at is uh, how is Zephyr going to do against the aggressive Soul Reaper curse? I mean, they're difficult to kill, but also not because they have a chipper. It's. Yeah, I think Zephyr's going to be all right here. Like, Can they really force him out of the lane? I, I don't think so. And they can't really, they don't have like a lot of offense on the help on side. It's more of a defensive lane, like where you just farm from a farm. Yeah, so you don't have any stuff or anything. He's pulling the medium camp already. This is actually very effective to stop the enemies from doing that. And he's, they're actually going to pull one archer, which is effective uh, for them they're to keep lane control. control. Yeah. It's really but good. I would like them to go right now. But they need Gust on Zephyr. And then yeah, they can they get a kill. Two, for sure. They need to wait level two. If they get but level look, two first, they should yeah. go right away. From this creep, maybe? Yeah. From this creep, they need it. It's gonna die. There you go. And now there they're gonna go. gust into the go. creeps. No. They should. No! Oh man, that should have been a kill. In the yeah. top lane, this. Uh, I do think a Luna is better than a Glacius in lane. Because Glacius went Ice Imprisonment as well, which I feel isn't the best versus a dual lane. I mean, uh, Luna's laning presence early is just like out of this world. 50 attack speed slow from Q, strong nuke from power throw. It's just better than Glacius straight up in yeah. laning. Zephyr just tried to uh, pull the curse back, but he actually missed misses the gust. Aluna's getting. Oh, Aluna's getting initiated on. He's got the puppet show on him. Glacius is there with an auto attack, but he didn't actually level his Q, so no follow up yeah. after that. With the Q, he would have died, but then again, he probably wouldn't have had mana. Yeah. So yeah, Bombardier is actually having a really good time in the mid lane right now. Yeah, as suspected. Yeah. And then in the bottom lane, we go back to that. They could really, they really need to just go early and just gust the, Zev, the Soul Reaper back because they've got the focus buffer now. There is no way that they're going to die. Like, a crystal doesn't really matter because there's no stun to remove. Like, that's yeah. the main strength of the ability and it's only level one, so it blocks what? 100 uh, damage? 110 damage. I yeah. mean, that's fine. They should just be aggressive, I think. I the guess buffer. they're waiting for level 3 to get some more uh, tornadoes for extra damage and two rockets. I mean, that's really going to make a difference in the yeah, fight as well. Sure. Oh, Pestilence might be in some trouble. He does pick up the Iron Shield and the Power Supply, but I think he's if he gonna gets be frozen fine. here, there is Iron the Puppet Show, but strong. there's a Sun in on the Glacius, and Glacius might be the one in trouble, but no. There's the Puppeteer's hold, and actually it's Pestilence who seems oh, to be falling right now. Oh, Ooh, he does a Power die. Supply, but he is gonna die. Is Aluna being able to Aluna can't catch Glacius either, but there's the... Okay, bottom lane, he tried to gust him, but a curse was actually too far on the left, so he got gusted into the cliff. But I feel like they've missed their timing now. We haven't even talked about this, it's uh, uh, what you got on Puppet Master. It is what you got on Puppet Master. Oh wow, noticed. he's playing carry. Wow, like that's so interesting. Yeah. Compared to so... what, how they usually roll. Damn, yeah, that is insane. But they have, like, I really think they could have gone earlier on this bottom lane. I think early pressure is the way to to get an advantage here. They yeah, could have killed good. the Soul Reaper. Yeah, for sure. But he's just getting harassed down now. Like, Soul Reaper... With that E, he's actually got it on autocast, so every single last hit he gets, he's just using it on himself to get mana immediately. In the mid lane, we also have some uh, harass going on. Top lane, wow, what a bash coming out from the Pestilence. He's got another stun. Do they have the damage though? Puppet oh, is there, and Aluna gets the last hit, so that's really good, because Puppet would have prevented that death, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as, as you yeah. see in the old chat, he gored Oh, there's twice. the bottom lane. We have a Gust in on the Soul Reaper. He's going to get shielded up and healed, and Chipper is actually the one in trouble right here. As he's taking so much damage from the Q and the shield from the Accursed. I mean, Chipper only got buffer off after they got Q'd by the Soul Reaper. He really needs to, to have it on before so he can uh, get the mana from that to spam yeah. more rockets. Mid is very close right now. They're both yeah. close to dying here. I do think that Warchief with one rotation could get a very easy kill on Bombardier, but it might be too late as he just reaches level 6 on Bomb, and if he gets 
Oh, Holme actually misses the stack right there. He's gonna get it with the hatchet, but he's actually gonna do the walk of shame, as we call it. Yeah, he has to. I mean, it's uh, it's tough for the watch if he like if he TPs into the middle lane, bomb can't just kill him. To be honest, like I don't know if you can uh, use walk, spirit walk out of the range of the ultimate. I don't think so. Like you can just keep the bomb and bomb him in and kill him. I think so. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be a little tough to lane now. He needs to try. Look try at this, though. Double gust in the bottom lane. Soul Reaper getting really low right now. He's uh, gotten the shield immediately, so he's gonna be fine. I feel it's like they should just spam rockets on Chipper. Like they could just, just keep going. Like. Yeah, they got power supplies now, though. So that's mm -hmm. that's where yeah. it's unfortunate because you're just gonna be feeding those power supplies and mana and health like mana oh in top then we have initiation glaciers might be in some trouble there's a stun puppet show is going to be there as well and they've got the golden apple but he's just going to escape and aluna actually forced to run away now as puppet as puppet master is just auto attacking him down with those boots aluna does have boots himself but that crit is just doing huge damage power throw comes out but it's not going to matter i mean it, it looks like uh, that what you got is actually super comfortable in this puppet master they're doing so well in this lane yeah, for sure. Zephyr also forced to uh, use a health potion right here. Here's a mid lane. We actually have Warchief getting caught by the bomb, but it's going to be a kill on Bilbo's wagon on that bombardier. And bottom lane, we have uh, uh, some good harass coming out, or harass rather. It's a kill, and Chipper might be in some trouble. He does have some rockets to uh, prevent it for a bit, but nice rocket letting Zephyr finish him off right there. Yeah, great trade for uh, in the bottom lane. I think uh, the trade in the middle favored... Uh... Legion side as well as uh, the warchief is way on the farm compared to the bombardier. So really yes. good change for uh, Legion side here. Good rotation by uh, Slaske for sure. But yeah, I feel like they're gonna need to uh, do something about Puppet Master. Once he gets his shroud, I think Zephyr is in a lot of trouble. He's gonna need to go a, a barrier this game for sure on Zephyr, but he might be forced to get even more defensive items like a shrunken. Yeah. Yeah, Barrius must have, like, without it, uh, he'll just get one-shot by Puppet Master, so... Yeah, I think he's gonna be uh, rushing his Shamans, actually. Yeah, I like it. It's gonna be so hard to do anything to, for the mm -hmm. help on side, as they only have magic damage. Warchief is going in for a rotation, but of course, since he's been missing from mid lane for a while, Hellborn Ooh. side, with the heads-up play, is actually playing quite far back. They're just farming the medium camp, actually. And now Pestilence is going to scout out the Puppet Master. He's going to use his ulti on him as well, and he's going to get the stun. A Luna stun to follow up. Here comes Warchief, though, with the W, but they're going to be going for the Glacius instead. Warchief, with that ultimate, does have lower cooldowns. He's got another W up, and he's going to get the Glacius again with that. Power throw is going to hit, but that's going to gonna be a missed uh, stun, actually, from the Pestilence. And the Warchief going in on the Puppet Master, but the Puppet is not actually going to uh, survive, and they are going to fall. Bombardier is rotating over, so Aluna is going to get insta-killed right there. Warchief does have a W available, but I don't think this is a kill that they want to try to go for. They are going, though. They are going to go, and they go with the W. Bombardier taking a lot of harass, get but those ultimate. steam boots make him quite tanky. He does have ultimate, but he's going to get killed, actually. That was a bash, otherwise they wouldn't have had the damage. And Warchief does have his W up. Type race, so now gets a kill in the bottom lane on that Zephyr. Glacius is in a lot of trouble as Pestilence is surviving for now. And he's going to actually be able to jump to the side, but he does end up falling to the auto attack. And that might have been too greedy for the side of the Legion. But Zephyr does get... A kill on the accursed and he's gonna have free farm now he's already up to 430 gold per minute so i really wish this chipper would now just quad stack camps pretty much i think he's rotating into stack right now i kind of lost track i have no idea who won that uh, engagement it's yeah, really hard to say he's gonna get four stacks up right here and zephyr should just take them immediately i don't think there's any point to uh wait here actually you got your level seven that's all you need to farm all of these stacks they might wait for level or uh, wait for triples, but we'll see. Yeah, Warchief also uh, going into the woods right now. He triple stacked that easy camp earlier, I think, so he's uh, benefiting from that a lot right now. And actually, Pestilence isn't even doing too terribly in the top lane after those engagements. Now up to 320 gold per minute. Yeah, Pest is doing fine. Like, Zephyr is really doing fine. They didn't succeed in what they wanted to do uh, and shut down the, the Zephyr. He's He's gonna skyrocket, like, yeah, as soon as Chipper stacks these camps again, he's gonna clear it, everything and be at 600 GPM almost, yeah. Yeah, he really needs to farm the medium camp though, because otherwise the Soul Reaper and a Curse can easily farm that with the shield and, uh, and, uh, Judgment. 
He is going for it right now, though. So yeah, we'll very out. good. And Soulweeper actually trying to port, but he's gonna get cancelled right there as Jim Carrey and Pestilent, Jim Carrey and Slaskadur actually kill Rosaru. And yeah, nice uh, job getting the rune on Chipper, by the way. So they even got the good good rune control here. Like, uh, Watch is only 200 GPM, but what items do we really need on this hero to be effective? Like, I think Tablet's gonna be fantastic this game. Just any clickable items, pretty much. The yeah, ones that amazing. allow you. Yeah, the ones that allow you to spam them during team fights, and then something like a sheep or gnome's wisdom is definitely good this game as well. There's a lot of good options here. I was just um, pointing out. I don't think the like the hero needs too many items to succeed. Like the ultimate is always gonna be amazing. So the fact that he's 200 GPM now, of course, it's not ideal, but I think he's gonna be alright compared to the bomb here. Yeah, pestilence getting caught right here by the glacius with that Q, but he just runs away. Pestilence has been an, an actual fantastic pick, actually. Yeah, he's doing so well. I, I really wish this one video would, would make some plays right now. He's just pushing out the middle wave and he's not even getting the tower as Bombardier. Like, uh, Warchief is just out farming him, farming the, both the, the stat or the. Top the lane, Puppet Show in on the Pestilence. Are they going to be able to catch him though? There comes out the Puppet from the Puppet Master. But they actually killed it, but he's not dead yet. But he's going to get the sun off. Is he going to be able to jump away? No, he is not as. Puppet gets the last hit on him, but here comes Warchief and Zephyr, and they're all here. Bombardier ulti nicely dodged actually by everyone but Zephyr, and Zephyr just dies all the damage coming out from the Hellborn side. Where is the Chipper? They really need him as now Warchief is going to fall. They only get the Glacius. Chipper is now here. He got the ulti off, but the rockets barely hit, and uh, it's a Luna now who's in trouble. He's going to get the nice stun off on the two in tower range, but a curse with that ultimate is going to be fine. Oh, nice power Hellborn. throw. Yeah, that was close. Really good fight for Elbon as Chipper wasn't there. Maybe he didn't have TP up to rotate. But this isn't the timing for Legion. No. They need they need some more items before they, they start doing idle. this. Yep. Fair idle would have changed that completely. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Zephyr can block, I think, two of the Bombardier ulti hits because it's only level one right now. Yeah, and like the rest of his team is not going to be taking damage for, for like uh, two, three solid seconds because mm -hmm. the, the shield is so strong. Yeah, and uh, Puppet Master is going to go rush that Shroud so he can go set up some plays. And yeah, as you said, what you got really seems to be comfortable on this hero. And he's doing an absolutely fantastic job farming up to 410 GPM already. He's doing so well. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he can do with the Shroud when he picks it up. Mm -hmm. Warchief really needs to uh, start getting some farm though as he's still down to 200 GPM. I don't think they really want to fight into a Soul Reaper and a Curse, though. I feel like that's just a bad idea in general. I think they need to make uh, Bird bigger. He's not going for a Barry Idol right away, he's getting Staff now. Yeah, I, I still think Staff is definitely the best item here. Also good. Oh, top lane, we do have Initiation on the Puppet Master. And even though a Curse was sitting behind him with the heal and the shield, he still ends up falling to the damage of the Legion. Chipper is so much damage at level 7, like 4 rockets plus ultimate, that's like almost 800 damage. It's yeah, insane. And Zephyr is uh, exploding right now with all these stacks from the Chipper, so I really, hope he keeps, I really hope he keeps focusing on that. He's running back to base right now, so uh, he should be looking to stack it again in the 20 seconds. Yeah. He yeah. can reach the hard game for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what do you think Warchief should get? I said something like a tablet or maybe even a storm would be good. I like gnomes or like gnomes into something. Or maybe just tablet right away. Like any clickable or activatable items as you said are so strong on Warchief as you can keep spamming them. The tablet yeah. would have been amazing. It's gonna uh, kill Look at this initiation. The Bombardier ulti is gonna be there as long with the Puppet Master, but he's actually gonna survive for longer because the focus buffer and Puppet ends up dying for it. So this is a really good fight and oh for the Legion, they cancel their TPs and they're just gonna get killed? On Bilbo Swaggin. Great rotation. I mean, the supports do so much damage. Uh, Puppet Master just ate four rockets and insta died. Like, yeah. It's, it's as you as you said, like in the start, that the, the extra range on both the supports from Legion is gonna have so much impact, and like it just showed, like they just solo killed the enemy carrier right here. Yeah. So the shroud was used to get a pick off, but immediately after he ends up dying for it. So you have to question whether that's worth it for a 200 GPM warchief. They are going to find the accursed right here. They're going to get the stun as well as the ultimate. So Curse is going to pop his own ultimate to stay alive. But is he actually going to fall? In the bottom lane, we also have the uh, pestilence chasing the soul reaper right now. And soul reaper is in a lot of trouble. In the mid lane, they do finish off the accursed. 
Are they going to get the Soul Reaper? That's the question. He's got flight again. Is he going to jump at him? The power throw misses, but they're going to get it with the W. And Warchief actually gets a kill on Rosary on the Glacius. Is Pesty going to die? No, it's one HP. He manages to survive. Yeah. And wow, what a... And they get the mid tower. Like, what, if, what are these plays coming out from Legion right now? Failed to get the puppet hold on him. It's, it's too unfortunate here. Yeah, they are completely taking over the game. Like, killing the carry, getting like three, four picks and a tower. Like, that's such a big goal swing. They got a kill on every single lane as well as the mid tower. Yeah, it's so great for them. They have tablet on. Oh, he, he no, saw the tablet he, uh, on the He uh, doesn't have the book yet, so he actually got the uh, recipe instead. Uh, he sold it and went wards instead. He bought the three counter wards and a. Uh, Two water side. Yeah. But yeah, they need to keep up this pressure. I'm Make so sure that the uh, Soul Reaper does not actually uh, get farm because that hero can carry in its own right. For sure. Well, I'm just rotating here with the uh, smoke and PK. So top lane, there's going to be a fight here. Does yeah, Zephyr yeah. have TP? Zephyr has TP. Not a lot, a lot of mana though. And the staff. Yeah. I don't think they can take this fight. Yeah, he's got the bomb now on the Bombardier. Who is he going to catch in the background though? Who is he going to go for? I think they're going to go for the Iluna. And they go for the Iluna. And Bombardier manages to survive due to all the heals coming out from the Hellborn side. And nobody on the Hellborn is actually low. Zephyr does end up porting here. Nice stun coming out onto the Glacius. Is he going to fall though? He is going to get stay. He's alive right now just because of your curse, but it's not going to be enough. Zephyr is dropping down low, though. Nice stun on the Soul Reaper. There comes out the, Zep the Zephyr ultimate. Pestilence going on the back line. They're trying not to focus the Soul Reaper right here, but Soul Reaper is being a problem right now as Chipper is getting really low from these auto attacks from the Pestilence. Bomb coming out onto the Pestilence. Super good gust coming out from the Zephyr to keep them alive. Warchief in the background. Going to stay alive as well, I think. He's just going to port to it, so that's going to be a one for one. The supports for each other, but a lot yeah, of cooldowns used. That's so crazy. Like, everyone's fighting, all ultimates were used, like, and only supports died. It just shows, like, how defensive this Hellborn team is. It's so hard to kill. And 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 while it, it's so hard to kill, they don't have, like, that much offense, right? As they don't have any lockdown. So they have a hard time getting kills as themselves. Yeah, I would really like someone on the Legion to pick up a Dreamcatcher this game. They really need to to deal with the Soul Reaper in the late game. He's got an Astrolabe and his Judgment heals, but if you get a Dreamcatcher on him, he doesn't actually, he heals for 75% less. Very strong, and I actually like the Soul Trap like in the early game on Warchief a lot for our solo kills. Yeah, for he sure. Is, he is gonna get the, the Gnome's Wisdom here though. Mid lane though, we've got the ultimate being popped by the Warchief and a Haste. He uh, actually double clicked his uh, W, but doesn't seem to matter in the end. And I mean, Soul Reaper has recovered very well after that bottom lane. He had like maybe 280 gold per minute and now he's just pushing out top wave. Yeah, he's 360 now. I mean, they're, everyone is doing quite well. There's a small lead for the Legion side right now, but who do you feel has late game here? Um, I'm not sure about the Pestilence Factor. Actually, we have Bombardier getting maybe caught here. They actually stacked up oh. and that's going to be a perfect Bombardier ultimate to kill Bunny Lover, but yeah, he's actually going to stay alive on the Aluna right there as he was just out of range for the last bomb. But the thing uh, that's going to say who has late game is how much form the Warchief and the Pestilence get. Because if a Warchief gets a Sheepstick, that item on Warchief is insane. But Bombardier already picked up the Jade Spire. Oh, well, not the Jade Spire, the uh, Sand Scepter. So they already have a counter to that if he is to pick it up next. I really like the the sand separate pick up here. They're really lacking lockdown in these fights. And they oh, have crop lane, we have initiation on the Soul Reaper. They get the stun on him and a bash. I mean, Slasky has been bashing like nonstop, and Soul Reaper is just going to die. <laughs> so Slasky has has been goring everyone nonstop. So yeah, like there. I think uh, his luck skill is uh, definitely very high at the moment. Yeah, they maxed it for sure. Yeah, and Pestilence looks to be going for a Staff of the Master, but really they need to get that Dreamcatcher. And I think it's a fantastic item on Warchief, like you were mentioning. It gives him movement speed, HP, and extra damage. Yeah, I really like a PK on Pestilence still. Like, they added the, the blink on flight, but it's just so slow and hard to catch people with. The instant blink is also like is very strong. Of course, yeah. the, the Staff of the Master is amazing, but like, how is his team going to benefit as they don't yeah. have any physical damage? I agree. The Impale from Pestilence, it's such a good initiation ability because when it's maxed, it's actually a two-second stun. 
Mm -hmm. So getting, you need a portal key to take advantage of people stacking as three. And when he's flying, people can actually use abilities on him. So if Puppet Master gets the Puppet Show off on him, he's never going to be able to use that Impale. Yeah. And it's so hard to catch people, as you said. Like, if you go, you can get stuns, right? But you can't get the great stuns you're winning, looking for to win five, two, three event stuns, right? They're yeah. so hard to get with the flight. So yeah. PK would be good. He's getting the staff, though, which uh, will allow him to farm very well as you can one shot waves afterwards mm -hmm. and that will allow him to go late game a bit better if they that's what they're aiming for i also i i would have actually liked the zephyr to just upgrade the staff but i guess they can also upgrade both a luna and chipper staff because those are also very powerful yeah for sure both both staff are amazing like especially the chipper staff is so good uh, yeah. the slow through shrunken is is something else Mm -hmm. And then you have Puppet Master who's going to be rushing that shrunken head right now yeah. after the shroud. So he doesn't go for more of a farming route, which would be the Whispering Helm, but chooses to go for the shrunken head to save him from Zephyr. And I do think it's necessary. Yeah, I do, do so too. Does, uh, does Zephyr ulti slow to shrunken when it has to after Master or...? I think it does, yeah. It's a, uh, I think it's a superior slow. I mean, he's not going to be taking damage in there, but the slow is still very strong. Yeah, in top lane, they are setting up for Pestilence, but the bomb actually gets his bomb exploded before they go. And they actually have a Luna rotating over. Are they going to be able to catch the bomb, though? They have the stun on him. Pestilence is coming over. He has the flight sail. He's going to get the stun up. Bombardier is going to stay alive for now, as oh. uh, Pestilence was frozen and Glacius just showing why you actually picked that hero. Yeah, that was... Great Glacius ulti, actually like destroying them there with the Glacius ulti, really well played from Bruce. Yeah, and they had no way of stopping it, and now Zephyr actually just gonna get killed. I don't think there's anything he can do as he doesn't get the barrier off, and yeah, just uh, not realizing that the Hellborn was sticking around right there. Yeah, amazing swing for the Hellborn side there, three kills, and they're gonna translate it into a tower push as well. Yeah, Warchief is quite good at counter pushing with his uh, spirit walk, but... It's, it's not as good as, let's say, the Aluna would be. So I think when Aluna spawns, he really just needs to Emerald Red the waves. Yeah, for sure, right away. Just use uh, Power Throw from Pool is what you need to do here. Yeah, Rockets are coming in, and it's going to do a huge amount of damage to Soul Reaper, but he ends up yeah, just he using himself. Are they setting up, though? There's a slow in on two. Warchief is going to get stunned up immediately. There come the Power Throws, and they are going to hit quite a lot, but... Are they actually going to be able to catch? There's the Warchief, he's got another slow. He's getting in on Glacius. They just need to catch more though, as they're only getting the support right now. There's the Bombardier, he is going to PK in onto the Pestilence actually. They're going to get the ultimate on the Bombardier, but here comes the Spirit Walk again. He's going to be slowing out the uh, Puppet Master. And Puppet Master is dropping low, but he's getting healed by his entire team. There comes the Dust. He's got no Pesty ulti on him, but he does have Dust on him. He's got it on him now. He's going to get stunned up on Pestilence. He's going to end up falling. Soul Reaper being targeted by the Legion side, but he's not going to fall be falling either. And now Warchief, the Legion side, is actually forced to run as the heals and sustain from the Hellborn is just too strong. Spirit Walk is going to get cancelled as well. And now Zephyr's Legion is even... Yeah, Zephyr's coming. Why wasn't he there before? It... Probably because he, he just spawned. Yeah. yeah, he just respawned and TP'd mid to get there fast as well. But Crazy yeah, uh, again. man, like this is why you need the Dreamcatcher. Dreamcatcher. Soul Reaper so... dies there if you actually apply it on him. Yeah, I would have liked to see that on Watch if the gnomes is obviously amazing, as the item is just completely busted right now and fits the fits the memo memo of spamming skills perfectly. But still, like just having the soul like soul trap early game is so good for for uh, engagements and then like it has everything you need. It has HP, moment speed, like whatever else could you wish for an item for a mid hero. So. Yeah, so, and stream catch is amazing. Man, the Legion, they need to realize that fighting into the Hellborn is a really bad idea because they have a Sand Scepter, they have the Accursed Shield, they have tablets, they have all these utility items that the Legion just simply does not have right now. They don't have a Portal Key on Pestilence to initiate with, and he's not even going for it. They don't have tablets on either the Aluna or the Chipper. They are going to get them soon, though, and there's no tablet on the Warchief either. So the staying power I would call it, on the Hellborn, is a lot stronger. They have three tablets, and a Sand Scepter, and a Cursed Shield, and Astrolabe. And Gnomes, like, yeah. they are very, very strong. Like, in this prolonged fight, like, eventually, they will kind of come, up, uh, come out on top with the continuous heal from Soul Reaper. Yep. I mean... And I mean, they do have the heal from Warchief, right? Which is quite good. It's decent, but it's only a single target heal. Yeah, I mean, it does something, but it's... 
it's not too strong, right? And and I, I, feel, I really like what they're doing right now. They're taking over the Legion jungle as well as, as Puppet Master farming their own, just out farming enemy team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Soul Reaper is definitely, uh, yeah, as I've said before, it's a carry as well, but you shouldn't count out the Bombardier either, as he's uh, up to 450 gold per minute. He's going to be going that staff as well, so he's going to be a tanky target, and with all the heals from Soul Reaper and um, Accursed, I feel like the Legion's not going to have the damage. I would really, would really like to see spell shots on Bombardier as, like, playing waves is so, so, so strong, and they have Vestment on Pestilence, Barrier on the Zephyr, Vestment on the Luna, and, and Gnomes on on Warchief. Like, spell shards are very, very good this game. Mm hmm For sure. But there's initiation on the Aluna with the Sand Scepter, but here come in the Rockets. There comes the Stun from the Pestilence. He is going to get hit by three. He's going to get his ultimate on most of the Hellborn side. Only Glacius didn't get it, but he's dead, so that doesn't matter. But now the Hellborn team is in full retreat, and they have vision on all of them. So Warchief is coming in closer. He's got the ultimate up. He's gonna... Oh, that stun! It is gonna miss on the Puppet Master as he uses Shrunken, but he gets the uh, negative armor as well as well. And Puppet Master is gonna be using his ultimate for a Pestilence who was able to run away right after. They didn't have a, a Q or W up to to keep him locked down, so... They should have probably just tried to retreat, but maybe maybe the ultimate scared them off. Time to fly. Yeah, but... The Hellborn team, it's its just that they don't have portal keys on the side of the Legion, so they're actually unable to catch up to any of the Hellborn with all those tablets. They did end up picking Spell Shards on Soul Reaper. I would prefer to see it on, on, on Bombardier for sure, but it should be okay here on Soul Reaper yeah. as well. What do you think of uh, the Frostfield, P Frostfield play just picked up on the Zephyr? Uh, I mean, they're, they don't have too much like physical damage, but Frostfield played like the slow Activatable is so strong, as well as the aura is still going to do something because there's going to be a lot of auto attacks. I think maybe uh, I would have liked to see something like a Phosphor Skull, as though like it has the same activatable effect. And uh, the uh, like attack speed slow is not aura is not too strong this game. Yeah, it's only Puppet Master that's really bothered by it. But yeah, the entire Hellborn team is going to be auto attacking. Yeah, I almost would have liked, as you said, the Frost Wolf Skull just a bit more as it. Uh, it makes it impossible for you to run away from the Zephyr. I mean... Oh, Warchief? No, Warchief is catching the uh, Bombardier right here. He's gonna get the rockets on him as well. There comes the Bombardier ulti, here come the power throws, but he's just gonna get healed up too much. Warchief in a lot of trouble now though. He didn't choose to use his ultimate and he didn't have any abilities up. So that might have been a bit too... Uh, too YOLO. Here comes the Pestilence. He is gonna get his ulti on two people. Warchief wasn't expecting to, to fight there. He smoked in between two people. They were literally standing like three, four, like on top of each other, all three of them, and the smoke popped and they, they just had to go. So, yep. unfortunately. I'm I almost feel like Pestilence uh, should be starting to get carry items himself. I know that they don't have a portal key or anything like that, but he, he can carry with that Staff of the Master. Like you said, he's going to be able to farm a lot better. And using that, he can actually go for something like a Dawnbringer or a Frostwolf Skull himself and be that physical damage threat that they need. I think, uh, yeah, I would still like the like, PK Shrunken into like at, uh, any any damage item. And he can really do some, uh, do a lot of work with also attacks. Yep, Hellborn team finishing off Congor right there, going for the objectives. Legion team really needs to make sure that they get this Congor warded up so that they don't get the pushing buff because that's going to mean that one Rex probably falls with all the sustain from the Hellborn. I agree, like uh, the Congor buff is very very strong so... It's tough to, to kind of push through it, you really can't. Um, they are just continuing to farm, maybe they will make a play here from Hellborn side. But the yeah. uh, game is still very even here, 30 minutes into the game. Pestilence is going to be picking up that portal key right now. So I do like that pickup for that instant initiation, and he can always jump right out afterwards. Yeah, I like it a lot. But I feel like he needs to get a Shrunken on the Pestilence, and maybe then just sit on uh, what you got on that Puppet Master. Yeah, blinks, blinks on him every time. I, I I like that. Like That's how he needs to play it. He needs a Shrunken Head to stay alive in these fights. And with Shrunken Head, they can't lock him down, and he's going to be fine. Well, Aluna going to be scouting out the Bombardier right here, but they do have the uh, Zephyr nearby. Are they going to be able to find him? It doesn't look like it as nice juke coming out from the Bombardier right there. Yeah, I guess there's just TP out of there. Um, I don't know what what, what the 
They are smoking for middle now. They're going mid with smokes. Yeah, there's only two there, so if they manage to insta-kill the Accursed, that would be big, but I think they're too afraid. And rightfully so, they don't have any vision on the rest of the team. Only Puppet Master is just now showing top. But Midnight, they are actually going to go on the Accursed. He's going to get stunned up by the Storm Totem, or a Shock Totem. I mean, they do force the, the Accursed ultimate. I mean, it's not the biggest deal. It's, it's only a one minute cooldown, but it's, it's something. Yep. And Warchief looks to be going for a Shrunken, and Shrunken is a very powerful item for the Legion side right here. Only Puppet Master is going to be dealing physical damage, but... Yeah, yeah, that's a fake Soul Reaper, and I think they uh, see that now with the uh, nice snipes coming out from Bunny Lover, actually. Yeah, Shrunken Heads are our king for uh, from the Legion side here. Like, uh, Hellbone has a very tough time dealing with Shrunken Heads, so... Yeah, I also feel like uh, Type Racer on uh, Zephyr needs to get some more HP. He did choose to go for the Firebrand, so that's probably going to be a Dawnbringer. Like, the Icebrand will give him some HP, but he is actually kind of squishy now, even though he has a lot of armor. Yeah, I feel like going straight hard wouldn't even be the worst idea. Nah, a straight hard would be pretty good here. Like, you have 15 yeah. magic armor and 30 armor. Like. There's not a better survivability item right now. Yeah, exactly. The only thing is that the aura, the withering presence from Soul Reaper does deal more damage based on your uh, max HP. Yeah, that's true. But look at this, they're setting up for the bird right here, but Legion knows, and there comes the freeze in on the Zephyr. And there's the initiation from the Pestilence, but Zephyr is dropping down real low due to Puppet Ultimate. Glacius is gonna fall instead for the Legion, and Puppet is just auto-attacking people down right here. Warchief is gonna fall right here. In the background, you do have Bunny Lover falling, and everyone but the Aluna falls. Great fight for uh, the help on side here. It, it is a big deal though that the Legion or that Aluna survives because in 40 seconds he can kind of push with the, his ultimate, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, but this is what we were just saying. Zephyr isn't actually that tanky. No, uh, not not at the moment. I think his space HP is too low, but I mean he couldn't afford a, afford a heart right now either. So yeah. But the damage from Soul Reaper with his ultimate is actually too much. He's got a spell shards as well, so he's doing a fantastic amount of damage versus the Zephyr. Yeah, and they have Hellflower picked up on Puppet Master to lock him down, so he, he, like, even if he survives uh, the initial Puppet Show, he won't be able to get, get his ulti or a Barry Idol off. Yeah, and look at this, they're not even afraid, they're just healing using the Soul Reaper right here. And they just get the base tower, and there's nothing that Donkey Kong can do. They're really trying their best, but... Okay, so they are going to stop now that the rest of the Legion uh, is spawning, but... I, it just feels like... Uh, Legion took a couple of very unfortunate fights, and they're just doing such a great farming on all of the heroes on Hellborn. Even Accursed is, uh, would be third farmer on Legion right now. It's true. I mean, except for such a strong hero if it's snowballing, but... And even though he's 420 GPM, that's like... Look at the initiation on the Bombardier right here. He's going to get shielded and sent after immediately, and he's not going to fall. Like, look at the support coming up from the Hellborn. Yeah, they're they're kind of playing like us, like uh, like uh, with the items. Like, really good supporting here. Like, every time someone gets gone on, they get tableted sheep, or tablet store or uh, tableted and sent after and curse shielded, and they even have, like, Energizer and three tablets. Like, they have so much to help their team. Yeah, because the name of the game right here is just sustain. And that even ri sort of rhymes, it's a semi-rhyme, but the sustain is just ridiculous. And you have the Puppet Master now with the Shrunken gonna be picking up a Geo Geometer's Bane as well. That's gonna be so strong versus the entire Legion team to get rid of all the debuffs. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it's it's really, really strong here. And he has the Hellflower to do some damage as well. Like, he can he can comfortably pick off, uh, pick off the... The Geos, that's going to be give him a lot of survivability and a little bit of damage and just get a, a strong damage item as his 6th slot and like out carry this game to be honest. As like Zephyr is so strong but it's like 530 GPM. You kind of need like in the 600s and if you add that it's unstoppable but right now yeah. Puppet Master is only like 30 GPM behind and, he, and that hero just does more with the items he, it's got. Yeah, I almost feel like... This is exactly how Hellborn team wanted the game to go. They knew that Zephyr was going to get big, but because they have so many items to save their team, 
there's not actually a lot of damage coming out from the Zephyr. Even with that Staff of the Master with the 12 Cyclones, it's really not enough damage for uh, to kill Soul Reaper. And they really need to start focusing on who they want to kill because Puppet is dealing a lot of damage now, so that's definitely a priority. But Soul Reaper is healing a lot and dealing a lot of damage, so they also need to target him. And Bombardier is also doing a lot of damage because he's Bombardier. And a yeah. curse is going to save everyone, so they have too many targets to go on. It's definitely tough. I feel like uh, they probably need to just go Hail Mary, Hail Mary for the Soul Reaper as he only has 1300 HP. Uh, it's so they squishy. are looking for something in mid lane on the Legion. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, yeah, the fight is uh, coming close as Pestilence. He has a double damage rune and he, he's going to be the one using it, I think. Time to fly! Now. Look at this, he is going to get a two-man stun on the Galatius and the Puppet Master, but he's going to get instantly shielded. So and now behind. it's uh, Pestilence, yeah, his team is really far behind, and now Zephyr is coming in. He's got the ultimate on the Zephyr, but Zephyr is actually quite tanky this time. Bombardier is going to end up falling, and this fight is actually going well for the Legion, as now Puppet Master is forced to run away. Look at that damage coming out from the Legion. They are going to run into the Bombardier ulti, and Bunny Lover is going to fall, as that was a buyback. And now Zephyr is forced to run away, and Aluna, he's got a tablet up, but is he going to use it on his buddy, or is he going to use it on himself? As he is going to actually get stunned up here, and I'm not sure what that was. But he was trying to port back with it afterwards, but... Oh, nice port in from the Bombardier right there. A Sand Scepter on the Zephyr. He's got the bomb on the Zephyr as well, so Zephyr actually in a lot of trouble. He's going to get stunned for three seconds, and then you have the Accursed and the Puppet Master coming over. The Cell Flower on him is now as well, and Zephyr is going to be falling. Warchief, the sole survivor on the side of Legion. I do not know what Aluna was doing. Maybe that's a suicide play to try to stop them as the rest of the team got out, but it obviously didn't end up working out as the Zephyr, the biggest hero on the Legion team, ended up getting caught anyway with a great bomb from Bombardier here. This yeah. is gonna probably translate into bottom racks if they choose to go for it. And Chipper just ran through the entire Bombardier ultimate. I will have to say that, that it was a really well placed uh, bomb ulti as well as the fact that a really well thought out buyback because he knew that he could place that globally having that stuff of the master. Did Bob die? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay. They do, they choose to do Kong. Their own Kong is off. I actually like this better. Yeah, they're gonna be able to push bottom lane afterwards or mid lane or top lane, whichever one they choose actually. Yeah, all, their, yeah, all the waves are also pushed out, so this is perfect timing. Kong buff is just too strong. Like, if they... Oh, but look at this. They've got rockets. They are going to block it on the Glacius. Power throw not going to be there in time either. So they attempted to uh, steal the Congo right there, but it was not meant to be. Yeah, I would like to, uh, to see the help on side. Just 5-man TP bottom as soon as this Congo spawns and kill it and they go push. Yep, there it spawns. Are they going to TP? They've got an Invis rune on the Bombardier, so that's definitely going to help out as well. But just the item choices by Hellborn are just fantastic. Yeah, They've got a Shrunken now on Soul Reaper as well, and he's already difficult to kill with that Gnomes and Tablet and Astrolabe, but now he's got a Shrunken Head on top of it. And yeah, they can't even go for it now, so like, as I said, they, they needed to go for, like, Hail Mary for the Soul Reaper, that's not an option anymore. As if he gets Shrunken off, like, they just lose the fight. So, uh, yeah, I think you, I don't know who you go for, maybe you just go for a Puppet or a Bomb, either or, but it's so hard as they can just remove the stuns with Fire Shield and Tablet three times and shit. Yeah, the way to stop a Zephyr is simply to wait until he's ineffective. And I think they're doing a great job at that right now. Yeah. Glace is actually in an awkward spot right here. He uh, has tablet up. He's going to tablet himself away. And Hellborn actually not looking to fight right here. They have no Ward of Sight either. So they do actually have Ward of Sight. And they are yes, seeing the entire up. Legion team. But you know, they've never initiated a fight. It's always been Legion running into them. Yeah, that's true. Zephyr's way up here. Smoked, uh, however. Yeah, they gonna, and Puppet uh, Master smoked as well. He's gonna, yeah. They're gonna get vision on Soul Reaper, and they're gonna get vision of Zephyr as well. He's jumping in to find the Puppet Master, and he does. Glacius is in the background stunned with him, but they just can't do anything right here as Warchief now getting caught in the background. Nice ultimate from Pestilence. He's gonna get the Glacius, but now a curse is gonna ulti up. He's gonna heal up the full. Zephyr is getting targeted by all the ultimates from the Hellboard side, and he is gonna fall as well. Pestilence doing no damage at all as all the heals come out and GG's are being called as Donkey Kong does lose the first match. Really well played by Good Clan Rejects. Super well played. They picked a certain, certain strategy and just executed it super well. Yeah.
Definitely. Like, uh, what are your final thoughts on the game? How could Donkey Kong have turned this? Uh, I don't know. It's like just two, 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 like one or two, three, maybe in unfortunate fights they, they took where they shouldn't have. And they just didn't quite have the item to go yet. And I think that's what mattered. Like they could, those two, three fights just made it so that Hellbone could just draw out the game, get the farm up, um, all their heroes, out farm the, farm the Legion team and just go late game. Yeah, Warchief late game is also very powerful, and Puppet Master does fall out or fall off as well. Mm -hmm. That is true, but I mean, the the Hellbone side just executed their strategy super well. It's tough to do anything here. Yeah, and I think it really just came down to uh, the Warchief also not having the absolute best time in mid lane versus the Bombardier. So really credits to Bilbo Swaggen for uh, taking control of that mid lane so well because a really farmed Warchief is also very scary because if he's unkillable when he gets that shrunken and is able to just run in on the enemy team he can shrunken twice in a team fight simply because the cooldown of it is so low yeah it's uh it's a incredible hero that's like currently underutilized uh, and they tried it here just didn't give it the a time to shine like it, they didn't put the war chief in a position to succeed as he was made against a bombardier one of the best laners in the game right now and bilbo just played how he was supposed to he just Got all the denies, got a lot of creep kills, forced the bomb or uh, the warchief into the jungle. Like he executed mid very well. So, yep. And uh, that was game one of a best of three. So we will be coming back. So guys, stay tuned.
captain's pick. Welcome back to this semifinals number two of the Han OMG Cycle Six. We've got Good Clan Rejects versus Donkey Kong. We just had a very exciting first game where uh, both teams had the advantage for a little bit of time, but Good Clan Rejects ended up being one ahead. I'm joined by Satellitium again, and we're going into this next game. Sate, what do you think that uh, is going to happen this game? Are there going to be any major changes in terms of draft? Uh, I think, yeah, to be honest, like, they're not going to allow, like, the Hellbone team is not going to allow the Legion team to pick, uh, as they just did with the, the Cursed and the, the Soul Reaper. I think we'll see two very different drafts, and it's going to play out completely differently. It was a exciting game last game, and it could definitely go by, both ways here. Yeah, I feel like they need to really deal with the Soul Reaper. Had they targeted Soul Reaper in the early fights instead of other heroes, they would have been far better off. And they need to make some adjustments to their item pickups as well, because the Frost Field plate on Zephyr was actually completely useless. He should have picked up something else, and I really think, like, in the early game, they should have played it differently. You have a, a very, very terrible matchup for the Warchief in the Warchief versus Bombardier, and he's just suffering the entire game. Uh, what they need to do is just rotate a single hero there, and Bombardier is gonna die every time. Yeah, they could have even gone for the uh, for the for the uh, one two two, as we mentioned in the game, where they had dual uh, dual mid, single top, and uh, dual bottom, just to make sure that they actually get farm on the war chief because he needs help early game. I mean, they gave him too too tough a matchup and didn't help him out, so of course he didn't have the greatest time. I think the hero is too, too greedy with the... If you don't give it any help as a Bombardier. They go with the Glacius here again. Are you convinced by that hero, by the way? I think, uh, no, no and yes. Because, like, they know how to use this hero on Hellborn. Like, they really do know how to use this hero, the Americans. We saw, like, a multiple great ultimates uh, coming out from Rusaru last game. So, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I mean, I don't think uh, we will ever pick it up. I seriously, I mean, I think there's better options, but they do play it super well. Maybe it's just a comfort pick. Yeah, like, I feel like the Glacius is also just picked up for the Chilling Presence. It just makes it so much easier for the rest of his team to keep farming as well. Soul Reaper definitely benefits. Um, Bombardier benefits from that aura as well. It just allows them to take more waves and just burst down more waves whenever they want to. For sure, and I... I just don't see how an argument for picking it up over the chipper here as they do on the on the Hellbon side. And I don't know why the Americans don't they're not too sold on chipper really, as it's it's the perfect hero for their playstyle. If you yeah, wanna sit back and farm your right? jungle. Yeah, focus buffer as a defensive uh, skill in lane. Mother. And if you wanna sit back and farm the entire game, you have a, a hero capable of stacking five camps at the same time. I mean it's the perfect hero for their style of play. Yeah, I will say though, one benefit of having Glacius over any other support is that you cannot tablet someone who's been Ice Imprisonment, who has Ice Imprisonment on him. And, and uh, you know me, I love tablets, Sate. So if you can't use a tablet because you're Ice Imprisoned, well, that's a I plus mean, for me. <laughs> that, that is a strong strong point. They do go with the Monarch here on the Hellbone side. As, as you pointed out, it wasn't picked up last game and it was kind of weird. They do so pick it up here. Benstington, I mean, already a completely different draft from the from both teams here. Yeah, they do have they do still pick up the chipper on Donkey Kong, but Bensington, that's an interesting pickup for the uh, U.S. team. It's not really what screams late game or anything, but it does scream. I can go global gank whenever I want to. I think they usually play with this on Map Pro in the in the off lane. Mm -hmm. So they'll go a, a, a dual core lineup here most likely. So they can take it to the, to the late game, but uh, Bensington screams aggression to me. Yeah, the Ophelia is still up. I would have, I, I can actually see them picking up an Ophelia this game as well, just to take over the game immediately. I mean, what you got Ophelia is so, so scary. I yeah. mean, that's, that's the only game we lost against the Americans. And they stomped us in that game because of what you got just taking over the game with Ophelia. I, I would like to see them pick it up here. I don't think uh, the Hellbone side are going to ban it. and. Ugi is kind of greedy, to be honest. Yeah, and I feel like Ugi 
Um, he has the Monarch with him, which I really like for the Cleansing Wind for any of the debuffs that can be applied to the Ugi. But uh, I feel like Ophelia might just be too much if they do go for that route because they don't have any counter push other than the Tarquakes right now. And to expend all your mana on the Tarquakes when you're not in range to auto attack anybody is really detrimental for Ugi. Exactly. And if you take over the enemy jungle at, like, say, the 10 minute mark with the Ophelia. Where does the Ugi go? Like that hero needs to farm the jungle to have a good time or to to really excel. So yeah, we'll see. So though. Uh, they have the rally and they could be running that as a semi support inside of the legion. I've seen them play that there as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think it's pretty good right now. But Monarch, Monarch's Q is also um, an immobilize. So. You can't actually compel people who have the Monarch uh, Crippling Pollen on them. Another reason uh, why Tablet doesn't, and the, why Tablet isn't the greatest item versus Monarch. But same thing for Glacius. I I keep mentioning this because I'm in love with that item. But you know what I mean. It's, it's a big deal. Arachna is a great pick versus Ugi. Yeah, you can just kite him for years and years and years with the spider sting. Yeah, and the W uh, is amazing. Like you just don't take damage from Ugi. Like you're immune to both chipper rockets and Ugi. Uh... Googie abilities and you mm -hmm. can break out of the Monarch Q. Yep, you can break out of the Monarch Q. You can get rid of the, the slow from Chipper. You can get rid of the slow from Tarquake. Whatever hero they're picking now, I'm going to think, think of something that they can uh, get rid of with Arachna as well. The only thing is, it is a uh, it is a hero that needs some time to get going. Basically, he needs to get that... If he's going for the full carry route, he needs that Hyper Crown along with something like a Geometers to really start dealing damage. But I think it's really a good pick versus Ugi. Although Ugi does build armor, Arachna just does so much damage with his E that it's probably not going to matter. Yeah, I'm kind of favoring the, the Legion draft here at, at this point in time. We'll see how it finishes out with, with three more picks here. It's, it can be completely different here. But I mean, they did end up banning the Sephoris, so there's not going to be that counter. But they could pick up the... Uh, the Soul Trap upgrade, I can't remember what it's called Dream right catcher, now. Dreamcatcher, yeah. Dreamcatcher, but they do have Monarch also to purge it, so... Yeah, that's why I like Monarch here with that Ugi. Iker is another hero that comes to mind to be a good hero good hero to share with Ugi, so that... Uh, to uh, stop any debuffs. Uh, only 10 seconds on the clock here from Hellborn. They're really thinking about this pick. Yeah, they are gonna go for the Midas. I don't. I'm not sure you can actually get rid of the hardened care, uh, or you can get rid of the transmute. I think you can actually. It I might be a blue debuff, know. but we're just gonna have to wait and see. I just think. Uh, I mean, it's kind of. I'm. I'm kind of scared that the Hellborn are gonna pick to pitch into all of them into. Uh, to, <laughs> to only magic damage this game, mm -hmm. again. Yeah, I would that's really gonna like be an to see issue. Them a damage hero. On the, are they the gonna go finger. Armadon? <laughs> if they go Armadon, they have the perfect. Uh, who do they kill? Ugi or Armadon? They can't kill either because they don't have the damage. But we're just gonna have to wait and see. I would actually like Armadon with Ugi. The heroes are very similar. That was also a good pick here, as it provides physical damage. And Ugi or uh, Devwood is amazing versus Arachna. Do you think so? I know he keeps dealing damage to him and stuff, but he has so much armor on Arachna. Yeah, I mean, so Aggie here with the, with that's gonna get a lot of armor because of the Aggie items. But Deadwood can keep him in the in the grasp through Hot and Carapace, and yeah, the ultimate true. does does a lot of damage. And they kind of yeah. need this physical presence right now, as like they only have magic damage. Yeah, and you can't uh, compel people away from the Deadwood Q as well, which is definitely powerful. But they have a really greedy lineup on the side of the Legion. So it is going to be a semi-support rally, which I like to see. I enjoy playing it as well. And it's a uh, very powerful hero, hero versus Ugi to save people. It's just not very good against either the Minus, Midas or the Monarch, as you cannot, and the Deadwood, because you cannot compel people who are monarch queued, Midas transmuted, or Deadwood uh, grasped. Yeah, they did a good, good job by picking up stuns that you cannot uh, compel people out of or immobilizes or whatever. Uh, picking up crowd control that you can't compel people out uh, out of uh, because they picked the value so early. Good from the help on side here. Uh, who do you think has the late game? I'm I'm leaning a Legion for sure as they both have the Benchington, Arachna, and the Electrician. 
Yeah, Midas really, unless he has a really great game and gets a ton of farm with a sheep and everything like that, he's not going to have the same impact that an electrician Arachna and Benzington will have. Or, I mean, I, I, I guess the... Uh, it's just they don't have a second carry on the side of the Hellborn. That's the main issue. They are swapping up the roles here, as you have a Saska dude on, on the Ugi and Fall playing Midas, so it's probably going to be Midas middle. Yeah, here but doesn't the, Arachna take that? You're the mid player, yeah, so you yeah, can uh, sure. comment on that. For sure. I would not be like... like Midas attack animation is honestly so bad. Like, it's slow projectile, there's a big wind-up. I don't see how he's going to get last hits versus Arachna. Yeah, and it's I also mean, the fact that Glacius is going to be giving mana to the Arachna in lane. Yeah, and you can spam that web shot more. Uh, I really do not like this matchup. Uh, I feel like they're setting them up, themselves up to losing mid. But then again, what heroes do really do well against the Arachna middle? Flint, I mean, right? Flint, Flint can beat it if you just sit on your hill and just last it creeps as you have uh, <laughs> even better attack animation. I think Deadwood bring... could do quite decent, and I, I think Deadwood loses against an electrician as well. So I'm not entirely sure how Hellborn needs to lane this to win because they're not going to win mid or bottom lane with oh. either hero. They've not set themselves up to win the laning phase, and there's better late game on the side of the Legion. So their timing is going to be when Ugi becomes very difficult to kill, but they need their top lane to go really well then. And they're against a Bensington Rally Glacius. So I think they have a chance. I don't think Glacius is the best in tri lanes, and neither is uh, Rally when you have another melee as a yeah. carry. And you can't, as you said, compel them out of Monarchy, which is going to be the main initiating skill from the Hillbound side. Yep. Uh, I, I do favor the the Monarch uh, Chipper uh, Ogi tri lane over the, the Legion tri lane, though. So they're setting themselves up to lose mid and bottom, but they're they should, and I'm gonna say should because like in tri lanes everything can happen. Uh, but it's I also think just that chipper is incredible, right? Yeah, chipper is amazing. Like, uh, I mean, I know we pick it, chipper. we pick it up pretty much every time we can, because yeah, the boring. hero. Yeah, we're boring, exactly. But it looks to me like they're gonna be dual laning mid, so they're gonna be turning this around, and I actually really like this. If Legion does end up laning in this way then i think hellborn might actually come out on top because glacius again is not the greatest laner so in mid lane he's not going to be as effective as a chipper or a monarch and dual lane monarch and midas versus an electrician rally for example because rally will probably be the one to rotate over either to mid or to bottom is not going to put a lot of harass out either yeah, yeah this is very interesting i mean uh... A dual mid with Ugi should be weak on paper, but we'll see. Like, I, I like I like this because the other way they're just setting them up to lose too many lanes, to be honest. And what they need to do, do here probably is just, like swap so the electrician goes top versus a deadwood and wins that. I would have uh, maybe preferred having the Midas top lane over the deadwood because deadwood has no escape. So if he gets caught by one dead one Bensington stun, he's probably dead early on. But at the same time, do they really have the greatest burst on the side of the Legion? No, they don't. So I take that back. Midas is squishier than Deadwood. So Deadwood is actually better in the top lane here. Yeah. Not by a lot, though. Like, Midas has 600 HP, whereas Deadwood has 680. I think either hero gets caught, they're going to die. That's impressive. Yeah. But this is so nice for the side of the Legion, though. Ugi can just harass using Tarquakes, and Arachna is already getting wrecked right here by the Chipper. Yeah. He does have a power supply. But. Yeah, he's taking so much harass right now. Yeah, what is he gonna do here? There's Glacius is roaming yeah. over though. But they need to just control the lane on the side of the Hellborn, and I think they have this. They, they are. They are denying every creep. Yes, they need to. Yeah, but this dual dual range might be too much for the Ugi to deal with, but Ugi is a very tanky hero, and I think Chipper should be using one rocket to just stack the hard camp and the medium camp uh, at 55. Agree. I agree, yes. Like level 5 Ugi can just rotate into, into that and take two triple stacks at the same time. Yep. He's gonna go... He should go for focus buffer because it even works on the Arachna Q. Yeah, and he did. Yeah, he I think he's gonna max it, right? On, on Ugi. Yeah, he should max. Like, uh, no no points in, in Tatos. 
And it did get the Iron Shield instantly on Ugi, which I like a lot. Like the double range do not damage to the Ugi with Iron Shield. Iron Shield is so strong. Yeah, but our Chipper does have to be careful. If he's caught out of position, then he's just gonna get uh, Orb walked down. Yeah. But you actually, we have Monarch, Monarch rotating behind. over to the mid lane, so it could be Glacius who's in trouble. There's not the most mana on Ugi, but he's got his E up right now, so he might be able to get some mana back. But look at this, Glacius is going to be the target of choice as they do use the Crippling Pollen. The Rocket is going to miss, though, and actually, here comes Rally. So they're having a tri lane versus tri lane in the mid lane. <laughs> but hey, ben Bensington versus Deadwood? Deadwood wins that, right? I like the Deadwood matchup way better, and in the bottom lane, I don't know how long Monarch was here for, but the Electrician is super struggling right now. Yeah, I think Midas, with a little bit of an advantage, has quite a good base damage, so he's going to be doing decent versus an Electrician. Yeah, agreed. I'm not sure about the early power supply though on the Ugi this game, as they don't really cast a lot of abilities on the side of Legion. I mean, it's a dual lane, so it's always okay, but I really would like to just get the bottle. Yeah, I have, feel like he needs support. the bottle for last hits as well. He yeah. can just be using that to get last hits. Agreed. Like, he can use Tarkrake to, to last it as much as you want with the bottle and just have Chipper go fill it up while he gets XP and gold. Yeah, and uh, Chipper still needs to start stacking these camps. You need so many. You, you just want all the camps stacked as an Ugi. Yeah, and it's very, very good this game, as, like, even if Legionnaire. Legion gets a big advantage. Which Top lane, we do have initiation up. on the Deadwood. Rally is coming over as well, but there comes the Grasp from the Deadwood, but it seems like they know that this rotation is happening. They don't have any vision of it, but continue, Sate. Yeah, as I was just saying, the Legion can't steal stacks. Like, what hero can clear stacks on the Legion team? Not Only really Electrician. Any. Yeah, Electrician can, but is he going to rotate into the jungle? Like, I think, like, if they stack, they're not going to have, like... Mid lane, we do have initiation onto the Glacius again, and look at that damage from long range. Here's the Ugin, he doesn't have any mana though, and the rocket is going to be enough for the last hit. And now Arachna is all alone, he's trying to chase that anyone on the Hellborn team, that's all out of mana. But he simply cannot do the damage. I mean, this is so well played by the, uh, the, the Hellborn team actually, like... They completely swapped it on his head with these lanes, like having uh, the, the Ugi made such a smart move. Yeah, and Midas is actually doing fantastically versus Electrician, even though Monarch's been rotating so much, but they might actually go for a kill here, as Monarch is rotating neighbor. There comes the slow, it is going to miss though, so they're going to need to use two other abilities to get the stun on him, oh, he and missed. he missed. Both, yeah, missed Q and E, that's unfortunate. So they're not going to get the kill on top lane, we do have the uh, dive actually coming up from the Bensington, but with that Iron Shield, the tower doesn't actually seem to hit that hard. That was doing okay here, as like... Bensington is winning the lane with the advantage he's been given. Uh, but Devil's Dev is doing okay. Yeah, he just needs to uh, stay higher HP, I think. Yeah, I agree. Because if Rally rotates over, then I think it's a kill. I think right now he can get killed with QW. Oh, he got help. Yeah. But I mean, Bensington should just be using a stun right now. Okay, he's going to be auto attacking, so he's going to take damage, but he has a bottle compared to the Deadwood who doesn't. So, cancelling that health bot is actually. Very valuable right there. And now Chipper is starting to stack. He gets only one stack off, unfortunately. Yeah, I oh, think yeah. that's going to be fine. As it, they're probably going to be triple stacked. As Look at this, though. Both. Electrician is going to run into the Monarch right here. Combo from Midas should be next to follow up. And yeah, there they do. They have the Q as well. And that's going to be an easy kill on Bilbo Swaggen. In the mid lane, we do have some initiation as Glacius is getting caught by the Rockets as well as the Ugi. But Ugi might be the one who is in trouble as he's getting a lot of damage. He did use Power Supply, but he's not going to be able to survive. And I think that's just like... I think that's just too much of a dive. You're an Ugi. You, need just, you just need to secure your own farm in this lane. Too careless. They just need to play defensive, like, and rotate into the jungle when Chipper has stacked uh, like everything, and they're gonna have such a big advantage. Yeah, Thank and when you. Ugi rotates there, then Monarch or Chipper themselves could take the mid lane if they want to. Yeah, for sure. In bottom lane, we have some damage being put onto the Midas, but Electrician. Uh, is now okay. having a decent time. He is diving onto the Midas, but was not able to cancel the health pot. And Midas now, with that Monarch, is going to be able to get the easy stun on the Electrician. The damage from the Monarch is coming out as well with that with that E, but I think Electrician is still in trouble. Now he's out of mana, and they're gonna get the kill. Midas with another kill on the Electrician. 
Ellie's here now, but it's obviously too late. Boogie's chasing Vicious in the hill. Yeah. He's in jungle now. Why is he not in the middle lane? Like, what's going on? Deadwood and Chipper's mid now. Oh, but look at this, Monarch. Might be, uh... Might be a bit in danger as well. He is going to use a health potion, but they seem to have rotated the Deadwood over to middle lane right now, and Oogie is now just sort of roaming around. He's really not got the best farm. Oh, I don't know why they play it like this. Like, Bensington is getting yeah. uncontested here and can sit top for the entire game with ultimate and just rotate whenever they need him to. Uh... Yeah. And Deadwood level 6 is really valuable, so they really shouldn't be leeching XP with Chipper. No, they can just have him top and get full XP. I don't know what they're doing here. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of what's happening here as now Oogie is going to be bottom laning versus a rally, but I don't know. I feel like he needs to get armor boots on Oogie as well. I mean, this I might game. sleeping top now. Yeah, armor Midas. Boots are going to be great. But I mean, with one rotation, doesn't Midas die? He does have the Astrolabe, so he is quite tanky, but Bensington's damage output is just really high as well. Yeah, he went for the QW build, so I think with the... Uh, <laughs> With any rotation, he is gonna die on Midas. Dodge yeah. every single kill here. Great play by Bensington. Yeah, and now we have uh, Chipper. He is gonna get it. some triple stacks. He's actually gonna miss the hard camp. But he is gonna get the easy camp, I think. Yeah, he's gonna get yeah. the double stack. And these are gonna be really valuable for Ugi to recover, but... Ugi really just needs to be mid. Like, they weren't losing mid at all. Oh, well, they're doing so well and just rotating the Oogie in when he has six or five or whatever into the jungle was going to be so big for them. But now he's bottom just suffering. Like, he's not even close to the creep wave. Mm. Yeah, he's getting 240 GPM now, but once, I guess, everything's tripled, that's that's when he's going to rotate. He's going to get gripped up by the electrician, but this is just for harassment purposes more than anything else. Chesty does CP with haste here. Did they see this? They didn't. They're walking in. Oh no, I think it's this is a dead so Oogie. Yeah, yeah, there's a spider sting coming in on the Oogie. They're just slowing him down way too much. He doesn't have his ulti up yet, so he's just yeah. gonna fall. He didn't even use Q and electrician. Really good in uh, yeah. with Testy here. Yeah, for sure. And Testy's just another carry. You have to remember that, whereas the Hellborn only have one carry and they have Midas. In top lane, we do have the combo being used on the Bensington, but oh. it's actually Midas who's low, but Midas now, with the help of Monarch, is gonna be able to kill Kiera Sukulo. Great job by the by the Midas to just taking the fight here, baiting him in, making it seem like he Oh, but top lane, we do have a compel in on the Midas in the mid lane. We have some action going on as they do, I think, punch. Yeah, they punched uh, Testy, and that's going to be a uh, easy kill for Holme on that Deadwood. And they're trying to get another grasp. He does end up missing the grasp, though, and Chipper going to take all the damage oh. from the tower. And he's not right-clicking on Deadwood, so that is actually so well played by Rosaru. And, uh, wow. He just died on Chipper. Uh, that's Deadwood, man. Like, what, what they need to do there when they're diving the tower is for Chipper to un the tower, not hit anyone and have the Deadwood click the click the glaciers so the tower switches acro. Yeah, so. and uh, what was it that I was going to say? Uh, Chipper hasn't actually upgraded his Somas. Zamos, sorry. Yeah, he went for the power supply instead of trying to get that... Uh, Grave Rocket, which I actually really like reading for on Chipper, as you get so much experience from stacking. Yeah, he'd be level 6 right now, if he actually got it early on. Yeah, And he sure. got the first blood, so he could have afforded it almost immediately. And power supply really isn't that helpful in this lane, so he should be looking to upgrade his Zamos. Let's go for the Mana Ring on Ogi initially, or the Mana Boots it's gonna become. Maybe he's gonna split that into Icon and get the armor boots later on. I hope so, because armor boots are just amazing here. But we'll yeah, see. definitely feel like he should be uh, getting armor boots this game. It also helps him farm the woods far more than the mana boots, actually. Bensington going in with the sun in the top lane. He does end up whiffing it, though. And here comes the damage from the Midas as well as the Chipper. That's gonna be an easy kill, but Monarch uses his W on himself. Uh, Astrolabe is there to keep him alive Rain for a long time. Goal. But this Glacier's ulti is being absolutely incredible. But Rally is gonna get caught by the Grasp. Nice TP coming out from the Deadwood. But it's not going to matter as now Midas is going to be falling to the Spider Sting from the Arachna. So five heroes rotated over from the Legion and Oogie was just um, a bit too low from having farmed all that, all those jungle stacks. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, they did get the kill on the Bensington, which is now quickly dropping a farm. He went from almost 400 GPM uh, to 300. Look at this, though. 
Electrician was trying to set up another kill on the top lane. Look at that ward, by the way, by Kiero Sokulo. I actually really like that. Where is it? In next to the first tier tower on top lane. Oh yeah, that's actually super strong. So yeah, that that gives the Legion vision of whatever is TPing in as well as behind the tower even. But even like uh, in that fight, we saw saw the the Benchiton unfortunately miss the joust. And as you said, they, they can just hold them down while Rally can't compel them out. So Rally had to compel in to try to save him. And it, it just didn't work out. Like great drafting from Hellbone's side. Mm -hmm. Now Midas is back to the bottom lane. He dropped from 400 after a cup after that death to 380. But look at that damage coming out from him. He's actually just going to keep going on uh, Bensington there. And just like last game, I would like someone to pick up a Soul Trap. It's just such a good item, especially on Midas. It allows yeah. you to go for those solo kills. You just need Soul Trap on Midas. It's a hero I love to play a lot, and you just can't kill people without it. <laughs> Arachna just walking into the Hellborn Woods right now. It looks to me like he's going for an Astrolabe, almost 100%. Which is an alright item, but it's really to fight early on. And with them having the late game, is that something they really want to do? Probably not, but like having the Astro just to survive, survive gangs and... Oh, look at this though, the ward from... Uh, oh, those rockets coming in onto the Glacius. Glacius is having a bad time here as he gets killed by the Chipper Ultimate. So the two supports from the Hellborn just being a bit too strong. Yeah, this newly placed ward by Barney Lover really paying off. Yep, but they know now that that's there because he was uphill when he TP'd. Yeah. Probably gonna get in, so we'll kind of ward it. I mean, not even instantly because it's so hard to put someone there to... To kind of want it for the Legion side right now. I think they just need to say to sit back more and make sure that this oh, Midas might, might be in trouble. He's getting compel stunned right now, but he's so tanky on that hero. Bensington is oh, coming in with the ult. ultimate, but he's got I the like combo, it. so he's gonna do that. And he's still gonna fall though, as Joust, unless he misses oh. it. Nice just sidesteps coming out, but there comes the Deadwood Grasp, and actually, it's gonna be Rally who's gonna fall. The Q stun did hit from the Monarch, and Bensington needs to run away, but Electrician is now here, but. Oh man, what a combo from the Midas, making sure to stop Bensington from getting any other damage in, but... I do this actually is... like the, yeah? the play of Bensington ultimating there to catch up to him, but he needs to not uh, like stop cancel his jobs. He needs to just go for it as they are TPing and it takes too long. Yeah, uh, hesitating like... is definitely gonna get you killed, actually. Yeah. He did uh, get to get out of there though, but it, yeah. it cost the Oh, look at this. Grasp does hit on the Arachna in the mid lane, but I think he just wants to get the counter kill. He used the Spider Sting on the Deadwood, but does he actually have the damage to kill Deadwood? No one is coming in from the Hellburn right now. And it looks... Oh, wow. Slaska Dirt actually getting bottom tower, but in top lane, it's Type Racer who's going to be falling to Bensington as now they do get the kill. Bottom lane, we do have initiation onto the Ugi, but he's just too tanky right now, and Electrician can't do enough damage. I mean, so much going on right now. Uh, great kill on the Midas. It's very important for this Betsyton to kind of be recover to the level he was at. He needs to be 400 plus for them to sit back and just go for late game. But great kill. They did get the tower though. We'll see how this impacts the, the Legion jungle. It's way yeah. harder to defend when you don't have the bottom tower. It feels to me right now like Donkey Kong is playing a bit too much on top of each other. And they need to split their farm up as much as possible because Deadwood now with the armor boots. I mean, he's he needs that portal key because Midas is going to go for more of a uh, build-up type of game where he gets some more items before he starts being the main initiator. Uh, yeah, like I don't know. They lack initiation minutes. again, man. Yeah, there's, it's 15 minutes and no one is come close to portal key at all. Like, yeah, I like the legs before before PK usually on the Deadwood, but then I'd like to see him maybe just... Like, yeah, top lane Midas in a lot of trouble as Ice and Prison comes out as well as the ultimate. But nice cancel from the uh, Chipper coming out. He's actually there perfectly in time and that's going to be a dead gracious, but they should have gone for Bensington. The rocket almost canceling the TP, but it was not meant to be. I mean, yeah. As you said, like the initiation is lacking. They probably needed the, the Deadwood to get Striders this game. Yeah, I'm just... This issue comes back to the draft, I think, Arachna later on. Though. Yeah, Arachne in the bottom lane is going to get caught by Deadwood. And look at that damage coming out. That Astrolabe keeping him alive for now, but it's not going to matter. There comes Bensington ulti, and they do have Rally coming over as well. Nice Joust Sun coming in. But Monarch is there with the ultimate, but... 
the compel stun does end up hitting, so Holme dying, giving Kiero Sukulo the ultimate warrior streak for 345 gold. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, the Astro paying off there, right? He's just survived just long enough for the, the Benzerton to get in and kick, get the counter kill here. Yeah, for sure. I, <laughs> I would have liked him to get a Mad Fritz maybe on Arachna as well, just for some added tankiness and movement speed when he gets enough kills. Mad, Mad Fritz are a very, very good item right now, to be honest. Mad Fritz are? Yeah. Okay. Very? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a very strong item at the moment. Like, uh, on a Aki carry, like, yeah. I would have liked to see it as well. He does yeah. go for the Thunder Claw though, which is fine. Like skipping the 1200 gold Mad Fritz to just go farming. It's fine if that's what their plan is. Yeah, and Ugi really isn't the biggest threat right now, being only 380 gold per minute. And again, they find themselves on a timer this game. I agree. And they do not have the like, initiation to force anything right now, so they're gonna have to yeah. wait and just take some fights. Midas does have the money for a PK, let's see if he picks it up. He could be going for spell shards, but no, you're right, he goes for the portal key. And I don't think spell shards would have been the worst either, considering he's versus a uh, gnome's electrician and an arachna with hardened carapace. I like spell shards, but I feel like they just need the PK right now to make some plays, try to force something. As I mean, the timer is not that dire as Ugi's very strong late game, but but they need to try to make plays soon. Yeah, I don't feel like Ugi out carries an arachna and a Benzington though. No, he doesn't. I agree. It, it's gonna be up to uh, the Deadwood to actually have a large impact trying to punch the Bensington and the uh, Arachna. Because the rest of, like, you cannot choose to target an Electrician this game. And Electrician is a threat in its own right because it can push out waves and it's just such a difficult kill. Even though he doesn't have the highest armor or anything and he is, you know, a uh, strength hero. It's not like Deadwood can really solo him at any no. point. And like these Aki carries, it's both Aki carries on, on enemy team as like Bensington has uh, 11 armor here on uh, on uh, in boots, even more on, on Aki boots. And there's only seven armor on Arachna, but that will start to pile up as he gets uh, maybe a firebrand into Geos or something. Yeah, the Lex Deleonis on Deadwood definitely gonna have an impact there. So he's gonna be doing close to full damage if he hits his grasp before, but he's just gonna be feeding off of the Glacius and Rally, I think. and. I don't even think that's the worst thing. Like, he should really be trying to give his team some more time to get the items that they need. If he can hit his grasp right here, that's gonna be a kill. He does hit the grasp on the rally. He's got the Lex, he's gonna punch him, and that's a dead rally. Great kill. Great yeah. kill. Uh, I mean, he needs to try to make some plays, and that's just what he's doing. Like, giving the, the supporting cast down this game is very important, as Rally was getting close to that PK. Only eight, he has 1800 gold right now. Yeah, and he was so, yeah, you, he denied him that early portal key as well, as you were saying. And De uh, Deadwood really needs to start farming his own portal key. He can even go to the medium camp and start farming that because the rest of his team is doing uh, the rest of the map, pretty much. They are. I mean, Minus is just pushing up, uh, like, split pushing top lane has, but it's just sitting here receiving every lane, like, killing yeah. and killing the creep waves. So they're just trading at the top lane at the moment. But uh, Chipper is going to be uh, triple stacking these two camps, so they're making good use of the Grave Locket that they have. And if they take good fights, I feel like they have every chance to win this, because getting that Thunderclaw on Arachna and the Hyper Crown on Bensington, although they're effective in team fights, they are not as effective as, let's say, a Portal Key to get the perfect initiation or the uh, fighting items that Ugi seems to be going. The fact is as gnomes or the shrunken head he's probably gonna pick up here. Like, so... I'm not I'm not a fan of the shrunken head here this game though. I don't think it's uh gonna save him. No? What what would you like to see him get then? I think an icon would be far more effective. Because I feel like the shrunken head, if he gets Arachna's ulti on him, he needs someone to to get to kill the spider. Yeah. Someone needs to tar to target it. And there's no one really on the Hellborn who wants to stand there auto-attacking a spider at this moment because they all have really low attack speed on every single hero, actually. Uh, and what they need to do is uh, just try to hit it with the Monarch and, and Chipper, uh, but it's, it's going to be difficult in fights. He did, however, keep his hatchet, which is smart, so he can hit it once, hatchet it once, and then uh, he just needs one or auto-attack from both supports. Yeah. And... Uh... 
Since they're not picking up a staff of the master, a tablet is definitely going to be effective versus it as well. I mean, they are going all to greed here on the on the legion side. They did go for the full hyper crown on Bensington to farm faster. They're going for a whispering helm on Arachna right now to farm faster. So Arachna just dropped his thunderclaw as to not push out waves faster. That's smart. In the mid lane, uh, I find it funny those small little details that people do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, those like small optimizations are what really makes a difference in the big yeah. uh, in the in the end. But I mean, Legion team is out farming the Hellborn team right now, and that's obvious by how the gold is just swinging in their direction, pretty much. And they do have, when did they they did go for the for the fighting or the farming items on on the Legion side. So if Hellborn can force something and win some fights here. They're just con gonna completely crush them, but if they miss their timing soon, then it's gonna be tough. Yeah, gonna Deadwood, be so fast. Deadwood almost has uh, the portal key, he just needs a couple more creeps. But on the other side, you have Rally picking up the portal key. So if Rally is quick enough, if Deadwood ever punches anyone, he can compel them out of the uh, grasp before it hits. I mean, they, they are going for Geos on Bensington, which I like. Uh, yeah, especially with the uh, Hyper Crown on top of it, it's going to have so much lightning damage and his E just makes it so they pierce through five magic armor. So for most heroes on the Hellborn, that means it's doing full damage. It's very strong and the Geos to get out of, out of uh, Deadwood Grasp and and remove some things like the Krypton Pollen or Tartar. -tar. Mid lane, we have the punch coming in onto the Arachnid. He does have the... Uh, Hardened Carapace immediately, but the damage from Hellborn is too much with Bensington getting the three-man ultimate right there, and there comes the Compel, and they're gonna get the Deadwood, but Uki is full up. He's got a Shrunken right now, so this is the timing. They need to get this fight to win, but Electrician is just too tanky. He's just not gonna die, and he is gonna get Simon's stuff, but here we have the Midas. He's, he wasn't there before, and he's gonna get the stun up on the Electrician. Now he's gonna get Grasp, and Bensington is doing a lot of damage to him, and he's just gonna fall as Uki is completely out of mana. He's trying to turn it, but the stun coming up from the Bensington is gonna keep Uki dead. Ah, he does get the kill on the Bensington, but what a fight coming out from the Legion, Crazy and this fight. is what I was worried for, man. I mean, this was insane. Absolutely amazing Glacier Salty, just full duration challenging Glacier Stomper on their heads. Uh, Bensington escapes with 100 HP, reaches up with the bottle and just rejoins the fight. Super well played by the Legion side. Yeah, but the Shrunken Head, although it did get rid of some of the damage from the Legion, the whole the whole thing with Ugi is that you just need to wait for his ulti to come to go down, and then you can kill him. And if you're gonna get heroes like Arachna and Bensington and Rally who are just really good at kiting, same thing with Electrician, then Ugi loses effectiveness. For sure. Uh, I mean, super well played. Like it's it's the uh, it was very close to getting that Bensington to kill. Like as you see, when him have, not having a shrunken head. He cannot be hitting things in the, in the middle of the fight. He's taking way too much damage, but as soon as he gets that, it's going to be big trouble for the Hellbound side. Look at bottom lane. We have Electrician with the Invis Rune scouting out the Deadwood right here. This is smoked uh, Arachna with a creep, so they're looking for someone right here. They might find the Monarch, but Monarch does have a Rev Word. It's... They're going for the Rally, though. Yeah, they seem to be going for the rally. Is he going to try and grasp first? No, he doesn't. He gets the punch up, and there comes the combo from Midas, and that's going to be enough to kill him. But the grasp is there on the Arachna. In the meantime, you do have Bensington ulting over to the Deadwood, but there you have the Monarch. He's going to queue up the Arachna, but... I gotta say that this is probably not a fight that the Hellborn wants to take. This Electrician is just so tanky right now, and... I mean, in the end, he's... I feel like Electrician is going to be a hero to carry. The Legion side. As he rotates over to the middle, you do have the combo on the Glacius. Nice tablet right before the transmute hits, but Glacius, is he oh, gonna fall actually? He's staying alive right now. Rocket. There you have the port coming out, but it's gonna get cancelled by the Joust, and uh, Glacius actually survives with help of the Gnome's Wisdom from the Electrician. I mean, I was about to say, that's a, such a greedy play by, by Glacius as he knew they were coming for him, but he just played it out perfectly, dodged the rockets and survived. Super well played by Uthru. Which is looking to pick up a storm here very soon. Yeah, storm is definitely going to be very effective versus Ugi to keep kiting him as well. Yeah, normally I would like to see the portal key on the glaciers, but he's been getting super good ultimates even without it. So. Yeah, I feel like similarly to last game, everyone on the Legion side is getting good farm, but there's only a couple of heroes on the Hellborn side. 
There's that are... There's farm a bit more on the Legion side, that's for sure. Uh, Might is far, very farmed and so is Hugi, but those are the star, uh, like, those are the only guys that are shining on the Hellbound side right now. Yeah, and Electrician now picks up the portal key, which I really like. So he can start to uh, grasp the Ugi and then uh, just try and, you know, dodge all the uh, skill shots coming out from the Hellborn. Glacius just altered a wave in top lane to farm. <laughs> I like it. It's 100 second cooldown. 105 seconds. I mean, why not, right? Why not? And he's gonna, he's gonna find Asia. the ward. Yeah. Wow. That was... Uh, he did that in uh, one rev ward. Easy. Easy. <laughs> But yeah, similarly to last game, Ogi is um, a hero much like Zephyr. In the sense that he has a timing, and if he misses that timing, then he's just going to fall off. He kind of plays in the same way, you're, you're right. They are getting uh, Frostful played on Ogi, which I really like against the Arachna. And it's a some part there with Bensington, which is still doing a shit ton of magic damage to do. He does have the shrunken head for that, though. Yeah, I think that's definitely the right item, and I would have preferred... He go for an Icon and Frostfield Plate over the Shrunken and Armor Boots. Because Armor Boots, you don't need... Like, I don't feel like Mana Boots are necessary on Ugi. We do have a Bensington ulti in the top lane as Might is now getting caught by the Electrician with that portal key. And that's going to be an easy kill on Type Racer. And this is exactly the guy they want to catch. Look at this though, Glacius is getting caught by the Chipper right here, and that damage coming out, nice compel coming out from the Rally to keep uh, Glacius alive, but here comes Ugi, he is running over, he's gonna not hit any of the slows, but now they're gonna be going for a Glacius, he's gonna get slowed up by Deadwood right there, but that's really not the target they want. No, and they did trade him for the Midas, like, uh, sorta, and the Midas kill is such a big deal, it's stopping him while pushing waves is such a big deal, he's gonna looking for uh, maybe a Hellfire on Midas, I think, with that Kana. Um, not sure if I like that, to be honest. Yeah, and Bensington actually went for the shrunken head on himself, and I like it, but I think he just needs to get some more HP more than anything. In the mid lane, we do have initiation as Rally comes in with the double ultimate on both the Chipper and the Ugi, but the punch happened in on the Arachna, but Arachna just after they did all up, and Ugi's now completely alone, and he's trying to do this completely alone as he's just hitting the tower. He's gonna get W'd up by Monarch. He's trying to port away, but the Grip is gonna be there, as well as this Joust stun, and now the Compel, and that's gonna be a kill on Slaske, as it's too easy to kite him right now. I mean, they, they tanked him for so... Like, he tanked through so much damage, but it just doesn't matter, as they, they just waited out the Shrunken. Like, super well played by Bentington, actually. Like, he... TP's in there, doesn't use Shrunk for a long time, uses Shrunken uh, and just constant out attacks with Lang's long, like, didn't use Joust the entire fight, waited for the TP, insta cancels the TP, and they get the Ugi. Yeah. Good patience. And what a compel uh, ulti by uh, what you got right there, killing the Chipper almost immediately, and Chipper is actually going for a Staff the Master first item, which I feel like is not the way to go, you cannot be greedy versus a Legion team like this, when you're one of the main sources of damage early on. A tablet, I feel, would be far stronger versus a Rally, as well as an Electrician to cancel the grip. And a Rakna, like, it's good against every single hero here on the Legion side. The tablet would be amazing. They can tablet people away from the spider. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I would have liked it. Great ultimate by what you got, as you said. It's very hard to line up those double stumps uh, to ultimate on Rally, as the compel is a bit... Uh, Bucky to stun with, but great play by him here. Yeah, and Midas is going to be going for a Hell Flower, but it's not a great item versus Arachna, as Hardened Carapace can actually remove it. And uh, it's not a it's a good item versus Electrician though. And I feel like the only target they can actually target with it is the Electrician to stop him from spamming that Electric Shield, getting HP back because of the mana cost for Gnomes, as well as just getting tankier. He's gonna finish it right now. He does, however, pick up a Frostfield Plate on Electrician. Uh, okay. Just right now. I he mean, just picked up a full Frostfield yeah, Plate. Yeah, he's 400 GPM. He's doing super well. I mean, they need to kind of catch the Bensington as the first hero with the Hellfrower to win the fight, but Bensington is not gonna be even gonna be there. He's gonna be split pushing somewhere and ulting in, so. Yeah, and look at this. They're gonna be going into the mid lane. There comes the grip actually on the Deadwood. He's gonna be saved for a bit by Monarch, and Monarch is gonna get his ulti off before. But Midas is almost dead. Deadwood is almost dead. Chipper is falling now. What an ultimate coming out from Rosaru. And now you have Ugi again, the sole survivor. He's gonna be using the Shrunk to the port out. Will he though? Yes, he will. So good choice right there, but they're not stopping the chase just yet. They're finding the Monarch over there with the Joust. 
They still have the Bensington ultimate, but nice two coming up from Bunny Lover. He is going to stun up the uh, Bensington, so he's going to be fine for now, but I don't think it's going to last for long as Arachna is there with the final hit, and that's going to be a kill on Bunny Lover. I mean, another great initiation by Radley. They kind of kind of missed the initiation by Deadwood a bit by not getting the instant punch on in that, or Glacius, which is just full HP right now. I mean, great initiation, kind of initiation by, by Radley to get another double ultimate here. Yeah, and I mean, this is the issue. They don't have enough lockdown for the Uzi to kill anyone, and it feels like they're sustaining themselves so well on the side of the Legion. In the fight, not just now, but the one before at the first tier tower in mid, Arachna got punched by Deadwood, but it did no damage. Because he just astrolabed afterwards, and then just auto-attacked with that lifesteal. He's got only 13, 14.4 armor or something like that, but yeah, it didn't matter. No, and they used the Hellfire on the Bensington, which they didn't focus at all. And what abilities are really looking to stop the, on the Bensington? None really, as if he just still was just going to be also attacking and then shrunk and after and, and went in, in and man fought the Uki. So. Yeah, I even even I even think Bensington could pick something up like Lifesteal just to sustain himself in teamfights. Because he's nice. going to be. He auto attacks the entire time. Yeah, he does. And Lifesteal would. Honestly, as you just said, be really good here, so... It would allow him to sustain himself as well when he gets the symbol of rage and... Yeah, I don't I don't see them killing either of the carries on the side of Legion. And even the Electrician, like, must, much less so the Electrician, actually. The electrician is doing so well now, and they can't punch him because the possible play, he does have the gnomes for every other damage skill, like... They need to catch him completely alone to kill the Electrician, they're never gonna kill him in a fight. Yeah, and this is the power of the triple core versus pretty much a single core. Because I don't see Midas having the same impact as an Arachna. No. It's true, they they just drafted better for late game and it's 30 minutes now, so their lead will usually start taking a bit over now. Unless yeah, they, uh, the help on side makes some good plays in the next, next like five minutes. Yeah, they could still very much turn this around if they get an item like a sheep stick, but... Who are they going to go on? If they don't sheep the electrician, then he's just going to purge whoever does get sheeped. And they can storm the sheep target. They can they can do so many things right now. So it's, yeah. uh, it's going to be tough for the side. And this Geo's on Bensington is just allowing him to split push wherever he wants to, by the way. That Hyper Crown Geo's combo is so strong. The Legion has oh, so strong. Yep, and I mean, they also have true strike, so it's not like they have any trouble pushing the base. No, one... Arachna can just hit uphill, as you just said. Like... Yeah. That's one of the main benefits of Arachna as well. It's just the fact that he's just so... Did you point out the so Ice Ogre strong. here? Yeah, I was just about to say he's been spamming that Ice Ogre on himself, so... There comes the punch, and he's gonna be punching the Bensington, but Deadwood might be falling immediately after. He's gonna get shielded up by the uh, Monarch. Chipper is still alive, but there comes a Rally Ulti. It is going to whiff. There's a Sword Spirit on Glacius to keep him alive. Oki does end up killing him, though, but Arachna is just hitting, 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 and there you have Electrician. He is falling low, but now they're doing a great job of kiting the Oki as they're not even focusing him. There's the grip, and nobody's gonna be able to cancel that as Bensington now in trouble, but there comes the Kapal in on the Deadwood. Rally is close to death though is the help one finally taking a good fight as chipper is trying to catch the rally right here but in the background uki is being chased bensington did end up buying back he's going to be going on the chipper there comes the grasp and they're going to get it on the rally but is he actually going to fall one auto attack will finish him off Nemesis. shit i mean there's so many things happened here i think bensington is just gonna push out the top wave and just go high ground down with the buyback yeah i really I mean... hope they fall something with it here I don't see how uh, Donkey Kong is going to turn this around. I feel like they missed their timing, definitely, and the laning phase just went a little bit too poorly as they are defending decently. But there comes the Spider Sting as well as the grip onto the Ugi. Joust is still available, but they're not committing right now. They are going to commit here, and now you have Chipper here, but the Rockets aren't going to be able to hit because the Geos and Ugi does end up falling. Bensington does end up dying to the Chipper as well as the Deadwood, but nothing else he can do as Electrician and Arachna are more than healthy. Are gonna save the racks most likely as the monarchs up in three seconds and so it's Midas a Midas. Eight, but we'll see. I mean, they are actually just going for this. 
Yeah, here comes the grasp. It's gonna hit on the Arachna. He's got the punch. He got the negative armor on the Arachna, but he's just gonna turn around now as he got the shrunken off, and now he's just auto attacking Deadwood. He's gonna just TP away. Electrician might be in a bit more trouble though, as the damage coming up from the Ubi is just too much, and he does end up falling. Might is trying to catch more. He's going to catch Glacius right here. He doesn't have the stun just yet, but the grasp is gonna hit. Yes, it is. Nice grasp from Deadwood, and that's a double tap for Ubi. So yeah, well played uh, to defend their Rex. They did have to use a buyback on Ugi for it though. I mean, I don't know what to say here. This is... Uh, I, I, I didn't get a look of, uh, of the lead before these fights, but it seemed like Hellbone actually had some life in him here. Holding the base, uh, getting the buyback from uh, from uh, Spensington and killing him again. But... Yeah, Bensington dying twice is definitely a big deal, and his farm is going to drop a bit. And I mean, they managed to successfully defend, and I think that's more than anything the takeaway. And they are going to get a tower push as well, so this lead is going to swing, uh, or this uh, deficit for uh, Hellborn is going to be getting a bit less. There is initiation on the rally in the mid lane. Chipper is there, he's going to be able to hit the rocket. One more auto attack is going to do it. Monarch was there just in case, and uh, in the meantime, you do have Type Racer and Slaske just pushing top. So they get two I mean, towers, they might get a third tower in mid. Great, great, great the gold swing for them here. It's 12k lead now, before it was like 18. So 6k gold lead uh, just swung in the, in the lead, Hellbone's favor here. With the two yeah. towers and the kill in the middle lane. Ogi now uh, saving up 4.2k gold, but I feel like they need to spend all the gold they have and that buybacks are not going to save them those because Ugi can't do anything alone this game. No. Uh, like, I, I would like to see him buy a sheep stick, to be honest. Is a sheep stick really going to be the best item though? I mean, sheeping that Bensington and just trying to kill him, I think it's the best cost of action. What would he pick up? Like a heart? Or he's still going to get kited. I mean, it's going to yeah. be virtually unkillable, but it's going to matter. I'm not sure. It feels like he almost needs to pick up some physical damage. I know that he's never going to do that because he's an Oogie, but magic damage isn't going to cut it this game. No, oh, the shrunkens and the heart and carapace and the cores. And the gnomes. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, he could choose to go for something like a Harkins to have some more auto attack damage. Yeah, there's, there's different ways to do it. I mean, I feel like we are kind of saying that the the hellbot is gonna lose but they are actually did just did just swing 10 k gold like they're still behind for the the, the 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 lead is closing although they yeah. do have the worst late game he does pick up the sheep stick on on Ugi. yeah i'm glad he does because they're gonna need this for the next fight and shrunken yeah. head just picked up on the midas as well so there's no buyback on him either only bunny and hole may have a buyback right now on the side of the hellborn and yeah, you'd really hope that Deadwood, he's been doing actually fantastic in this game, having 6-4-11, getting out of uh, very tight spots multiple times. It's just, who does he punch? I feel like he should almost just punch the rally to kill him, because he can one-shot the rally. If he gets all that kills the rally, that's a, that's a big deal, actually. That's why he has been doing so much in these fights. But yeah, and you don't want to punch any of the cores, because they all survive and they don't really care. Yeah, there's 22 armor on the venting tunnel. 17 right now on the Arachna, so it's tough to punch any of them. Yeah, I feel like he also needs to pick up a uh, Shrunken on the Deadwood to be able to stay alive in these fights because they have so much lockdown on the side of Legion. They did, however, do what you wanted them to do and buy, use all their gold. There's only gold on uh, on Deadwood now, and they're going for a for deep man, play. They're player. trying to find the electrician here. Gonna they die. have the sheep. There comes the sheep. He's gonna get it before he gets the shrunken off. There's the damage coming out from the chipper. He's doing a ton of damage with nice storm coming out from Rosary. This is gonna keep him alive though. Yes, it is as he just purges everything and they needed the Midas Hellflower. He didn't even use shrunken on, on electrician. That's so well played. Oh, like, how does he survive that? I know uh, electrician is just a ridiculous hero out there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how he survives that. He doesn't even use shrunken. Like, the man is a madman. Just using, uh, like, perch and running out of there. He, he was didn't care. not scared. He was not scared. Like, he knew he was not gonna die. Yeah. I mean, I was like, that. Nah, he's dead here. They have to be able to kill him with three people. They could. It was yeah. three people. He was alone until the glaciers came in. I, mean. I think he also heals a huge amount using an electric shield right now yeah, with that gnomes. So amazing. So amazing with the gnomes wisdom. Like, the synergy between those two items is just. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, it uses up to 20% of uh, your max mana. So for him, that's uh, one fifth of 1700. So it's close to 400 uh, 
mana that he uses every time. And for the gnomes, I mean, you heal for 30% of the mana spent, so you've already got 120 heal by simply using the electric shield once. Yeah, and you're gonna be spamming that fight. And Arachne does pick up a, a, a rift shard. Oh, two. I love it. I, I really love like it. it. I really like it as well. It's such a good item because it's now based on the tur the target's maximum HP. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's gonna be great for the for the Oogie. I mean, uh, Harkens would probably be better, right? Though. Yeah, Harkens probably would have been better, but I feel like the rift shards are just amazing, as it gives uh, like a big amount of passive uh, damage, a huge critical strike, and a percentage damage. Like it does so many things now. Like it's it's really really strong. Ten percentage of uh of the Oogie's HP and uh, like two point five k crit. Uh, yeah. Good. It. Uh, Basing it off the uh, precision as well, it's just going to do so much extra damage. And um, me being the Han nerd that I am, Rift Charge is the highest damage item that is not Doombringer. And it yeah. might even out damage uh, Doombringer in certain points. But Rift Charge gives you the most physical damage of any item in the game. I mean, it's so, so good here. Uh, great pickup by testing. It's yeah. a really underutilized. Nobody, I see nobody picking up Rift Charge ever. Like, it's. And you have the true strike, so you don't need a savage on Arachna. No. I mean, again, there's a good synergy between the hero and the item. Yeah, I uh, hope that Midas now goes for a Resto Stone as next item. I feel like that's going to be very key for them to uh, get a double combo off on someone. I feel like uh, the Resto Stone would have been so much better with the Sheep Stick here. But yeah, he needs to go Resto. I agree. Like, double health for our double combo is, is a big deal here. Yeah, and he's going to be hitting hard, seeing as he's an intelligence hero now. So he's got actually 230 physical damage per hit, including the uh, transmute damage that he might apply. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I mean, uh, Hellfire does give him a, a, a good deal of uh, attack speed. And attack speed is actually good on Midas, as when you have one of the the transmute states applied or one of the magic uh, damage, it does 80 percent or 80 attack damage extra on his auto attacks. So. Yeah. That's something to think about. He's going to be hitting for 300. Yeah, Deadwood right here looking for a pick on the Electrician, but they've slowed down the game again on the side of the Legion, realizing that they were not yet ready to push the base. And Chipper, now with that Staff of the Master, is going to have a huge impact. And I almost feel like giving Staff to... Uh, I don't know, maybe to the Monarch would be most effective this game. I know that's maybe... Uh, controversial thought but cleansing wind double effect is sick yeah it's very good i mean there's there's some options here i mean midas is kind of kind of mad but it does allow him to combo more often right yeah uh, i would not even mind seeing it on the deadwood as uh the the strength sap is 30 seconds which means the entire duration of the fight you're gonna have uh what 40 percent less strength more strength or oh less strength but yeah it depends yeah. on whether it's going to be purged or not by electrician as well and hardened yeah, carapace yeah. automatically purges it it's true i guess with the electrician pur purging it if it, if it is he makes the heads up by the purge right away then it's oh look at this though deadwood Very they're good. gonna Christian be looking Asian. at that dd rune he's gonna walk into the grasp no not really but he has a dd rune and maybe now they're ready to start fighting as arachna is going to hit like a truck but they know this they oh, know like this on the side of the Hellborn. Yeah. Oh, Midas picking up a plate mail, but I think that's going to be turned into uh, either a demonic or an armor of the Mad Mage, but I'm not sure either one is really that effective here. Look at this though, they're using Spider Sting onto the Oogie, there's cancel immediately on the Electrician, they got the punch onto the Arachna, there comes Ultimate from the Monarch, they're gonna storm up the Deadwood, and there comes the Glacier's ulti, it's not gonna get cancelled, but he's just gonna run away, Arachna now in a lot of trouble, is he gonna fall? Yes he is, Uki is still very healthy, he's actually in the middle of the fight, it's arriving, Riley doesn't even get his ultimate off, and look at this, the Hellboy team is actually turning this right on, the Legion team is just running away, Electrician is getting slowed down, is he finally gonna fall? Yes he is, do they have the Rockets trying to stop the Glacier's ulti? No they do not, but wow. Ooh, that was crazy. What a I mean, fight. Like, they just held their 12k deficit and they have like the worst late game and they they just held. They played that so well. They put so much damage into the Deadwood that was uh, affected by the Chrysalis from Monarch and he has this, the Stone Spirit now as well. I mean, if they transfer oh this into Rax, that could be a big deal. They can just split push forever with Midas if they get one Rax up. This was absolutely ridiculous. The only problem is they don't have a good pushing team. Oogie. Oh, 
is, yeah, just not the best pushing hero. But wow. However, what a he fight. Can tank the tower. Yeah, he can tank the tower. Arachna is not going to be able to buy back, and neither is the rally. So they do end up using the buyback on Bilbo Swagon, and they had quite some trouble bringing him down before. So I'm curious to see how they're going to do this. They are just pushing straight down middle. Bensington does have his ultimate up. He can be there if he wants to. But wow. It looks to me like Legion is not interested in fighting this. There comes a freeze in from the Glacius. He's just gonna let it happen. Focus buffer taking all the damage. They could go now with Rally, right now. Yeah, they could go right now. Arachna is gonna be up soon. There's the initiation from the electrician. He's got the shrunken. There comes Ugi with the ultimate. He's gonna be hitting two. Holme is gonna fall. Chipper is getting killed right now by the Arachna. Midas is trying to run away, but Ugi, he's again stuck all alone. They're trying to save him, but he's just gonna be absolutely destroyed. And there comes a Gryphon from the electrician, and I think Midas is going to fall. But they do have buybacks on everyone. Bunny Lover surviving right here, but Jim Carrey you is not gonna be able to be in the next fight. Uh, did you see this like no fire level three on the the Betsuton? I didn't notice it. No, though. I didn't notice it at all. And he's got another six k gold saved up. So he also has an abyssal skull, by the way. Yeah, I don't don't really like the abyssal to be honest. But no, uh, it, it's not the best item, and the armor aura doesn't stack with the gnomes. So really, symbol would have been just far better, right? Yeah, I mean the wishbone helm just like the better carry option, but. We'll see what he picks up here with the 6k gold. Yeah, there's the buyback coming out from the Midas. They also have a buyback on Deadwood and on Ugi, but they don't want to use it, and they're just going to drop the racks because they are going to be equal in Raxes then, actually. Yeah, as, as the, the Ugi just didn't care and, and went for the Rax anyway. Maybe yeah. the buyback here in the second Rax, or... Yeah, they are going to go straight to the second racks as they now don't have backdoor protection. Ugi is up in 20 seconds, but is that really going to be in time? They already used Geos on Bensington, so they need to do something. Here comes in the queue with the Crippling Palm. There's the ultimate from the Deadwood. He's going to get his shrunken up, but Deadwood is trying to run away. But that ulti again from the Glaciers is doing so much. And Type Racer and Deadwood what are just they end doing? Like They're going so... like Ugi couldn't... Uh, like had 10 seconds to respawn and didn't want to buy back. Yeah. And... They use another buyback on Midas, like Rage buyback here, almost. Like he bought back and got nothing out of it. They got the mid racks anyway, so now they're balanced in the mid lane, but they're gonna have to keep pushing out top. They did end up saving a buyback on Ugi, but it's their last one, so I guess that's the argument for why they didn't want to use it. Yeah, but then they just need not to go, so they don't use buyback on Midas. There's no more buybacks on Midas. Look yeah, at look at this though, mid lane. Midas is gonna get caught by the electrician right here. Bensington ulti is going to hit as well. Monarch in the fall immediately. Midas able to pop the shrunken. He's gonna survive for now. He's got the astrolabe, but is he gonna be able to port a key away? Yes, he is. Nice chipper ultimate, by the way, to uh, prevent any follow up, but I mean, where was the cancel on the electrician grasp? He wasn't even using shrunken. I don't know where this, like, what is Pensington getting gold from? Now he sold the Abyssal Skull and has a full symbol and 4k gold. Yeah, I don't know. I think I mean, he's, he's up to 700 GPM. gold per minute. Like, I mean, what? What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, now they're just going to push down bottom and there's really not that much the Hellborn can do. He bought a Restless Stone for double Shrunken on Ugi and double Sheep. So maybe that's going to be the difference. He does use Lex. He's going to go in on the Arachna. There comes the Midas. He's trying to combo as well, but Deadwood actually getting caught right here. He's going to storm himself. There you have to stun in on the Midas. He's going to fall immediately. And Ugi right now in the midst of it all, but not doing any damage to Spider saying Chipper's going to die. And here comes Rally. There comes the ultimate out from the Rally. And I mean, Ugi ends up falling and that's GG. Good clan rejects are going to the finals. Going to be facing off against me and Sate <laughs> with Big Ego Crew. So, uh, wow. What I mean, a game, I though. don't know what to say. Like, it just went crazy the last, like, five minutes here. I mean, great comeback initially from the help on side. And then they just fell. I don't know. The, I really liked it. The, the rest of some pick up on the Ugi just to all in, get the double shrunken. But he was just, like, his team just died instead of him. And he was one versus five and couldn't do anything. Arachna just too strong versus Ugi, man. That's really yeah. what it comes down to. He just put his ultimate on Ugi in those last few fights, and he's just walking around at, like, 100 movement speed, not able to do anything at all. I mean, I, fe I felt like Legion had the better draft initially, and then, like, Hellborn flipped it on its head with the, uh, like, laning it weird, but it turned out so well, so, like, super well played by both teams here. Great game. Yeah, definite, definite uh, shout-out to what you got with the great uh, compel stuns getting double ultis a couple of times in the mid game which would have otherwise been disastrous yeah really like 
small things like that just matter so much. If they win those fights, I mean, they're just gonna like run them over with Uki. Yeah, I think we got our uh, work uh, cut out for us, uh, Sate. But um, sure. all right, you guys, um, we will be right back with the finals of Han OMG Cycle Six. So uh, stay tuned. Oh yeah, uh, it's gonna take uh, a little bit longer for of a break, but. Uh, we will be uh, getting the finals soon, so uh, stay tuned.
Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday, Sunday, everybody. I am Easy Full Clan, going to be joined here by BKB and Chill. You are tuning in to the grand finals of the Han OMG Tour, cycle number six. This is going to be the final series between Big Ego Crew and Good Clan Rejects. Should be a very, very interesting series. BKB, how's it going? It's going well. Doing very well, thank you. How how about yourself? Oh, I'm doing fine. Just ate lunch. I'm ready to cast some games. Ready to see this uh, series unfold. And we are already jumping into bands. We have got Ophelia, an electrician, banned out by Big Ego Crew, followed by a Magmus and another band from Good Clan Rejects. Let's see what it is. That Ophelia ban definitely targeted towards what you got. I have not seen what you got been able to pilot Ophelia in a while. Chipper, there it is. Yeah, so the Ophelia ban, as you say, is a definitely a respect ban against what you got. A very, very strong hero and capable hands. Um, Chipper ban is clever um, because Shulkan and Mechs have been playing that quite a lot today. Um, Maraxxus picked up because the chip is banned. So yeah, not really surprised at the first pick. I, I like with Maraxxus to be to be quite honest. I think it's obviously very tanky, a fantastic initiator, very good in many lanes and yeah, solid first pick. Yeah, I think it's a really great first pick as well. And it kind of, uh, you know, the Moira wasn't blind banned. So it does kind of, in a sense, uh, Maraxxus is a very, very good uh, lane counter to Moira, even kind of mid game. Uh, counter to her so i really like the maraxis pick it kind of blocks the moira which is another popular pick uh super powerful hero but yeah chipper has uh, been a hero we've seen blind band a lot and uh specifically against big ego crew they love to run it i think i overheard overheard shorkan mention that uh he will pick it up just about every game if he can yeah definitely and then we see the geomancer um geomancer was played earlier by Shulkan. Um, they played it long lane with a rally. So it would be interesting to see if they go for the same thing again. Um, the Geomancer was extremely effective. Um, yeah, really, really useful in terms of landing multiple ultimates onto multiple heroes. Um, loads of harass potential and just causes a nuisance when you put it long lane. Yeah, I, uh, so did they run it in the uh, semi finals earlier? Yes. So actually... they put, yeah, yeah, sorry. So they played it with a rally. Um, and they played it against the Vindicator and the Dark Lady with an enemy parasite in the jungle. So because they had a double escape, they were very difficult to kill. They won the lane, they got Bloodless onto Vindicator, and they kind of just took over the game, really. Oh, nice. So it was a dual lane. Yes, it was. Yep. Okay. Uh, thanks for detailing that for me and uh, any other viewers who may have, like me, have missed it due to whatever reason. I was asleep, but... Uh, we've got an engineer and a soul reaper picked out here by uh, good clan rejects so soul reaper been a very very uh you know we've seen testy run this a lot and uh, he's feeling pretty comfortable on that so they're pretty flexible with it too um the previous series i which i did catch we did see a, a aggressive soul reaper a curse long lane um that ended up doing fairly decently um kind of held their own a little bit i think that zephyr got a little got a little out of control but they definitely brought it back towards the end of the game um but yeah soul reaper a curse talk about a classic lane setup uh, i wouldn't mind seeing that a, uh, again i love seeing that lane in action oh yeah i'm i'm a massive fan as well i love i love watching a curse i like to play a curse i'm not a massive fan of playing a soul reaper but um yeah very 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 valid lane um does offer a lot, loads of healing potential, um, and we did see it work out very well earlier. So it would be interesting to see if a curse is picked up again. But I'm actually fairly surprised that Legion didn't ban Soul Reaper, knowing that Testy loves to play it, and he's been playing it so frequently recently. I think that they're probably just feeling quite confident in terms of playing against it. Yeah, it's, I feel like it's kind of hard. It's a hard hero to justify as a blind ban, though. It's it's very very niche, and you know, is it? You kind of pointed out, you know, they feel comfortable running against this, so might not be one of those uh, unanswerable heroes that uh, is typically picked up. As we do see the accursed, and I'm right with you, actually. Um, I love playing accursed. There's something about playing accursed that just feels so 
it's just so clutch whenever you get like the ideal fire shield off to just remove like a big stun or yeah. you yeah. know keeping somebody up who's like sub 100 hp and they just end up t uh persisting throughout the remainder of the fight it it's such a fun hero to play uh in your own hands and yeah um but unfortunately you know in my games i, I don't really get a, a huge opportunity to run it but uh, maybe I just don't have somebody to queue with to play Soul Reaper with me because <laughs> we're about to see this again um, for sure. But yeah, we've got it... the Moira pick as a third pick. I'm surprised that hero, you know, I'm surprised that Moira made it made it back uh, to the sixth pick of the game, actually. Yeah, I'm quite surprised with that as well. I'm definitely, definitely surprised how Bourne didn't choose to ban it, especially with Mex being such a good Moira player. Um, he's a very intuitive player, knows, always knows where to be in position himself and his role. Um, so, you know, in terms of having Mex on Moira, I feel very, very confident with um, the lineup they're going for. But yeah, just quickly going back to a curse, I think with the curse, I like the fact that you've got so much potential to, as you say, make a clutch save on somebody, which always gives a good feel. And then you have the ultimate, which allows you to play quite aggressively in terms of your kind of positioning you know like yes you don't want to die but yes you can play more aggressively with the cursed than you can do with a rhapsody for example because rhapsody has no way of really saving herself apart from her heal so a curse is definitely one of those kind of niche supports that's quite unique to play yeah yeah that's a good point i didn't even think about the ulti but you're absolutely right it just it basically makes you a non-target right and then your the rest of your kit is tailored to you know making other people very difficult to go on as well right because you can just nullify some big debuffs or you know just cancel some damage so yeah it, it really is a strong um support hero to play the only thing that uh, it kind of lacks is is this lane presence right because it doesn't have the traditional auto attack range to try and you know assist in pushing out uh pushing out heroes you know through traditional mm -hmm. harass means and everything but uh with a hero that likes like soul reaper who's got his own you know, he's got his own 600 range auto attack and he's got that uh, low cooldown AoE heal himself. You know, it pairs just extremely well. His Soul Reaper just gets to do the manning up while Curse kind of just sits in the back and uh, keeps him up. But, you know, we've got uh, got some bands, so might as well go over those. Ara uh, Arachna, Flux, and Puppet Master banned out by Big o Ego Crew. And Swiftblade, Gladiator, and Oogie banned out by Good Clan Rejects. So, what do you think about those bands? Um, I like the bands. I like the Gladiator band because Gladiator is so strong, very underrated, especially with the ultimate because it gives a uh, reduction in damage taken. Um, and if you're playing against Heroes Engineer, I think Gladiator is just such a kind of good way of nullifying the damage that Engineer does put out. I like the ban on to uh, Ugi. Ugi is renowned for being incredibly strong. Um, I don't think it was quite played to the full potential last game. Um, but that's because it was kited quite a lot. However, Ugi is a hero in general. I think it's one of those heroes, if I was drafting, I would probably ban it every game because it's just so, so strong, so hard to kill, so tanky. It builds up a lot of team items and it just really kind of has the potential to take over the game. Um, but yeah, no, so we see Calamity and Pebbles and Hag picked up afterwards. So yeah, what do you think about those? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking that the Calamity is just always a, a very, very safe pick. Um, it, it just reeks so much havoc in whatever lane it tends to go in because of the dragon spin a uh, dragon's path ability so whether it's you know kind of either solo short mid or you know working in a tri lane it just it just seems to push everything out of its lane and make it very very difficult for anybody to have the ideal lane setup that they want so i really love the calamity pick and it's got that excellent team fight potential between um the pullback on firebomb and the sunder's vault so yeah, I think also, it's a fantastic pick. Also, also, I really like with the Calamity the fact they picked up Wretched, Wretched Hag straight after. Because when you have Wretched Hag blinking in, um, when the Calamity traps, let's say, two or three heroes within the ultimate, then you've got Hag that could just follow up with a Bat Blast. And it's quite easy for her to land it because they're in such close proximity. Um, so yeah, I like the Hag pick with the Calamity. And I like the Nitro pick, which has kind of thrown me off guard because I wasn't expecting that. I don't know what you were thinking. Yeah, the nitro like pick is like certainly it. interesting. Uh, we've got a pebbles and you know pebbles and a nitro to round off the picks for good clan rejects, and uh, the pebbles pick I, I like. You know, just having that really really strong initiator, 
Um, you know, if he can get a, a, a decent timing on the PK, oh, I feel like it's going to pair extremely well with uh, a curse on the team. You know, Pebble's just such a, a beast initiator. It can drop, you know, typically you can do, if not the full HP bar, you know, like 70 to 80% of just about anybody's HP as soon as he gets a, as soon as he gets a PK. But he feels really, really safe with an curse sitting behind him too. So uh, total mana potential there. But yeah, and then the Nitro is a really interesting pick. Um, you know, it's got the the same kind of harass potential that an Arachna does because of the orb walking from the Ballistic spell. Um, hate playing against those styles of heroes, but there are three of yes. them in the game, Arachna, Nitro, and uh, Vindy. And Nitro and Arachna are the ones that you typically need to worry about. Vindy doesn't really feel... It's kind of annoying, but Vindy just doesn't have the... The remainder of his kit doesn't really seem to make him as threatening, right? with that orb walking ability but uh, yeah. yeah i mean what do you think of these lanes that we've got here it looks like we've got a i thought that they might do this whenever i saw the pebbles um because i actually uh, i was a ringer for good clan rejects in a scrim uh last night actually and they ran a dual mid with pebbles um and so i thought that they might do this whenever i saw the pebbles ng and it looks like they are running a dual mid so that's something that we don't really see very often in these series yeah, I'm interested by the dual mids. I really like Pebble as a engineer. It's got so much potential. Um, but Hag's going to be have to be, going to have to be very careful with his positioning because um, I think if they land the combinations, obviously with the double stunned and then the mines and obviously the chuck on top of that, I think Hag will fall down pretty easily. Um, I like the just looking at the wards that Kieru Sukula has placed. Um, I don't know if you can see it just by Legion's bot tower. Mm -hmm. Just outside of the trees, I like that ward. Um, it's going to give some useful vision, and I think the Soul Reaper occurs lane as they are looking to set up. Calamity is already pushing Soul Reaper out of the lane with these dragons, and they are actually going to go on to Soul Reaper. The dig is going to miss, but the shards of Harkons are going to connect. But the fire shield comes out, and now Moira and G are full chase mode on the Soul Reaper. It looks like they might try to push for the kill. But a curse is coming back. He's got fire shield coming off cooldown soon. Judgment's going to heal up Soul Reaper a little bit, but these auto attacks are pretty heavy. And uh, the, the fire shield just one second off cooldown before it could, uh, before he could cast it again. And Geo and Moira find that kill. And now a curse is in a lot of trouble as the double stun is up. The fire shield was put on cooldown. This is a double kill for the tri lane for Big Ego Crew. So uh, yeah, I mean a real commanding presence immediately one minute into the game. Bloodlust double kill is going to make a cursed Soul Reaper not have the ideal situation for their laning. Very, very, very well played. I love the Shards of Harkin on the Geomancer with the stun. They obviously both have range auto attacks, which makes it easier for them to you know, hunt down and harass. Um, and I think. Oh, oh but a uh, kill on the Hag in the mid lane missed it completely. I was listening to your uh, <laughs> post analysis there, excuse yeah, me. So, but... did, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> but. You know, I was actually kind of thinking that, uh, you know, it's good that they won this bot lane so handily because by the looks of it, and I don't know I don't know if you agree necessarily, but, you know, with the Pebbles Engineer in the mid lane, obviously getting the, the kill onto Hag just now, it looks like they've kind of secured the mid lane as Geomancer has rotated, so it's 2v2 now. But uh, the kill onto Hag is a big one. But prior to that kill, I was thinking that, you know, the Hellburn is basically winning two lanes here, um, in my opinion. It looks like Nitro and Meraxxus. I mean, how do you feel about this Nitro versus Meraxxus 1v1? Um, Who takes it here? To be honest, I'm not much of a Nitro player myself, but I would give him the advantage. Um, I know he does have a very strong uh, skill set at his disposal. Um, I think, as you can see, he's kind of boxing. So Agmites is going to come bit. out onto Wretched Hag, followed by the Keg stun into the toss. And man, it's just picture perfect right there with that stun uh, combo. He was completely chain stunned. And uh, the damage just took him from, I think that was 100% of his health bar inside of a stun combo. That is devastating. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate for Hag, and it kind of just goes back to what I was saying earlier. If they help all land their combinations, then, um, you know, because she's relatively squishy, she's going to fall pretty easily. But, um, yeah, hopefully she'll be able to recover at some stage. Calamity, oh, Top I was lane. watching Calamity be very aggressive here in the uh, bottom lane as I missed. But they do get the kill onto Soul Reaper there, and curse is now taking a lot of pressure from the Dragon's Path. He is getting chased by Calamity. He's going to run back underneath the tower, but... Port's coming in from Soul Reaper. A curse is doing a bit of a man up. He's gonna be just fine right now. Calamity and Moira are actually getting pushed out. Calamity's kind of playing aggressively, a little bit more than I'd expect. But 
looks like they're going to be just fine. But yes, I missed that kill on the Nitro, but it was a very big kill. It, it took the rotation from Geomancer into the top lane to assist Miraxis into getting it. Um, and that's what they needed, right? They needed to get that rotation because Nitro feels pretty vulnerable to a rotation, especially with Miraxis being there. It's just any kind of double stun seems to make it really difficult for that hero to survive. Yep. Um, just looking at the boards in mid lane, I like the board that what you got's place because as Geomancer was roaming between mid and top lane, it's obviously giving them good vision of Geo. I think he's the one kind of threat they've got at the moment, which could kind of you know make or break a lane or a gank. Um, so yeah, I like the board placement that was placed from the uh, the engineer. Yeah, and it, it is going to help protect Nitro a bit. And uh, you know, engineer is kind of floating. He's guarding this regen rune. Pebbles is going to bottle bottle it, but a curse is actually getting dig stunned in the bottom bottom lane here. But no follow up from the calamity and Moira is going to mean that a curse is able to stay alive. Yeah, I think with the Curse and Soul Reaper, they're obviously going to struggle to farm at the moment because, again, pushed quite aggressively, especially on their tower. Oh, cool. Yeah, when you look at the GPM charts, it's basically all Pebbles and Nitro right now, but I feel like everything else at this stage in the game is secondary to Pebbles' G GPM, and he's having a great time at nearly 420 GPM in the mid lane right now. This is going to be a very, very fast PK. When you have this kind of GPM lead, on a pebbles mid what do you build into do you build into steam boots into pk or do you just kind of rush a straight pk calamity is actually getting chased by a cursed and soul reaper the shards of harkon is going to be able to protect him he turns around power supplies nice pressure puts it back onto a curse a curse is going to excuse me soul reaper is going to die in the meantime Hag dies in the mid lane, but Calamity was also traded as well. So it was a one for one in the bot lane. Yeah, so. And a Hag the, gets killed in the mid lane. In the middle lane, I was watching the mid the mid gank. Um, just the same as what they've been doing in combination from Engineer. I was just took her out very quickly. And uh, yeah, so unfortunately, she's got three deaths at the moment. But uh, it's all credit to Pebbles and Engineer because they are playing very well together. Absolutely. And, you know, Pebbles' GPM is just soaring right now. He's still got that. He's still got that region in his bottle. Picks up the steam boots, so this looks like a he's going to be pushing for a PK is what I would expect at this point. Yeah, so you, pick up. I personally think his PK is probably going to make or break this game. I would go for PK straight away. I would skip vestments until a little bit later. Go for the PK and just go for hero, go for kills on heroes like Moira, Geomancer, Wretched Hag, even Calamity if he can kill Calamity. Um, not Miraxis, because Miraxis is probably going to be able to tank a full combo. But um, yeah, just to get the PK as soon as he can without much more build up, I think would probably be the best option. Now, Miraxis, you do say that he will be able to tank a full combo, and I'm in agreement with you there, but it won't take too much of a. too much more assistance from a teammate to help bring Pebbles uh, getting a kill onto Miraxis. Right? True. So, and I feel like it is a big kill, um, right? Like. So when you look at the Hellborn, excuse me, the Legion lineup, the Miraxis getting a PK is going to be a big part of their gameplay, right? Uh, he's definitely going to be the main initiator. And, you know, you don't want to, you, you have the innate blink capability on Wretched Hag, but she's already struggling so much and she's super squishy, right? Like she is not going to want to be the main initiator for Big Ego Crew. No, certainly not. She's, you know, she's wanted, she's probably going to want to go in last. Wait for Geomancer, um, Raxus, and Moira to set up their, their spells and their combos, and then she's going to want a Black Blast on top, and then just try and do as much damage as she possibly can. Um, a farm 220 GPM, not where she wants it to be, but I think considering she's died three times, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, no, we will uh, just, it'll come down to execution, I think. I think. Which look at what's going on in the Hel Hellborn jungle. Sorry to cut you off, but look no, at no, this fine. fantastic comboing. This is some great team play right here between Pebbles and NG. Taking out these two triple stacks together uh, because they just have such excellent AoE synergy between the two of them. Like This is going to speed up Pebbles' blink so fast. This is going to be like a sub 10 minute blink from what I can uh, garner. Yeah, it's about to get up yeah. to 1800 gold or so right here. Like This is huge. Yeah, so he was sat on 1300 before this stack, so he's just picked up 500 gold. So yeah, he's probably going to have PK, as you say, maybe just before 10 minutes, which is uh, absolutely perfect. I mean, he's probably going to rotate towards Calamity and Moira in the bot lane and hopefully pick up some more kills. Yeah, I would love to see a, a quick kill onto Calamity because that'll help Soul Reaper and Accursed kind of at least find a path to securing this lane again. As they actually go onto the Accursed in the bottom lane, Calamity is in the middle of them. Come, 
dumps out the Sundra's Vault. Both of them are... The Arcane Vortex is actually going to save a curse for a little bit. The port was not cancelled. Nitro is here, but Nitro is going to find the kill onto Calamity. So it's Calamity for Soul Reaver so far, but Nitro is now in a bit of trouble. He's going to take a dig stun from Geo, but a quick Fire Shield is actually going to allow him to keep running. That was like a frame-perfect uh, Fire Shield that came out onto Nitro. The Nitro ulti is going to connect onto, onto Geomancer, and Geomancer is going to end up falling, so... Wow, excellent, excellent rotation from Nitro there. And you gotta yeah. hand it to Accursed. I mean, that Fire Shield was absolutely perfect. I didn't even see Nitro stop moving when he was running from that dig stun. Yeah, a little bit of an overextension from Geomancer as well. Um, I liked the idea, but Nitro was uh, very capable of turning at the so, end. Um, and we called it a second ago, and here comes the PK Pebble is walking towards bottom lane, and they actually don't... So the ward is going to spot him. The combo comes out clean onto Calamity. Judgment is going to follow, and Soul Reaper gets the kill. So a clean kill with that first PK reveal. And so now they're aware of those pebbles with the PK. I mean, what does pebbles transition to? I mean, he's at nearly 500 GPM. This is a very, very scary pebbles at this point in the game. Um, I think just pure damage. I think going for special shots. He goes mid lane, picks up the GPM. Yeah, I missed that uh, completely. I saw him walking towards it, but you know, just for some reason, I didn't. It didn't register in my brain that he was gonna just immediately get that kill. <laughs> but uh, he is gonna pick up a haste run now. I mean, he's just gonna be walking around this map wreak wreaking havoc. He's hasting towards top laners. Hag and Maraxis are diving the nitro. They get the kill, but here comes Pebbles. Pebbles is gonna find the PK. The double stun into the toss on Wretched Hag and Maraxis. Hag blinks aggressively into the energy field. Doesn't get the kill onto Ng, and then the Maraxis obviously falls to the Pebbles punch can't escape the haste rune and so it's a two for one there and pebbles soaring in gpm right now 530 gpm looks yes. like he's going to pick up a chalice and then you know just for excellent sustain while he runs the map and then what do you think he goes into does he go into staff or spell shark dig stun's going to come out onto soul reaper sunder's vault is going to catch both the cursed and soul reaper soul reaper is going to fall but geomancer takes the pushback but the Pebbles combo is going to come out on Calamity and Maraxxus, and they both fall, excuse me, not Maraxxus, uh, Moira. So Moira and Calamity falling to that falling to that great double stun, and then the Mines pick off Geo at the bottom river, so this is looking excellent for the Hellborn team right now. I mean, everybody's, it's all about this Pebbles right now, right? Is, yeah, and I like how he skips skip vestments. He skipped buying any more build-up items. He got the PK when he needed to, and he just rotated around the map like he needed to, and he's played it played it perfectly. Um, I think going back to your question, we can see he's picked up a glowstone, so he's going to be building the staff first. But I personally think spell shards might have been slightly better, just to give him a little bit more damage and more kill potential. But um, you know, as soon as he picks up the staff, then yeah, it's going to be incredibly strong for those uh, those team fights and those initiations onto multiple heroes. Yeah, I mean, I really like Staff as a Pebbles uh, whenever I play Pebbles as well. I mean, obviously, Spell Shards, bit of a cheaper price point. Nitro and Soul Reaper actually have uh, targets on their back in the bottom lane as Maraxxus and Geomancer. The full stun combo comes out and takes makes a clean kill on the Soul Reaper. Hag is going to slow Nitro, gets pushed back, but the four heroes looking to dive, but not so. Yep, so Moira so unfortunately a... misses the uh, Shards of Harkon, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, if we talk about Wretched Hag, what do you think Wretched Hag is going to try and go for this game? Do you think she's going to try and just push towards that, that slightly delayed staff, or do you think she may go for something something different? I would like to see something I've been seeing uh, a lot of Wretched Hags pick up is a Numb's Wisdom. I think it's a really great synergy with the hero, just gives her that little bit of sustain so that she can kind of start flash farming a bit, uh, maybe transition into spots in the jungle to find some extra farm. But most importantly, it's going to give her that needed tankiness against the PK Pebbles that's now in the game, as well as the rest of the team. I mean, they have a lot of magic damage. Outside of Nitro, everybody on the Hellborn side is doing magic damage, but we see a Bat Blast connecting onto a Cursed End pebbles but a curse blocks it completely with the ulti Moira was the first to fall before all of that happened but uh, yeah the bat blast isn't going to transition into any kills for big eager crew yeah, or it is coming down in the bottom lane calamity is going to take a stun from soul reaper and she's taking a bit of heat getting chased by a cursed and soul reaper now engineers here to finish her off with the keg 
Pebbles pushing aggressively onto Miraxis. He's pretty far from his team. The Matrax comes out from Miraxis. Miraxis is quite tanky. That is a DD Pebbles. Port is coming out. It gets canceled. So no further engagement will happen. Yeah, so I was gonna say I love the I love the accursed pick against the hag. I think just spudding the horn is always very useful. Um, you know, when you think of the horn itself, it prevents pebbles from using PK. So if that gets dispelled, pebbles can you know mobilize themselves and move around a lot easier. Um, and yeah, I think accursed is yeah, just one of those kind of great great counter picks to hag in that sense. But uh, yeah, I don't know what you feel about it. If you think the same, or whether you think accursed is slightly slightly on the weak side. No, no, I love, I love a curse this game. Um, you know, he's got a lot of viability. He can dispel. Obviously, you know, the big thing is that he dispels stuns. But of course, you know, dispelling something like haunt, haunt is a very, very annoying thing to have, uh, to have to deal with whenever you're playing a PK hero. But also dispelling, say, mana sunder, uh, is going to be, you know, pretty big, in terms of, you know, assisting teammates and allowing them to get off their full combos and everything. So, yeah, I, I love the accursed pick. I don't know why you questioned me. I already <laughs> pre pre match we were talking about how much we both love this hero. <laughs> oh I know. I know I um yeah. Forgot your uh forgot your positive comments unfortunately, so that's <laughs> quite a mistake. <laughs> but no, we do see some minds of Pebbles taking out the stacks, which is always a massive plus for them because Legion are gonna be losing some farm there. Um and with Pebbles being such high level he can farm those very quickly. Yeah, I mean, everybody except the Miraxis needs to watch out against this Pebbles. Pebbles is actually walking towards Hag. He is going to be able to find the stun on the Hag. He's going for the toss back onto a curse, but no follow-up stun to prevent that blink from happening. So Hag is going to be able to walk away. But one thing that uh, you may not have noticed is that Miraxis actually does find a PK. He's going to walk into this mines. Oh my gosh, he lives with 70 HP. Pebbles is hasting towards him, trying to find the kill to finish him off, but uh, isn't going to be able to do it. But yes, Pebbles is now 400 GP, uh, 400 gold away from staff. So this is going to be super dangerous for the big eager crew. I mean, how do they deal with the staff Pebbles? Um, well, to give you a straight answer, the only way that they can deal with it is a nice warrior ultimate or a Moira jewel stun. Um, yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult. His farm is crazy. 570 GPM at 16 minutes is not something you ever really see in the pebbles. So yeah, one yeah. of the things, one of the things that I was kind of thinking about whenever Pebbles had you know hit the 500 GPM mark was I was looking at his team's uh, net worth and it was pretty low in comparison. I think at the time, you know Nitro it was like just above 400 GPM, 300 GPM. Soul Reaper actually gets jumped on. It's going to get killed by Maraxis and Richard Hag. Maraxis is trying to take out the energy field. A curse is kind of in a bad spot. He's got the flame consumption up. So he is going to be able to live for just a little bit longer, but fortunately he is just placed Double too aggressively, so he is going to end up getting dropped. Geomancer's pushing forward on Engineer. There's a fight in the bottom lane as well. Sunder Vault is going to catch Pebbles, and they are going to find that big kill onto Pebbles, and they are going to delay that staff a little bit. Maraxis is going to jump on to Engineer in the mid lane. The Geomancer ultimate is going to connect, followed by the dig. The Axes are coming out for extra damage, and the Engineer is going to fall. So that was a fantastic split fight. I don't think they lost anybody on the Legion side, and they find three big kills on, um, against Good Clan rejects. I have to give um, good credit to Moira, because Moira with the timing of the ultimate and the shards of Harkon, and then Dutch with his ultimate on Calamity on top, just yeah, absolutely melted pebbles. He was obviously snowballing. So yeah, well played to them both. Um, but no, not to lose anyone on Legion is, is fantastic, especially as they were quite far behind and now they're, they're starting to pick up their pick up their GPM and experience a little bit more. Absolutely. I mean that's a that's a big morale boost, you know, big ego crew is saying we're not out of it yet. You know, your pebbles is pretty scary, but he can still die if he misplays. But it looks like Pebbles is going to basically finish staff here in the bottom lane, and so that's gonna be a big item. Like of course they delayed it by a minute or so, but uh, we'll see exactly what happens whenever he does pick up that staff in his inventory. But uh, in the meantime, you know, Nitro is quietly farming back up. He's kind of, he bought an Alacrity Band, so he looks like he is going to be going into that Thunderclaw. Just hit 400 GPM here. And uh, Soul Reaper and a Curse farming together, so... You know, Pebbles and NG basically creating the space for Soul Reaper and Nitro to, you know, f increase their GPM right now. And yep, here we go, Pebble Staff.
Yeah, so he's uh, smoked in the jungle. But no, just um, looking at Wretched Hag, she did pick up a Gnome's Wisdom. So yeah, you were completely correct there. Um, I do imagine Staff is probably what's going to come out next. But uh, yeah, Gnome's very good pickup. Pebbles gets a smoke broken by Calamity and Moira and just didn't find the ideal jump, so just decides to blink away. You know, the, the Legion side is playing so tight right now that the Hellborn, the Good Clan Rejects, have a lot of space available to them on the map to, you know, just farm resources and, and kind of take that slow victory uh, with that in mind. So, but Nitro actually needs to watch out here in the top lane. Raxus is going to find the jump here. The Quake Stun is actually not going to connect. Nitro with a nice pushback is going to prevent uh, himself getting jumped on. But wow, a four-man TP squad coming into the top lane. And now Moraxis just <laughs> hiding behind uh, the Fog of War. So I was really worried for Moraxis if he decided to uh, to farm that. But man, <laughs> that entire, the, the rest of the uh, Good Clan Rejects TP together on point. That was something to see, even though they got nothing out of it. Yeah, very, uh, very coordinated. Um, do you think, just going back to Nitro briefly, do you think Nitro is likely to pick up an old Fireblade at some point? Because I've seen how it synergizes with his attack speed. Is that something, do you, do you see him picking up in this game? Or do you think he's going to go for a potential, obviously, Thunderclaw into Hyper Crown out to maybe a Shrunken Head build instead? Um, well, I'm not so sure about the, the, the order of items, but to answer your question, I think that Nullfire Blade is, uh, just makes a ton of sense on a hero like Nitro, who gets up to, what is it, like 400 extra attack speed from his ultimate? Uh, 500, in fact. Um, so yeah, I mean, he basically just eliminates any hero's mana bar in a matter of seconds with a level 3 Nullfire, so I think the item makes a lot of sense. Now, whether or not he decides to purchase that immediately after Thunderclaw or build into Hyper Crown first. And as you said, Shrunken Head is going to be a fairly necessary item this game uh, for him as the main carry, more or less. So I, I'm not really sure about the the order of items that he's going to pick up. But yes, I would like to see a Null Fire Blade. And I missed that kill on the Geomancer. But uh, it looks like it happened via Spider Mines as the yeah. kill credit goes to what you got on Engineer. So, you know, talking about a specific player performance here, Engineer, what you got on Engineer is having a fantastic game here. Five, one, and three, finding so many kills with these spider mines and just having, you know, just from the get-go, having a great dual lane performance in the mid lane and uh, really elevating Pebbles' performance in this game as well. Yeah, the uh, the dual miss kind of takes me back to uh, jump on engineer. It's going to go down. Pebbles misses a combo here in the top lane, but Wretched Hag is taking a lot of damage. Does take the Nitro ult. He unfortunately had the blink on cooldown, wasn't able to escape. So it is a one for one, but uh, I think that engineer is happy to take that trade. They are going to look to jump onto to Maraxis here. Maraxis actually looks like he got his PK cancel. Pebbles combo is going to connect on the Geomancer. But Geomancer is able to dig away for the moment and is able to PK as well. But Braxis ends up dying as well. And it looks like Good Clan Rejects are going to take a stab at this tier 2 top tower. Yeah, I think something happened to Braxis there because he just literally completely stunned it. I don't know if his PK was cancelled or whether he just, I don't know, had perhaps a mini lag spike or something. But, um,. Yeah, quite a random stun from him, and then obviously he's taken down. Just going back to your mention about the dual mid and the engineer and the pebbles, it kind of takes me back to Honkast, when we kind of used to see those combinations a lot, like pebbles and Infora, pebbles engineer, and it's kind of good to see it brought back, because what you got is, you know, a former competitive player from those days, a very, very good player. And um, yeah, it's nice to see him working in that dual mid aspect again. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree completely. I'm, I'm really glad that this um, that this style of play actually has found its way back into... I, I wouldn't necessarily call it meta yet, as it is uh, from a competitive standpoint from what we've seen. It does seem to be a bit unusual, but it is great to see them kind of throw a throw a wrench into the typical, um, you know, tri-lane with two solos uh, meta that we have been seeing, so... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the dual lane, and it's absolutely performing extremely well. I think the only thing that um, that worries me whenever I see a dual lane is it has to be extremely well coordinated, 
right? Otherwise, it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Yeah, completely, completely. Coordination has to be spot on because a dual lane, especially mid lane, is like make or break. Um, you know, some of it, a portion of that dual lane has come down to rune control as well. So when you have the dual mid and you've got the support partner, um, it's always nice to have that player collect the rune. And if you collect a decent rune, that's you know enabling you to pick up a kill. It can. Maraxis is going to stun on the engineer. The spider mines are going to blow up on Maraxis, but he's very tanky. Engineer is going to fall immediately. Soul Reaper pushing hard into Maraxxus here, but Maraxxus is just too tanky with that ulti. Hasted Pebbles is looking for a target to jump on. It looks like he is going to miss as Hag blinks away on the same frame that Pebbles blinks in. That was very, very well timed. And so they do, don't actually get anything in return for losing an Engineer who just picked up a Storm Spirit. But okay, a curse. Flame Consumption is used. Pebbles is not in range. Actually, he is. Big stun combo is going to come out onto Hag and uh, Calamity. But they are able to live for right now. Maraxxus does fall. A curse is chasing Calamity. Pebbles is soon to blink after Calamity, I'm sure. Nope, he decides to switch sights onto Geomancer. Throws the Slagmites onto Geomancer, tosses him back, but Geomancer is able to dig away for the moment. In the meantime, Hag versus Nitro here in the jungle. Nitro is going to fall to the Hag and Geomancer dots, but does get Geomancer in return. So it's a hat trick coming out for Nitro who does end up falling in the meantime. We do see a Shrunken Head. Looks like it's finished on Pebbles. That is a very, very early Shrunken Head, all things considered, as he does have a staff in his inventory as well. Yeah, staff, staff, staff Shrunken at 25 minutes is crazy. Um, yeah, it's amazing for Hellborn. And, you know, credit to his combination as well. I think he hit two or three areas in that fight. So, uh, yeah, Testy picked up a few kills on top of that. So. Yeah, overall good fight for Hellborn, uh, pushing the mid tower, which uh, is becoming quite low, but Moira does retaliate with the illusion. Yeah, I'm actually a little... Uh, they're just playing it safe, but I feel like they could have maybe brought that tower down, but Maraxxus was ready to go, and I guess the rest of the team was respawning soon, so probably the right play to, to back away when they did, but... Uh, they are posturing. It looks like they do want to jump something. Raxus is going to miss the quake stun on an engineer. En energy field is going to fall, kind of block off the counter initiation from the Legion side. Raxus in a bit of trouble. Dig stun is going to connect on the curse of the backline. Arcane Vortex is going to catch Maraxxus and Pebbles. Shards of Harkon are following. Sunder's Vault is going to deal zero damage to the shrunken head Pebbles, who's chasing Calamity now. A curse. Flame consumption comes out at the right time. Engineer is actually taking a lot of heat, but he's still alive. So much damage coming out. The Dragon Spins are going to find kills onto a Soul Reaper and Engineer. Calamity is getting chased. Maraxxus, Calamity, and Geomancer. All casualties for Big Ego Crew there. So the fight does go in favor of Good Clan Rejects as they do keep their two cores alive. At the, well, excuse me, Soul Reaper is a, is a core here, but Nitro and Pebbles certainly the big ones here. Yeah, the fight was crazy, very scattered. Um, it was interesting to see how both teams were going for different targets. The fight started off with Volker missing his stun, unfortunately. Uh, Pebbles was trying to chase the Calamity and do as much damage to him as he possibly could, but um, yeah, he was kind of doing that on his own. But eventually they did to the fight, getting uh, kills on to uh, two big targets. So um, yeah, well played for well played for Hellborn, for taking the mid tower as well. So overall, they'd be very happy with that. And we haven't uh, really touched on the difference in net worth between between the teams, but at this point in the game, it certainly is showing up. Uh, 16k gold lead in favor of Good Clan Rejects. So, you know, quite an uphill battle for Big Eager Crew to to overcome here. Um, yeah, what do they do? It's difficult because now Hellborn have quite significant map control in the takeover of the Legion jungle. Geomancer is going to dig stun with the PK onto Soul Reaper, but the Storm Spirit came out very, very quickly, prevented any sort of follow up initiation. So, what does Pebbles go for at this point? Okay, I uh, got my answer. He does buy an Arcana, so it looks like he is going Resto. And if Resto finds his way into his hand, he sold it back, decides to pick up Spell Shards instead. So, okay. Spell shards instead of the resto. I mean, which one? That's another question for you. Which one would you have rather have seen? Would you rather see him push for resto, or the spell shards better? I would rather see the spell shards first and the resto a little bit later. Uh, the reason for that, I think, when you combine the staff with the spell shards together, especially at this stage in the game, where the heroes heroes on the legion side are still relatively squishy, 
I think it does offer slightly better value. Um, it's a quicker pickup as well because the item is a lot cheaper. And I, then I think when you get spell shards level three, you can just go for resto straight after and uh, yeah, let's kind of play it that way. But that's just that's my opinion. I don't know if everyone else, if other people would agree, but um, that's the way that I would I'd push for it. Yeah, I'm actually in full agreement with you there, especially after surveying the inventories of the Legion side. You know, they have three Mystic Vestments between um, Maraxis, Mora, and Calamity, as well as a Gnome's Wisdom on Hag. So, I mean, there's a lot of magic armor on the side of the Legion, uh, Legion team, so I think Spell Shards is absolutely the right pickup. It's going to increase his increase his damage output significantly in, like you said, a shorter uh, time frame. Yeah, so we see, obviously, Kongol taken now. It'd be interesting to see if they go for their Kongol, which I imagine might happen relatively soon so they can pick up the token. Um, if they do pick up the token, who do you think they would give it to? It's a good question. Um, I'm not so sure if you or the viewers would agree with me, but I'd actually like to see it on Pebbles. Um, but at the same time, maybe it's not it's not necessarily ideal on Pebbles because he does have a shrunken head, which is going to block a ton of damage that uh, Biggie could, could throw out. So perhaps it's better on Nitro, but I just feel like Pebbles can just man up so hard, get one, maybe two combos out before he dies as he jumps on Calamity. Calamity, about two or three auto attacks away from dying. Pebbles is hasty, he's gonna get caught, but he pops the shrunken head. He's going to be able to walk away from this. But yeah, I mean, who do, who do you like it on? I think Pebbles is not a bad uh, candidate for the token, but you know, maybe Soul Reaper as well. I'm not so sure I like it on Nitro. Uh, I'm kind of hesitant um, to say it should go on Nitro at this point, because I just feel like he's not throwing out that much damage outside of his ult. I think he's, I would be in agreement with you. I would put it on the Pebbles, because he's doing the most damage and he's the most useful hero they have at the moment. Um, I think Nitro, you could put it on Nitro, but I think I think Pebbles, yeah, just with the amount of damage in the book that he's doing this game, I think you just want to make sure he's got you know, more capacity to, uh, yeah, do a bit more with that token on himself. They are going to be able to secure the second con kill. It does actually go, looks like they're giving it to Nitro, so... We may disagree, but it's the decision they make, and honestly, it's not necessarily a bad, um, a bad choice to give it to Nitro, as, yes, he may not be able to do the most with it in the midst of a team fight. But if he is able to stay alive for the next team fight, Moraxis and Geomancer are going to find a nice combo onto Soul Reaper and Recursor. Curse is able to negate all the damage with his ulti. And he does get Soul Reaper right back up to speed, so now they're fully turning around here. Accursed is actually going to dodge that Bat Blast with his tablet completely. A nice play coming out from Mathbro on Accursed. And Wretched Hag able to blink away from Nitro. So no casualties for either side here, but... Uh, just flexing their stuff, <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> good way, good way to put it. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Hag missed the ulti, but she does have staff, so she won't mind that too much. Calamity is pushing the bot tower in, which I think is a smart thing to do at this stage. Um, but yeah, no, with the token, I think they're gonna just try and uh, go all into top lane now. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, so we have some item is coming out to Nitro right now. He does uh, purchase something. Not exactly sure what it was. Geomancer does go in. They're just chipping away this tower right now. Moira, Illusion, in the backline, gonna find two two targets to stun, but no follow up being made. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I do like this uh, this token on Nitro now. Uh, like I said, they're going to secure his next item basically uh, if he stays alive with this team fight, which will be a, a big a big factor if. Big E or crew is somehow able to, you know, stab off this uh, this barracks yeah. assault, but it doesn't really look like they have much of an option. Having yeah, having the token on Nitro as well is as we can see, you just can't the auto attacks, which means they can get free racks in. Maraxis Quake Stun is going to miss. Geomancer connects his ulti onto Soul Reaper, but he's caught in the bot in the back line inside of the energy field. He is going to be the first to fall in the midst of this team fight. Sunder's Vault is going to catch three heroes here, but the Storm Spirit is going to prevent any damage for Soul Reaper. Accursed has the ultimate up. Calamity getting jumped on by Pebbles. Calamity and Geomancer out of the fight. It's a three versus five right now. The heals are coming out between Accursed and Soul Reaper. The sustain 
four good clan rejects is just too much. Double stun on the Nitro and a curse from Moraxis. But unfortunately, there's just no follow-up damage. Combo between Moira and Moraxis is going to make quick work of them. And this might be all she wrote. The, the Raxes are down. Four players are out. And it looks like they're going to start their assault on the second set of Raxes. This this Pebbles is yeah. I'm 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 a massive fan of this guy. I've been watching him quite a bit recently, and he's a very smart player, um, very smart mid player. And I like how he's always going for Calamity in the team fights because you know without Calamity, Legion don't have enough damage to do anything against, as you say, the sustain and the heal from the Hellborn heroes. So um, yeah, great heads up, heads up plays from uh, Pebbles coming out of this game. Yeah, and this is uh this is a big victory, you know, in the. Grand scheme of things, Dig is going to connect onto Pebbles, get shielded, able to walk away. Next tier 3 tower is going to fall, Nitro on Sol Reaper, getting stopped by Maraxxus. Bat Blast is going to connect onto Nitro, but Drunken Head coming out onto Nitro. Pebbles is going to find the kill onto Geomancer. Maraxxus is the next to fall. Buyback onto Maraxxus. Wretched Hag getting stun combo down, gets finished off by the Pebbles combo. Hag buys back, GG's are getting called. It looks like good clan rejects are going to take game number one in this grand final series of cycle number six. And that's a big victory. I was just before that uh, that fight broke out, I was going to comment about how big of a victory that first game is for good clan rejects because they were not on their home turf whenever you consider server pings. That was an EU server game. Yeah, they. Uh... And they even played a really good game earlier on the EU, um, the first game against uh, Donkey Kong. So, um, yeah. Um, I was just chipped, or uh, just told by Paradise that there, there actually was a bit of a a new server has come out for the from the, on the EU side. Actually, makes it a little bit more NA player friendly. But uh, the, the fact remains that any EU server, whether or not it's closer to uh, closer to NA or not, is going to be a slightly higher ping than any NA server. But the next game is going to be played on to US East, and so we are going to have a ping advantage for good clan rejects. Um, but you know, just a phenomenal team play performance, whether or not you considered servers for good clan rejects. I mean, it all came back to that that dual lane, just fantastic coordination. I mean. Hag just not having the game. Pebbles, great performance right out of the gate. I mean, such an early PK followed by an early staff. I mean, he just felt like he was owning the map. Yeah, I think I think ultimately the game was decided with the dual mids. I think because they dominated that lane so hard, Pebbles got his PK, kill Calamity, took over the game, and it, yeah, it went from there. So good game to uh, good game to both. But uh, yeah, extra props and credit to um, to good clan rejects. All right, that concludes our first match of this series. We are going to take a short break. Stay tuned, everybody. We're going to bring to you second game between Big Ego Crew and Good Clan Rejects. Don't go anywhere.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the finals of Han OMG cycle number six. This is game number two between Big Ego Crew and Good Clan Rejects. We just saw Good Clan Rejects take game number one in commanding fashion. I'm Easy Full Clan, going to be joined here by BKB and Chill. BKB, how does Big Ego Crew secure game number two and bring us and the viewership to game number three? The. I think they need to take control of mid lane. I think that's the most important matter they've got this game. Bilbo just, yeah, played out of his mind on Pebbles. Um, won the game along with Engineer early game and uh, yeah, just had such good performance. So I think mid lane's going to be the key factor this game. But uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one for sure. Absolutely, that Pebbles performance was extremely devastating. I mean, that was just. You know, we talked about it in the conclusion of last game, but, you know, that nine minute PK followed by like a 15 minute staff was just unbelievable. I, I don't know. It, it's such a scary thing whenever you're playing against the Pebbles with that early of a PK. I mean, everybody on the other team just falls prey to that hero, except the Miraxis. There was one hero that could survive a combo against the PK Pebbles that early. Yep. Um, yeah. Legion heroes, uh, the heroes from Big Ego Crew were definitely prone to those Pebbles gangs once he had PK and he was just picking off heroes left, right and centre. Um, and that's what the kind of crucial factor was. But um, yeah, we do see Kinesis and Magmus picked up first. Yeah, absolutely. And these are two very familiar uh, first hero picks from both sides. You know, we have a... So going over the bands uh, really quick. Good Ego Crew... Good, good Ego Crew. Good Clan Rejects <laughs> bands out Chipper and Moira. And then Big Ego Crew takes out Ophelia and Engineer. So Band's looking very, very familiar to what we saw in the previous game. Uh, well, actually, not totally familiar. Uh, Moira and Engineer were both played in the last game, and they are banned this game. So uh, a bit of a, a change up on, on the bands here. But as you said, we have a Magmus pick followed by a Kinesis pick. So a quick counter pick to the, to the Magmus uh, with the Kinesis pick, who was obviously looking to steal that Lava Surge and make great, great use of it. Uh, on the Kinesis. And now we have an Aluna followed by a Rally. So what do you think so far? I mean, do you um, like the Magmus first pick whenever Kinesis is still on the board? If I'm completely honest, I would say no. Um, but then if you, I don't know really, it's difficult to say. I mean, Kinesis, when it's played by Shulkan, a very talented Kinesis player, um, He's going to do a lot of work with the Lava Surge um, on his hero. But I think, going back to your question, I think I would say no. I oh, don't master. really like picking up Magmus when Kinesis is on the board because it does, you know, give an extra added threat to, um, you know, the lineup that has Kinesis with the Lava Surge. It almost adds like a second hero. Um, so, yeah, I would say no. But, um, yeah, we'll see if see if Legion can play against the Kinesis when he does have the Mag Stun or possibly the, uh, the Aluna Stun instead. Yeah, it's it's pretty scary to, to play against a Kinesis who is going against the Magmus. I mean, if he does have that Lava Surge in his spell arsenal, um, that hero has a incredible amount of control between the Lava Surge stun, obviously the te telekinetic controls with the pretty much the perma slow on whoever he wants, but uh, the Stasis Smash is a very very strong ultimate ability. Uh, so he's got a big big chain stun if he's able to take over that Lava Surge and use both Lava Surge and Stasis Smash to great effect. Yeah, it's definitely very oh, scary, boy. especially if you if you pick up a PK on Kinesis, it's it's just like having another Magmus on your team. So yeah, um, Deadwood picked up now. Deadwood's definitely a hero I'm a massive fan of. I love the damage potential. I love the fact that it's all physical as well. Um, Rally um, and Deadwood are very similar in terms of what they do offer. Um, but yeah, loads of initiation, loads of burst damage, loads of roaming potential as well. So I do like the three picks from Hellborn, um, but I do like the three picks from Legion as well. Lots of disable, lots of stun, lots of damage. So um, yeah, I'm not sure who has the advantage at the moment, but uh, yeah, what do mm -hmm. you think? Uh, I really like the Deadwood pick in response to the Puppet Master. Um, I think that Puppet Master is a very threatening hero, especially once he gets that Shroud. You know, he's got uh, some solid carry potential as he does have kind of a innate crit ability in his uh with his whiplash and then he's also got huge burst potential with the puppet as well as you know just fantastic cc as you already pointed out but you know he is pretty susceptible to being rotated on and getting caught out 
Um, and, and Deadwood really, really punishes a hero like Puppet Master, who has no great escape ability of his own. So I, I really love the, the Deadwood pick. Like you said, I think that I, I favor Hellborn's lineup so far. Um, I love Rally and Deadwood together. Um, it, it, it allows them to have a very, very flexible carry pick. Um, having two big physical burst heroes like Rally and Deadwood on their team, who are in, in themselves not you know outside of the burst potential that they have, but just the flexibility in the lane setup, right? I mean, both of these heroes can play core or like second support. So I, I really, yeah. really love what uh, Big Eager Crew's got going on right now. I would like to see a Deadwood mid this game. Um, I would like to see Deadwood with the fast PK, as you say, you know, going for the Puppet Master, kind of doing as much damage to him as possible, taking him out of the out of the equation in team fights. Um, I like the physical damage as you mentioned, but I do worry that you know items such as Void Talisman could actually counter both of those heroes. So a bit of a worry then. But um, you know, Void's not something you're going to see picked up by Puppet, so that's going to be their main focus anyway. But yeah, speaking, Absolutely. Of, speaking of carries, what do you think Hellborn are going to push towards in terms of their carry this game? Well, like I said, it allows, you know, having physical presence on some of your supporting cast and, you know, even like your um, your main ganker just allows you to have very, very flexible uh, carries. Because typically when, when you have, in my opinion, when you have very magic damage he uh, heavy heroes, you typically have to kind of go all in physical presence uh, with the carry hero is what I usually kind of theorize. So if they were to, you know, if, if instead of Rally and Deadwood, they were to have something like, you know, a, a Miraxis with uh, like a Miraxis and we'll just say like Gauntlet or something, right? Um, those are very, very f uh, magic damage heavy heroes. So I'd want to see something like, you know, Dark Lady as, a, as the main core or like maybe even Swift Blade. Um, but with the physical presence on the supporting cast, you know, you can transition into more mixed or even more magic damage heavy heroes. So, you know, you talked about Void Talismans coming out to try and counter in Deadwood and Rally. Like, the hero hasn't really seen a whole lot of action on the scene, but I've been a big fan of Ravenor lately. Uh, I actually like the hero a lot, um, but it also kind of allows, like, Oogie to come into the mix and be very, very scary. Um, or even some of these, like a Bensington main carry, who can do dish out a lot of magic damage. So I, I really like, like I said, it just allows the the carry, the position one pick, to be extremely flexible. Um, whenever yeah. you have heroes like uh, Deadwood and Rally, I would love to see Big Eager Crew pick up a Clanks this game. A Clanks with the geometers and a Null Fire, um, just for you know. The movement speed, the mobility, the mana burn, especially against Amun Ra, who spawns with lower HP when his mana is uh, his mana is burnt. Um, I think that they do need a range carry. Do we see? Do you see Lord Staff always picked up? Um, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually right with you. You know, Clanks has a huge magic damage presence uh, between all of his abilities and everything, so it, it does make a lot of sense. And you know, with Given how just excellent the front line of Big Eager Crew looks right now between, you know, the like we already talked about, the Kinesis potentially having Lava Surge, as well as the Rally and Deadwood, I feel like Clanks actually, you, you hit it right spot on. Like, Clanks is probably one of the best heroes they could have picked up right now, but we do see the South Forest. Uh, we did miss the, band, the second wave of bands. I guess I'll just touch on them really quickly. Uh, Master of Arms, Bombardier, Gladiator. Banned out by Good Clan Rejects, Electrician Pebble Zephyr, banned out by Big Eo Crew. So, pretty standard uh, bans, I feel like, um, especially because Shorkan is not interested in having another Pebbles uh, in the game like was last game. I think the only ban that sticks out to me is the Zephyr ban. Um, kind of an interesting ban. What do you think? Yeah, the Zephyr ban is definitely interesting. Um... I did see it played by Testy a while ago. I think he ended up the game with 650 or 700 GPM or something crazy. Um, so just a hero they don't really want to deal with. I love the Arachna pick against the South Forest. And then we do go into the last pick, which is the Sam Ray. But um, yeah, no, the Arachna pick against the South Forest I really like because South Forest is very much an in-your-face hero. Loves to kind of, you know, um, do as much damage in close proximity. But uh, yeah, Arachna kind of counters that with the Spider String. And then... Yeah. Um, 
it's not right there to you, uh, yeah, as we see. Right, so, I mean, it looks like Arachna is, you know, they have this very, very beefy melee presence. And so Arachna is probably going to be the solo laner, I would guess, in this lane. And she, it looks like she's probably going to be able to dominate pretty handily whoever she gets to have the one v one against. Um, so yeah, I'm actually really, really liking the lane setup from Good Clan Rejects right now. But I think that the, I want to say that the mid game strength certainly goes in favor of Big Ear Crew. Um, I think that they have a very, very scary lineup to play against whenever ultimates come into play and rotations come in. Yeah. You know, as strong to... of a laner as Arachna is, she does fall prey to ganks, especially to heroes like Deadwood and Rally. So, yeah. Yeah, even though Arachna is very good against our forest, she uh, doesn't. Well, the hardened carapace is focused against magic damage. So. With all the physical, with the Deadwood Widowmaker, with the Rally Ultimate, the Stun, etc., I think yeah, Arachna is going to definitely be quite a, quite a target for them. Um, the Amon Ra pickup is interesting, but I just wanted to kind of touch upon the lane swap that Legion have done. Um, they placed Bilbo Swaggin, who was a mid player last game, into bot lane. Uh, he's going to be obviously farming short lane, and then they've placed Testy on Arachna in mid lane. What do you think about that? Well, I like Arachna in the mid lane. Um, I already talked about how much I hate laning against orb walking heroes whenever we saw uh, Testy playing Nitro last game. So, you know, Arachna is just another one of those heroes that's able to auto attack you on the creep wave or under tower without pulling any sort of aggro. And Arachna's orb walking ability is arguably even worse than Nitro's. So um, she's going to be a fantastic pickup to help deal with Salforus in the mid lane who is kind of this one of these uh, unkillable mid heroes but um you know he does have enough sustain that i think he's probably going to be able to do have an okay time um what i'm really interested to see is how deadwood does against common raw but oh, a lava lane. surge is going to get it's going to connect on two heroes but they're turning it back around on kinesis who gets compelled out just one more auto attack for the puppet is not going to drop Kinesis, but Aluna's in a little bit of trouble, but he's able to keep walking. Emerald Lightning is going to connect on the Rally. Aluna does fall. She is the Bloodless kill. They are going to trade Rally. Magnus and Sandwraith is chasing Sandwraith together with Puppet Master. Puppet Show is going to keep Sandwraith in the fray, but they are going to back off, and Aluna and Rally have ported back into the lane. So a quick Bloodless kill. Nearly missed it. But, uh, you know, Kinesis quickly gets his hands on Lava Surge and is able to stay alive. So he actually has it. So we've got uh, two Magma Stuns in this uh, Tri-Lane versus Tri-Lane. So this is going to be a pretty interesting uh, Tri-Lane to look at. So keep yeah, your is. eyes peeled for what happens here. <laughs> we do see some initiation on the same way, but he's, yeah, he's absolutely fine. Um, no, I just wanted to kind of mention that with the Bloodless onto Sandwraith, he now has an Iron Shield, which uh, negates a lot of attack damage, which he'll, um, yeah, we'll give him some kind of more ability to obviously farm the creeps without taking as much harass as he would have without the Iron Shields. Um, mm -hmm. So the Bloodless was very useful to uh, to get onto Sandwraith. Yeah, so, you know, okay. Lava Surge is going to connect under Rally. Magnus is just walking away. Compel is going to connect under Luna. Lava Surge is going to double stun Magnus and Aluna. Sandwraith, quite tanky as you pointed out, with the Iron Shield, is able to walk away. So they get another kill in their tri lane. And so it looks like Big Eagle Crew is having a pretty good time here in the start of this game. Especially yeah. when you look at the mid lane too. Lord Salforus, Satellitium doing wonderfully in the creep score. 7 0 Arachna versus 13 3 Salforus. So. As Arachna is getting rotated on by Kinesis, the Lava Surge is going to connect on the Arachna. She's getting slowed by the lifts, and she's going to fall. So a nice rotation is going to secure another kill for Big Eager Crew, and it's a big one on their mid player. I like the I like the Iron Shield pickup as well from uh, Sapphorus uh, against Arachna. As we know, very heavy physical damage, so negates a lot of the harass and just gives them more, you know, more space and more room to kind of farm around the creeps, which, uh, yeah, definitely like that pickup. But mm -hmm. um, just talking about top, uh, sorry, bottom lane briefly, when you've got the Amun Ra against the Deadwood, 
Who would you favor in this 1v1? Well, I think I favor Ra a little bit. Um, Ra is able to man up pretty well against Deadwood, just kind of constantly harassing and pushing. Uh, we've got a double stun coming out on the Puppet Master, who is going to fall on the top lane, so... Good Clan Rejects may be finding the counter kill onto Kinesis. They do find it. Rally taking a lot of pressure now. Magmus is pursuing, but the Sand Throw comes onto the Magmus. He Steam Bass to, to just kind of lay low for a little bit. So it is a one for one exchange there in the top lane. Yeah, it looks like um, just touching back on Armin Ra briefly. It looks like he's going to rush the hound with the Black Legion. Um, just giving a lot of survivability against the Deadwood. And... The other heroes um, that do lots of burst damage, so yeah, I think I like that pick up. Do you think Helm with the Black Legion is the best choice, or do you think he should perhaps go for Plated Greaves first and just go for, um, yeah, some move speed and a bit of. I think, I think that Helm is actually the ideal uh, item to pick up right here. Double stun is going to come out on the, in the top lane. Sandray taking a lot of pressure, he's able to walk away. It's very, very difficult to have these. Uh, side conversations about item pickups whenever this <laughs> top lane is just so, so much, crazy so action, yeah. with the double mag stun in play on both sides but yeah i think that helm is the is the right item it's going to shield him uh plate of Greaves is obviously a great pickup against deadwood um as well as rally but yeah helm is actually really i really really like it against a hero like deadwood uh raising your hp bar against uh deadwood without actually giving him any bonus damage from strength. Uh, I think it's really, really great, as we do see a rotation attempt coming out from South Forest, but not going to make uh, anything of it. And he's almost got this helm on Ra as well. He's about 170 gold away from it, so, um, you know, just a couple more creep kills, and he's going to have it. And Dead was going to be hard-pressed to actually get anything done in this bottom lane, I think. I mean, he's getting the levels and everything, but... Uh, Actually, I eat my words. I mean, Deadwood's doing just fine. He's got 27 creep kills versus the 33 of Amon Ra, so oh, you know, it's, was... it's pretty even creep kill wise. But uh, yeah, Amon Ra putting a lot of pressure, pushing uh, Deadwood out of lane, and one more creep kill ought to do it. And Ra has got the helm, so I think after after the helm comes out, Deadwood's gonna have a really hard time getting anything accomplished. Yeah. Um... The Deadwood pickup is definitely nice, but I like the fact that they've kind of countered it with the Ra because, you know, Deadwood, when you get level 6 from Deadwood, you think, okay, he's going to go and kill the hero he's facing against. But if he uses his combination of spells and ultimate and everything onto Ra, then Ra is just going to survive um, and be absolutely fine. So, yeah, I like the Ra. Not only that, he has the ultimate as well. So, I mean, of it's of just course, like, yeah, yeah. gosh. Yeah. yeah. But we did see a gank attempt in the mid lane. Uh, Undying cooldown coming out was used on to Arachna but Arachna was able to walk away in the meantime, but... Yeah, now Ra can just be just hyper-aggressive against Deadwood in this bottom lane. There's just nothing that Deadwood can do to prevent it, so... I, I fully expect Deadwood to kind of take the gold that he has at this point, and just the gold levels, and try to rotate and find a kill. I mean, he is rotating back to base right now, so... I expect him to TP out somewhere else. Um... Because I think if he goes back against Raw in the bottom lane, he's just going to get pushed out again, uh, like within 30 seconds to a minute of actually showing up. So, and it does look like he is TPing into the mid lane with, he's not smoked, and the site ward in the mid lane is going to spot out the rotation, so he is just going to walk back towards bottom. So overall, this is looking pretty even. I mean... Who's got the advantage here at this point in the game, you think? We've got this Sandwraith that's doing like pretty well in the top lane for Big Eager Crew versus this Amon Ra who's having a pretty phenomenal time in the bot lane. Spider Sting's going to come out onto South Forest, but unfortunately they're just going to have to dive a little too deeply under that tower to make anything happen, so he's going to be able to walk off the spider. I'd give the, so you said about the advantage, I'd probably give it to Legion because with the triple call set up for Rakhna, Ra and Puppet, they're all, Puppet's close to 300 GPM, but um, they're pretty much all 300 GPM plus, and for this point in the game, I think that's exactly what you want to have. You don't really want to have one, one hero suffering too much. But as we can see, Ra's doing very, very well, um, putting a lot of pressure onto Deadwood, and the enemy tower is close to half HP. 
Um, Arachna is doing absolutely fine mid lane, even though she has got one death, and yeah, Puppet hasn't died in the tri lane. So See another rotation. Southforest is going to try for Ra again here in the bot lane. The grip is going to come out. The grasp is going to come out on Ra. Ports are coming out from Arachna, but they get through the first health bar of Ra, but the Undying is going to come out. He is quite tanky still, but unfortunately he cannot regen through that Southforest ulti. Southforest is charging very, 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 very aggressively. Gets stunned by Maraxxus, Magnus, excuse me. Uh, the Lava Surge is going to connect onto Arachna. Compel is going to be able to save Deadwood, so now it's Arachna and Magnus that are in a lot of trouble. So Lava Surge is going to connect onto South Forest. Fighter Sting is going to fall, so it's South Forest is the first to fall. So mid player for mid player. Testy on Arachna is dead as well. The three man grasp is going to be devastating against Magnus and Puppet here. The Luna falls as well. They do get the kill onto Sandwraith as well, but. That was a huge turnaround. I mean, what about that grasp? My gosh, that was insane. Grasp was it, yeah. It was insane. Um, unfortunately, Sam Wraith didn't have quite enough damage to take out everybody. But yeah, massive props to Volker there. Um, although I do want to say that grasp wouldn't have landed and Deadwood would have actually been dead if Testy used his web shot onto Deadwood. The reason why Deadwood was able to escape was because Testy didn't have the, uh, the extra top damage on the queue. So um, mm. yeah, just something I thought I'd mention. Sure. So maybe a slight misplay allows uh, Deadwood to come back into the fight with that huge uh, three-man grasp. But um, yeah, so it looks like, you know, after that fight, a little lead has developed for Big Eager Crew, but, uh, you know, it's not too mentionable at this point, even though I did mention it. What? Uh, <laughs> um, what do you think? would be the best item choice. Seismic Slam course. is going to come out on the Raw. They are going to find the second kill on the Raw inside of his ulti cooldown. So that's a big, big kill on the Raw, who was pretty much the free farming, uh, not necessarily free farming, but certainly was having the best time each side. So two consecutive kills on the Raw is actually going to be, it's probably going to snowball into something uh, a little bit bigger as we transition into mid game. He's yeah. not going to be quite the tanky powerhouse uh, as he would ideally want to be. He was just with this fight, Sam Wraith's overtaken him in GPM. So, yeah, um, really big team fights for Big Ego Crew. But um, and I was just going to ask you, with regards to South Forest, what do you think he's going to be picking up first? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, you know, I. I play South Forest a little bit. I probably would pick up a headdress. I think you know they actually have quite a bit of uh, of magic damage over there on the uh, on the Legion side. I think that headdress makes a lot of sense. Um, but also, I mean, maybe even something like a tablet could could be pretty good. Um, you know, they do have the immobilize from uh, from Puppet and everything. Spider Sting is going to come out on onto South Forest, followed by the. Luna and Magnus is just too much damage. South Forest is not able to survive, so... Kind of positioned a little bit greedy there in the mid lane, but... Um, yeah, that is going to be... A nice gank. Magnus is going to get spotted out by Rally and Kinesis, but he's able to Lava Surge away. I mean, like what would you like to see on the South Forest? Um, good question. I think I would like to see Shamans as well. I know Satellisium is a big fan of going Barrier Idol first item. Which, especially against obviously the Magmus, the Amun Ra, the Aluna particularly, is going to be very effective. Um, but to be honest, I actually also really like the Gnome's Wisdom. Sandwraith ulti is going to come out on the Puppet Master. Puppet Master in a lot of trouble here as he's getting pressured by the Sandwraith illusions. Astro is going to keep him up, but the Deadwood Falcon Punch is going to finish him off. Deadwood is going to try and portal, portal out, but gets stunned by Magmus. Sandwraith does the same, but his actually succeeds. I've got to say, I love the uh, I love the Falcon Punch term. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I say that as well in TMM. It's just yeah, Falcon Punch is a good way to call it. Um, but no, I was about to say I like Gnome's Wisdom on South Forest. I think the healing combined with the Life Tap is is crazy. Such a good team item as well. But Barrier Idol would also be very useful. So I think Barrier Idol is probably going to be the call that he's going to go for. Um, but yeah, Barrier Idol in to. It's difficult. I'm not sure what he's going to build afterwards. Um, do you have any ideas? I think Frostfield Plate makes a lot of sense on South Forest this game versus heroes like Puppet and, uh, and Arachna. So I'm not really sure at what what timing um, 
he's going to be getting a Frostfield plate, but that is definitely an item that I would like to see picked up on South Forest th uh, throughout the course of this game. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, um, I think Frost Frostfield plate would be amazing. Um, obviously negates a lot of Arachnus attack speed with the aura, same with the Puppet Master, gives him loads of armor. Um, I think it would be, yeah, it would be a really good pickup as he farms some stacks in the woods, which is something I did want to see because with South Forest you can just really skyrocket your GPM if you rotate into woods and clear out the uh, clear out the stacks. Yeah, absolutely. And we see that he does that pretty uh, pretty handily and uh, pushes towards level 11. So he's got level 2 ulti and uh, I'm not necessarily sure that you agree. I mean, so I play South Forest a bit in pub games. Um, I really like, really, really, really like spell shards on this hero. How do you feel about spell shards on South? I like I like it as well, um, but I do think it's a little bit greedy. So mm -hmm. I'm more of a kind of fan of going, you know, utility such as like tablet, such as PK, um, those sorts of items, and then just tanking up with a barrier idol or names of wisdom, something like that, and then going for a disabled item like a hellflower or a sheepstick. That's my preference. Um, I think spell shards is fantastic. It does a lot of damage, but I don't think this game is really going to be. Sandwraith and Kinesis are going to go and find a oh, quick kill on the Puppet Master in the bottom lane. <laughs> so we talked about how susceptible the Puppet Master is to like rotations, as he doesn't have a, a very good escape ability. And you know, I think that the Sandwraith pick was such a fantastic last pick for Big E or Crew with their lineup. I mean, it, it feels like yes, Puppet Master had a pretty decent laning phase. In fact, um, you know, he, he did even slightly better than Puppet, than uh, Sandwraith in the lane phase, but as we've transitioned in the mid game, I mean, he is just falling prey to so many of these uh, rotations, and the Sandwraith just makes it even harder. Kinesis is going to get Lava Surged and Magma Sulti. He's going to fall in the bottom lane. Arachna falls in the top lane, meanwhile, and Amon Ra has to run away from these this trio of heroes. He's got his ultimate, You're he's coming dead. back up to Seismic You're Slam. Dead. This time by Rally, but it's okay. He saves it, cancels it, does it again, and finds the kill onto Amon Ra. So a two for nothing in the top lane while they get this kill onto Kinesis in the bottom lane. Yeah, huge, huge rotations. Um, I do want to say that Magmus, when he was in Fizz, he did ignore the Rally that was TPing. Um, so Rally was obviously allowed to TP and rotate and kill the Amon Ra. Um, but I understand why he did it, because he wanted to kill the Arachna, which he did manage to achieve. But um, I think he, if he was to stun Rally, I think Ra may have possibly been okay. So yeah, just kind of, just a kind of small thing I noticed. Yeah, sure. I mean, that makes that makes a lot of sense. If, uh, if he stunned Rally, Rally wouldn't have been there. So yeah, you're absolutely right. But um, we've got a Shroud coming out on the Puppet Master. So Puppet Master, as hard of a time as he's had to get anything done. Uh, because he, you know, he has died three times uh, this game, and just has been heavily ganked uh, by the Sandwraith at this point in the game. He's about to have a shroud, and what do you want to see him try to get accomplished with his shroud once he picks it up? Uh, I want to see him try and go for the Sandwraith, just to kind of slow down Sandwraith's farm. Maybe the South Forest, but I think South Forest is going to be a much harder target to kill. Um, yeah, I think I'd like him to see him target the Sandwraith, and yeah just slow him down really. I mean Sam Rafe is getting fairly close to his Thunder Four, so he's gonna take off with his GPM soon. Um, but I think because he's obviously given away that he is going for Shroud, I think Hellborn are gonna be quite prepared for it. So I don't think it's gonna do too much, but if he can get calls you know onto yeah. any of the cores it's gonna be great. Yeah, to that end, I mean, Hellborn has got fantastic vision coverage of the top lane. I mean Sam Rafe is having a pretty good time uh able to farm pretty safely here in the top lane and to you know in contrast the legion have no vision of the of the hellborn jungle so it's actually very it's a very very uh, big gamble for puppet master to try and chase and locate sandwraith farming the jungle who at this point you just pointed out was close to to thunderclaw he actually has it now so he's going to be able to more or less farm the entire jungle safely and um yeah. Puppet Master actually does port in the top lane and pops a shroud, so he actually is looking for Sandwraith and is going to spot him out. Maybe this is daytime vision right now, but nope. Ports are coming in. Deadwood and Kinesis are responding, so now it's Puppet and Magnus that need to be a little bit careful right now. The the Mirage, the Sandwraith ultimate, is up. I think I think they just yeah expected um. 
Puppet Master to rotate when he had the Shroud, so good, t good TPs that came in there. Um, Trying to bait the Sandwraith illusion, so Magmus, they know Magmus is here and setting up for a stun. They bring, even bring Rally into the mix now, and Salforus is checking the top river, isn't necessarily coming to the top lane. There is an invisible Luna. But this is for, this is looking pretty dangerous. The Compel stun is going to find Magmus. The Luna trying to buy some space for Magmus. Magmus, the steam bath actually is able to miraculously live. That was a big live for Marax or for Magnus. Holy cow! Very close, <laughs> very close. I don't, I can't believe he got out there. Um, but uh, yeah, L lucky him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, between the steam bath and the power supply, he just barely made it out. That was actually quite impressive. Uh, especially yeah. considering that Big E or crew committed so many resources to try and find that kill. And there are four heroes, you know, waiting to pounce on that Magnus, so... But now, Arachna needs to be in a lot of... Be very careful. He gets lifted by Kinesis, followed by the Lava Surge. Kinesis actually disjoints or avoids the Lava Surge of Magnus, but Kinesis is going to end up falling, so it is an Arachna for a Kinesis, but Kinesis will happily take that trade, I am certain. Though he does lose his Lava Surge spell. That's a big spell, right? <laughs> But is. Amon Ra is getting chased down by Sandwraith here in the top lane, and Lord Salforus is pursuing as well. There is a port coming from the side of Good Clan Rejects. It's a Puppet Master. The Puppet Master is going to put the Voodoo Puppet onto Salforus, who is quite tanky, but ends up falling to Puppet Masters. So that, that, is, that is a big kill onto that Salforus, who was over 400 GPM before that kill came out. Yeah, as we see, Magnus off to Sandwraith. Magnus goes on to Sandwraith, tries to put out the, the Lava Surge Eruption, but gets silenced by Kinesis, and then followed up stun. So a big counterplay coming out from Mech X on Kinesis, stopping and saving Dutch Onage on Sandwraith. Well played. Very, yeah, very good communication, I think. One of the more, perhaps both of them were aware that Magnus was coming, and yeah, they just counter killed him with uh, the silence and the stun. So yeah, really, uh, really good counter kill. But no, I wanted to say that, you know, even though Sapphorus has the barrier rise or I would like to obviously see him get armor as soon as he can as we uh I'll let you say. You're dead. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh yeah, there's a fight breaking out. Arachna is getting gripped and she is gonna fall. Amon Ra, a bit low on the HP, but uh, he does have his ulti up, so they're not gonna pursue, so yeah, pardon me, thanks for uh I was just enjoying the sound of your voice. <laughs> so I uh, missed so, that. Uh, missed yeah. the beginning of that engagement. So. No, no worries. But uh, Capel is going to connect on the Magnus, followed by the Seismic Slam and the Falcon Punch. There is no way that Magnus is getting out of that one. Holy cow! Yeah. Um, so yeah, the full effect of the rally and the Deadwood physical damage is definitely coming Kinesis out. Kinesis is going to come on, go onto Aluna with the Lava Surge lift. Rally is going to follow up. Magnus put some pressure onto Rally here. A uh, Raw, rather. Rally is getting uh, dragged away by Kinesis. Raw is going to get burned through his first life. Undying comes out. Salforus pushing pretty heavily. Puppet Hold is going to come out on the Salforus, but it's Puppet Master that needs to be in a bit of trouble now. But nope, Puppet Master and Arachna turn it on to Salforus, and they do find the kill on the Salforus. Amon Ra did die in the midst of that. So, pretty big kills coming out for both sides. Um, tanky hero for tanky hero, raw for self. Yep. I like um, I like the way that they are counter, counter fighting with the um, the Arachnid slows and everything. I think they've obviously got so much cool potential that even when Hellborn do man up, they've got the capacity to turn back, and you know we're seeing it there. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the power of the Arachna and the Puppet Master with the, uh, the slows and the disables. Yeah. Um. You know, that, that TP from Arachna was everything to secure that kill on the South Forest. And, you know, looking at the drafts at this point, the items in each, uh, on all of the heroes' inventories, you know, I'm kind of, I was feeling pretty good about, um, about Big Eager Crew's spot in the game. Okay, Magnus is actually going to invis here onto Sandwraith. This might be a dead Sandwraith here as the Lava Surge Eruption does come out on the Sandwraith. Is he able to walk away? The Red Snipe is going to finish him off. So Magnus and Aluna finding a big kill on the Sandwraith. And that just furthers my point that 
you know, I was feeling pretty good for bigger crew having this uh, pretty early Thunderclaw onto onto Sandwraith at this point, but you know, they've got Thunderclaw on Arachna and Shroud onto Puppet, so they've got a pretty good dual core setup. The Compel Stun is going to miss Ar Arachna. Arachna is going to get punched by Deadwood. She throws out the Spider Sting onto, onto Rally. Lava Surge is coming out. She takes the Undying. Deadwood is going to die. The Lift is going to come out onto Arachna and finish her off. Kinesis is going to pay with his life. So it is a two for one for Arachna. Yep, two for one. Um... Arachna dying is not great, but I think they'll be happy with the two kills, potentially a third one if they can chase down the rally. Mm -hmm. yeah, PK is coming I... up. Oh, he Ooh. just barely misses, or barely dodges that uh, Aluna snipe. That was his life hanging in the balance there. Perfect, uh, yeah, perfect PK timing. Um, yeah, well played from uh, well played from the rally. The red snipe is, attempt does come out just about uh, a thousand units shy. That would have been Excellent to see. Magmus has got his PK now, by the way. So, yeah, we do see a 24 minute PK. Slightly late, but um, he does have it nonetheless. He is level 12 as well, so his ultimate is level 2. So, uh, yeah, I think the team fight potential now for Legion is definitely, definitely increased with uh, that pickup. Yeah, it's pretty on par with what uh, Hellborn has. They did have PKs on Deadwood and Rally a bit earlier, but, um, you know. Good clan rejects between Arachna and Puppet are, have a lot, a lot of carry potential, and uh, both of them are doing pretty well. You know, Puppet has been quietly finding his GPM in in light of being ganked, uh, targeted so heavily by this uh, Hellborn lineup. So he is the yeah, top farmer of the game. He's definitely he's impressed me with how he's recovered. Um, I would like to see a Hellflower on him. Just because silence in, you know, perhaps silence in the rally, even the deadwood if they can, it's just going to be so so effective, um, and those heroes are going to die if they are silenced. So, yeah, Hellflower would be great to see. I think Geometer's Bane is also fantastic this game. Um, dispels a lot with the, uh, the stuns from the rally and uh, uh, the kinesis with the lava surge. So I think Geo Bane Hellflower would probably be one of, I think one of the two would be my go-to item choice if I was public this game. Um, Do you Shrunken like? Yeah, I was just not about so to ask much. about Shrunken. Yeah, what's up? I'm not a big fan of the Shrunken just because of, you know, as we mentioned earlier, Deadwood has the PK and the OT. Uh, Rally has the, the physical damage burst. Um, so I don't think Shrunken's the best, but I think perhaps going into Geobane with the Hellflower and a symbol would uh, probably be my way of building building the Puppet Master this game. Yeah, I'm kind of in agreement with you there. I mean, it, Shrunken, Mat or Shrunken Head does, uh, there's a big fight at the top river. Aluna's actually going to be the first to fall. And now it's Deadwood chasing it on, onto Puppet Master. The Rotten Grasp is going to come out. Does it catch Puppet Master? He is able to turn around because there's a big stun from Magmus, but Puppet Master is going to end up falling. And three Hellborn heroes making the chase are going to be able to run away. Nope, there is a stun canceling the, P the teleport onto Sandwraith, but unfortunately not going to be able to finish off Sandwraith and actually pays with his life for stunning that Sandwraith. In the meantime, yeah, we also, did see a kill, kill a onto me. Rally, but uh, missed. Did you see exactly how it went out? I did, yeah. So bot lane, um, Testy used the ultimate, Rally couldn't escape, and so, yeah, that's pretty much the most of what happened. So, uh, <laughs> Rally got a uh, That's all you need to, to know. Slow to oblivion. Yeah, exactly. Right. Frostfield played finished on Raw now. That's actually going to be a pretty big, uh, a pretty big pickup. Uh, I think it's going to help deal with Sandwraith and team fights quite a bit. Um, considering it's you know with the Sandwraith passive, he's very very heavily invested in auto in uh, attack speed right now. So I think that I think that Frostfield is a is a great pickup on Raw. I would actually. Would you like to see a, a, a PK on Raw following that Frostfield pick? I would. I, I would, yeah. I would love to because if he can PK and you know do some AOE damage to uh, the PK initiation on Hellborn, I think it's going to slow them down a lot. And I think PK would be fantastic. But um, Sapphorus, I think he is either just about to or he's very close to his own Frostfield. So nice. it's going to be a Frostfield play on each team. Um, Perfect item for this game, as yeah, he just has bought it. So yeah, Sapphorus also does have the same pickup. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was a Null Fire Blade that uh, was finished on Sandwraith, and I actually really, really like the uh, Null Fire Blade pickup on 
on Sandwraith here. It, I think it is an excellent pickup against a raw, and in the meantime, Magnus was trying to escape uh, the assault of Rally and Deadwood, but unfortunately, they just caught him and disintegrated him. They're my key. More or less. <laughs> they're like, they're on, so. they're on, I'm, I'm watching them. They're honestly like a pack of wolves. They're just they're hunting, hunting Magnus down whenever he goes to the lane and just uh, yeah, giving him the full blown Falcon punch. And <laughs> goodbye, Magnus. Yeah, it looks like Good Clan Rejects are kind of trying to play a slower game here. Um, really, really trying to... We actually see a Shrunken Head. So in spite of what we mentioned with Shrunken Head being kind of weak to some of these ultimate abilities uh, on the Hellborn side, he does pick it up. And, uh, I, when we were having that conversation earlier, I actually did want to mention that though Shrunken Head does kind of feel weak to, like you said, the Seismic Slam, the the Willowmaker Punch, uh, the Undying. It actually is a pretty good pickup against some of these auxiliary abilities in the basic kit of a lot of these heroes. So, uh, Ra actually ends up dying, loses his first life, but he takes a South Forest ult. He manages to find a kill on Kinesis in the meantime. He's getting chased down, isn't going to be able to run away. So it's a raw for Kinesis kill, and I'm sure once again Big Eo crew are going to be happy to find that. But in the meantime, in the jungle, Puppet Master is able to shroud in and find a clean kill onto Sandwraith. So that's really the the big kill that came out right there. The the single core more or less from on on the Hellborn side is going to fall. Yeah, it was absolutely a huge gank from Puppet Master, who was obviously quite wary of where some of the Hellborn heroes were. So he thought, okay. Magnus is making a try onto Deadwood underneath this tier 2 tower. The Eruption Lava Surge is going to come out, and he is going to con connect the kill. So taking one back from the wolf that's been hunting him down the entire game. <laughs> but he is going to find himself dying to Rally and South Forest, when I am sure he feels pretty good about taking out Deadwood. I think he does, yeah. I think he's got a bit of satisfaction coming out from that gank, <laughs> especially as he killed him solo. Um, as if to give him a bit of a kind of like fuck human. Um, yeah, and, and, and when you look at it, um, you, you mentioned that he did take him out solo, and that's actually one of the things that I've kind of been noticing about Magnus, is he has kind of had a solo playstyle for about the last, like, five to ten uh, minutes, that is, and it's actually creating a lot of space for Arachna and Puppet to, you know, kind of get their farming job done, but Rally and and Kinesis are actually going to find Puppet Master here. You're the Pelt Seismic Slam is going to come out, but the Shrunken Head does get off, and he's able to walk away. So unfortunately, just a little mistiming there. They aren't going to be able to net the kill on the Puppet Masters. They did find him farming all alone. No, so yeah, that's where the Shrunken Head comes in. Really, really useful. Um, and we're seeing the benefits of that. I would, yeah, I would be quite keen to see him go for a gank again as soon as he has his ultimate available, um, because he's obviously got a bit of safety with the trunk and head. So when it's on cooldown, I would like him to see him use that. I just he play aggressive smoking. on the Sandwraith. Yep, he's smoking towards the top lane here. So there's, there's a chance he might find Sandwraith solo farming in the jungle, as that hero kind of tends to do, while the rest of the team, you know gathers up and, and completes objectives and just kind of waits for him to jump in. But uh, let's see what happens. He's actually turning his sights. He does shroud right here. I, they do seem to be aware of it. He did walk over the ward. The dust did come out, but Sane Wraith actually is going to get Voodoo puppeted on, but the Compel is actually on cooldown, so he wasn't able to sa save Sand Wraith, and Sand Wraith is going to fall, but Undyne comes out onto Puppet Master. Looks like he gets lifted. Puppet Master is going to get the... Uh, get killed as well but the lava surge eruption is going to come and finish off kinesis as well south forest taking a lot of heat here he's still standing somehow it doesn't eventually fall and now it's raw chasing down rally and rally is apparently going to be able to walk away so pretty big uh sequence of kills coming out for good clan rejects they do lose puppet but you know of course arachna is standing and they take out three on the other side Sandwraith and South Forest included. I think, yeah, I think, you know, the fact that Puppet got the solo kill on Sandwraith, I think was so useful. Um, stop Sandwraith for being there in the team fight. And I think if you're going to get a solo kill on Sandwraith with Puppet, it doesn't matter as much if you die, if that makes sense, because you're going to have your team respond. You're going to pick up an extra two, three, um, even potentially four kills. Um, not in this case, but, um, you know, they forced the rally buyback as well. So, yeah, Legion would be very, very happy. Oh, I, Rally bought back. I totally I missed that completely. Good catch. So yeah, they get even more out of that uh, 
out of that engagement. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. you're absolutely right. You know, Puppet Master, you know, he's a core himself, but he's, if he's able to take out the the enemy core in the midst of it, core for core, especially a hero like Sandwraith who wreaks so much havoc in the team fight, I mean, that's such an advantage, right? Team fight wise, oh, oh yeah, to his team. Definitely, especially with the null fire and the mana burn and all of that. Um, you know, yeah, it's uh, it's a threat they want to get rid of as much as much as possible. So I don't think they're going to mind sacrificing one hero for that. Yep, and I mean, Testy on Arachna is still, you know, a second uh, a second source of uh, sustained damage through a team fight. So. And I'm not really sure. He's got the Mighty Blade, so it looks like he's also going for a Shrunken Head. So it's it's going to be between Puppet and Arachna both having Shrunken Heads. You know, these ultimates are very powerful through that. You know, they do work through that item that the Hellborn has in their lineup. But, you know, now that you have two Shrunken Heads coming out uh, in what appears to be, you know, fairly soon... Uh, I, I imagine that you know they're not going to going to be able to take out both of these heroes with these shrunken heads up. So yeah, they're going to I have will... to split their uh, their ultimates. I'll just question you slightly. Do you think it's going to be a shrunken head, or do you think it's going to be a staff instead with the uh, Ooh, benefits on the, on you know, the spider? I, I actually forgot about that. I forgot about the fact that Mighty Blade does. You know, I saw that Mighty Blade, that lone Mighty Blade, and I just immediately thought shrunken head, but. <laughs> Yeah, staff could actually be a pretty interesting pickup. Um, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think that it's probably going to be a shrunken head. That that's, I'm like seventy percent certain it's a shrunken head. But you know, Testy could throw the curveball. I don't really know. <laughs> I think I'll agree with you. I think it'll be a shrunken head as well. But I thought I'd just mention that because there is potential for staff this game. Lowers the cooldown to 15 seconds, spawn spiderlings. It's just, yeah, it's a nightmare to play against Arachna with the staff, especially as a melee hero as well. So, yeah, we could see it, but I think Shrunken Head's probably going to be a little bit more likely, as you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think Staff Arachna is actually a really fun one. Um, especially, you know, Testy, Testy plays, you know, historically he is a, an RTS player. Um, so he definitely knows how to, you know, kind of play in multiple spots on the map at once, right? So I think that he actually could get work done with uh, with the staff of the master on Arachna. Uh, I really, really want to see it now, actually. I believe in the past when he's played Arachna, I think I have seen him purchase the staff then. So I think going for staff is something he's going to be quite comfortable with anyway. Um, so yeah, there is uh, that option available, but. Just have to wait and see, really. He's only got 1,300 saved up, so he's quite far away from both items. But, um, yeah, just have to give it about 5-10 minutes and we'll find out. Yeah, I mean, and I haven't really been eyeing down his uh, item purchases too much, so he, he could have another couple of pieces of it in the, in the stash. Not really sure. But um, taking our eyes away from Arachno, we've got 2,200 gold saved up on Raw. Do you think we're going to see the PK that we both agreed that we'd like to see? I do, yeah, I do think so. I think it's the most valuable option for his next pickup. I don't really see anything else coming out just yet. Um, I think PK, PK into sheep possibly. I think that would be the way to go. But uh, yeah, PK would be would be massive. I agree with you. I think that sheep would be would be pretty valuable. Let's just another source of catch on their team, especially with how good of a frontliner Raw is. Um, he absorbs a lot of spells in order to be brought down. Um, Especially, you know, I, I, I was talking about, I didn't get a chance to mention it, uh, just because of, you know, other things happening, but uh, I really do like the Nullfire pickup against Raw. Obviously, you know, if, if you are able to burn the mana bar of Raw, he responds with far less HP after coming out of his uh, ulti respawn. But uh, on that note, if you are committing sand race damage into Raw, I mean, that's pretty much what good clan rejects would be looking for right especially given the fact that they have puppet master and arachna in the back line this invis rally is actually going to get caught he walks underneath the rev ward here he is going to get just completely murder balled <laughs> murder balled <laughs> your phrases are uh, yeah definitely cracking me up today um appreciate yeah, so, that so that... hope the viewers <laughs> feel the same way <laughs> sure sure some of them do 
Um, but yeah, no, that gives them a free Congo. Uh, how Warner going to take Congo with South Forest tanking it as well? So yeah, two Congos probably coming out. Um, if we just look at South Forest, obviously has the PK. Um, what do you think South Forest is going to go for next? Do you think it's going to be a sheep stick like we kind of mentioned earlier, or do you think he may go for something different? I think that sheep stick has quite a bit of value this game, uh, especially given the fact that uh, Puppet and Arachna, yes, they have they have shrunken heads, but you know, well, yeah, I, I think I still think that sheep is the right item. It's just a, another source of catch on top of his uh, on top of his PK. Now, Arachna can remove it with the hardened carapace, and obviously it's not going to be going through Shrunken Head. The Sandray Thulti actually is going to come out, but it looks like it's more of a scouting utility here. Yeah, just kind of curious where the uh, where the Legion lineup is uh, positioned across the map. Yeah, it gives, but... them a bit of, gives them a bit of space to farm the enemy woods. Um, for Big Ego Crew to farm the enemy woods, push bot lane. Rally is actually going to get caught. I missed that until the very end. It gets caught right in front of the 2 of three tower, so... That's a pretty big kill leading into potentially uh, a tier three tower push. Uh, it looks like they're pr probably going to be making moves on this tier two top tower, uh, just based off of what I'm seeing position wise. But Deadwood actually is going to punch uh, Puppet Master and pop his shrunken head, forces Puppet to do the same, and they're just going to walk away from each other after that. Yeah, we do see, just looking at Arachnid, we do see the Shrunken Head picked up on her. So, yeah, they start with the Master. Unfortunately, um, playing slightly more defensive with the, the Shrunken, but uh, yeah, very valid. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, I mentioned, or that I kind of missed just now, is that uh, Raw actually picked up an Ultor's Heavy Helm. So he actually doesn't go the PK route uh, that we kind of said we would like to see him go, but they are making moves on this uh, tier 3 top tower now. The Hellborn lineup is fully resurrected. Sandwraith yeah. is in base right now. Yeah, so with the old tools, gives him a bit more armor, um, more ability to block, block 40 damage at 100%, um, which is greater than Helm with the Black Legion. So, yeah, it is nice, but like, as we said, I think PK would have been slightly more effective. But um, yeah, he can tank the towers with a greater extent, he can tank a bit more physical damage, so not a bad choice anyway. I think it's also not a bad choice uh, against these sand, these Sandwraith Illusions. I think the deflection is actually going to show up uh, pretty well against Sandwraith Illusions. But Pup is actually getting lifted by Kinesis right now. It's kind of a split fight going on right now. Magnus is getting focused by Lord South Forest. The Arcane Bomb is going to come out, clear out some Illusions. Magnus is the first to fall to rally, but we've got Sandwraith who does end up getting picked off by Ra and Arachna. And Arachna gets Compel Stunned into a Seismic Slam here. He's getting pretty low, but... Rally is going to die as well. Arachna is able to keep walking away from Deadwood and South Forest. No, South Forest and Deadwood are actually going to take him out. And in the meantime, I missed. I feel like there was another part of that uh, fight that I missed, but it was pretty spread, so it was kind of hard to keep track of. Puppet ended up dying. Yeah, so Sandwraith was chased up the cliff. Um, Arachna got the kill on to Sandwraith, tried his best to juke. Um, but yeah, Puppet Master was also killed by uh, yeah, Lord and, uh, <coughs> and so on. Deadwood, yeah. I see. So in the end, it's a three for three. So, I mean, was that even? Did one team come out on top? It's kind of hard to say, for me at least. It's difficult to say. I think it was probably even. I was... I would say it's even. Um, Sam Wraith died, Puppet died, uh, Arachna died, Sam Forest was absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, probably probably slightly even, maybe slightly in favor of Big Ego Crew. But um, yeah, I'd say it was about 50 50 50. Okay. Fair enough. So we've got 3k gold. I'm really, really curious to see what South Forest decides to go. He does have 3k gold saved up. There's another 3k gold saved up on Arachna. Looks like the Hellflower has been started uh, on Puppet with the Arcana pickup. Yeah. Um, Hellflower. And a heart. A heart has been started on Raw. So, how do you feel about this heart pickup? The heart pickup I like. Obviously, just makes it a lot tankier. Um, 
Gives him the ability to frontline, take loads of damage, take as many ultimates as possible, and then give Puppet Master and Arachnid the space to do as much damage as they possibly can. Um, I think Heart is great. Still want to see a PK, but yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to see it, unfortunately. Um, He's definitely running out of inventory slots at this point. <laughs> <laughs> he is, yeah, unless he wants to trade the, uh, the vestments, but um, yeah. Uh, the wind don't... whistle. I'd say the wind whistle for uh, wind sure. Whistle. Yeah. Um, well, I think the I think the mini missile is still quite bad. Is like Magnus is getting gone on in the top lane. Pops his void, but unfortunately the Kinesis lift is there. Followed by the lava surge, he is going to be just taken out very very quickly. As Raw yeah. and Puppet Master are pushing this bottom tower, and it looks like they're probably going to have a good chance of taking it out, considering that Sandrace old was consumed. You find that kill onto Magnus, but Deadwood actually goes pretty aggressively onto Raw. He needs a Voodoo Puppet. Barrier Idol Shrunken is going to come out. A quick Puppet kill is going to be found, followed by a Raw. Ultimate is consumed, so now Raw is in a lot of trouble, completely surrounded, isolated. He does end up getting a kill onto, onto Deadwood, who was pushing very, very aggressively with very low HP, but it looks like Raw is going to end up dying, so that's a three for one, more or less, uh, if you count the Magnus pick off in the top lane. Coming out in favor of Big Ego Crew, so Big Ego Crew saying that uh, they are not out of it by any means. I mean, the gold advantage does go in favor of Good Clan Rejects right now, but all things considered, and especially if you look at the the net worth between both teams, I mean, 4K gold is really, really a small lead. Uh, it is, yeah. They'll they'll definitely take the three kills um, for one. Although I am a bit surprised that Volker decided to suicide <laughs> on Deadwood. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to sit here and question him. He probably had his reasons. Um, yeah, so three for one, um, picking up the cores, core puppet and the core ra. Um, and yeah, it's uh, something they will be extremely, extremely pleased with. The Sapphoris, as we kind of mentioned a minute ago, he has some, has some items in his stash. I would be quite keen to see, to find out soon uh with regards to what he's going to purchase do you think it's going to be a sheep stick or do you think it's going to be something a little bit more defensive um i think it's a sheep uh given the fact that he has like as you pointed out he does have appeared to have been storing some items in his stash i imagine he's probably bought a luminous prism or a acolyte staff at this point but i could be wrong yeah um I think Sheep's probably the best option. Um, just gives them, gives them that catch to hopefully catch the Puppet Master or the Arachnid before they use a Shrunken, um, pick this off quickly, and uh, yeah, then progress on to other targets. So yeah, Sheep would be fantastic. Uh, Sam Rain has 2,050 gold saved. He does have a Firebrand, so Geometer's Bane is likely to be picked up. Uh, Another pretty, thing, I... we didn't really mention this at all, but you know, Sandrith is actually carrying a Bound Eye, which I think is really really nice i mean it allows him to basically not allow puppet to find those pickoffs on him which he did manage to find uh, the tier three tower here in the mid lane is taking a lot of pressure uh from the arachnid puppet able to just chip it away very very cleanly um from downhill because of the uh the true strike true sight true strike excuse me on precision so, yeah, I like, yeah. I, I like what they're doing. I like the fact that they're pressuring mid tower. Um, it looks like it is probably going to fall fairly soon. Uh, the Rackner with the true like as you say, is uh, very effective, and he does chuck out the spider sting onto Rally, which is killed, killed relatively quickly. Um, but yeah, Rackner has a dance of blades, looking to pick up the wing bow, and the tower does fall down. Initiation coming out from South Forest. A big frostfield frost plate slow is going to come out to start off the fight. Shrunken heads on Puppet Master and Arachna have been used. They've got to play very, very defensively. Arachna is going to get caught by a lava surge. Gets tableted out. Magnus with the follow-up stun. Arachna still hanging on. The Sandwraith ulti is going to look to finish off Arachna and Puppet Master. Both the cores for the clan rejects are out of the fight. Magnus getting pursued very, very heavily right now. Looks like he's not going to be able to live. It's a 4-4-1 exchange in favor of big ego crew big ego crew making a statement here now trying to push down this mid lane in return that's the saying yeah. take our tier three tower we take your racks full power of the samurai obviously and uh yeah in that fight i like how how well initiated i like how they jumped into the pk in the forest because they do go going on to raw but raw just a little bit too tanky but you know, not really doing much more other than posturing right now. Um, 
Although, Big Eagle Crew does turn around, takes her sights off of the Tier 3 tower, and decides to go and look to take the Hellborn, the Legion Kong. So looking to get a token going into 40, 43 minutes into the game. Um, I mean, I how secure it... is this token pickup? Do you think they're going to be able to get... They're obviously going to get this Congor, but the question is what's going to happen at Hellborn Congor once the Legion side is resurrected? I think I think they'll be able to get the token. I think Legion might try to force a team fight if they are aware that Hellborn are taking the second Congor. Um, but yeah, there's no reason why they shouldn't go for it. I mean, the division that they can place. If they do ward and come toward everything, then it should be okay. Um, Legion's initiation isn't quite as effective as Hellborn's, so if they do approach, you've got a South Warriors that can jump in and you know, be fully in their face with the frost, Frostfield Plate and uh, the Barrier Idol. And then you've got Deadwood to follow up on top, so I think Hellborn should feel quite secure about taking it, but um, when they choose to take it is uh, yeah, what we're going to find out. Yeah, Magnus and uh, Ra were kind of smoking towards the Congor, but uh, Sandwraith ulti is going to spot out everybody, as Sandwraith actually... The real reason for that Sandwraith ulti was that he was pushing onto the Puppet Master and finds that kill onto him, and narrowly escapes Aluna and Arachna, but the damage has been done. Puppet Master has been killed, no buyback, and so now it looks like Big Eagle Crew is going to be able to secure this Kong. And I don't think Good Clan Rejects can answer. The Puppet Master's dead, they don't have anything to counter it with. So that'll be a token on Sam Wraith, then they're probably going to push, I imagine, and try and take Rax, maybe completely finish the game. I don't know how confident they're feeling. But I do want to touch upon Sarforius, who has picked up the Staff of the Master with the upgrade as well. Um, so he has, he has upgraded the Sandwraith, and we do see a Staff on himself. So, yeah, very interesting pickup. That was an angle that we missed, but it does appear to be very, very effective. And I'm sure that Staff of the Master upgrade on Sandwraith came into play to find that kill on the Puppet Master. Yep, so we see the token on Sandwraith. Um, I think when you get staff on Sandwraith, it just really amplifies what the hero can do. The the fear on the carries that have shrunken head is so invaluable, really. Um, does a lot against Magnus as well, and with an fire blade, he's going to be burning mana on every hero. So, yeah, staff is fantastic. He has Sandwraith as well, lots of HP, um, adds bonus to his ulti. So I I don't have any complaints against that pickup, really. I think. Um, yeah, now with the token, Sam Wraith with the upgraded ulti, I think they're going to be ready to uh, yeah, take another team fight. So, we saw Sam Wraith, he just finished his Hyper Crown upgrade. Uh, looks like he's saving, saving money for buyback. Actually, is going to pop the ulti here, and is going to go on to the Luna, find a quick kill on the Luna. There's nothing that the Luna can do to stop that. So, starting off this next engagement as a 4v5, Puppet Master is just going to get completely annihilated by Deadwood and Rally. The two wolves on the hunt again are going to find their prey. And now it is a three versus five as Big Ego Crew is staring down this first set of Raxes in the bottom lane that they would like to take. T yeah. The tier three tower is already on half HP. Can't, big, can't good clear and rejects do anything to stop it? I'm going to say not really. Um, they're going to want to try and buy time for the other two teammates to spawn. I uh, do see a buyback. Raw taking a lot of pressure, but uh, he is very, very tanky. Rotten Grasp actually is going to connect onto Arachna, but Melee Barracks is just getting gone on. It is going to fall. Hellstun is going to find his way onto Arachna, undying as well. Seismic Slam just doing so much damage to Arachna. Rally, a decent eruption coming out for Magnus, but Rally is end up, going to end up falling. Magnus is going to fall as well. Puppet Master, 15 seconds till he respawns. Raw, gonna tank. Actually, that is his second life. I didn't notice when he died the first time. And now yeah. that oh, you, uh, you it as well. and now that Arachna and Magnus are dead, I mean, there's a buyback coming out on Raw. Puppet is going to join the fray, but with this Khan buff and only three heroes being alive for Good Man Rejects, Raw is going to go in very, very aggressively. Is going to land a big slow. Deadwood's going to be the first to fall. Salforus able to start walking away. The pursuit is going to stop. Sandray jumping back in. Going to find a quick kill on the Puppet Master. And it looks like this is going to secure the second set of Raxes. And this might be GG. 
Yeah, I expect the support to concede now that the Raz needs to buy back and tied again. Um, two racks are down, I think. Yeah, there we go. All right, so big Eco Crew evening up the series here in game number two. It is one to one as we go into the best of the third match of this best of three grand finals of Han OMG cycle number six. Yeah, really good game. Very entertaining. Um, how Warm took the team fights when they needed to. They got the farm on the sand wraith in the end, and when the staff pickup came, it was yeah. Legion couldn't do anything about it, so just came to that kind of staff pickup, really, getting some nice, nice kills onto Puppet. Um, Nullfire played fantastic against you know Magmus and Ra, and you know kind of negating their effect, and yeah, just kind of synergized really well in the end, which is uh, what led them to victory. Absolutely, I like that uh, that synopsis there. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. We're going to be back after a short break. Game three coming right up.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the third and decider match of the finals for Han OMG cycle number six. If you're just joining us, we just saw Big Ego Crew even up the series against Good Clan Rejects after a back and forth game two. I'm Easy Full Clan, going to be joined here by BKB and Chill. So, BKB, now that we've seen both teams trade blows between these first two matches, what are our expectations leading into the, into the concluding match of the series? Um, I would like to see another entertaining game, first of all. Uh, the first two games have been fantastic to watch from a spectator point of view. But yeah, I think it could go either way. Um, we do know that Big Eager Crew do have the server advantage playing on EU. Um, so yeah, it's going to be, it's going to hopefully be a fun one. Um, Engineer is the first pick. So yeah, looking like a uh, good start for Big Eager Crew with regards to the drafting phase. Yeah, and we've saw again an Ophelia ban. An interesting Soul Reaver ban coming out from Big Ego Crew and Good Clan Rejects decides to opt for Magmus and Chipper ban. So I'm going to do my best, by the way, to try and abbreviate these team names um, as I go forward casting them. I'm, I'm actually getting a little bit exhausted uh, doing these three word team names over and over again. So I'm going to call Big Ego Crew BEC and Good Clan Rejects GC, yeah, GCR. <laughs> see if that works out. Nice, I uh, I like it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we don't see a Moira ban as of yet, so it'd be interesting to see if Moira is picked up, although it's probably unlikely with the Miraxis coming out as the first pick, maybe to kind of say, look, you know, if you want to pick Moira, we're going to take Miraxis. Um, so, yeah, I don't really see a Moira coming out for BEC, but uh, for GCR, I think uh, the Moira-Miraxis combination is um, something that has a lot of potential. So yeah, it will be interesting to see if Moira's left on the pool or whether she is picked this game. Definitely. I mean, I think she's a strong hero, um, even though she does kind of get countered in lane by Miraxis, but uh, I love your employment of the acronyms right away. So uh, let's see if I can follow <laughs> suit. I actually might have trouble remembering them, um, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. But uh, an electrician following that Miraxis pick on the other side, so. Electrician and Engineer are two scary heroes to see together on on one team, as actually Moira gets picked in response to Electrician, so... How do you like Moira against Electrician? Um, I like it in some respects, I don't like it in other respects. Um, I love the mana burn against the Electrician, I think that's a fantastic, you know, potential counter to Elec. Um, I love the ultimate against Engineer. Um, you know, negates quite a bit of damage if she can catch catch a few teammates when the engineer spawns his energy field. Um, the AoE ult is fantastic. AoE stun, sorry, the shards of Harkon is a fantastic spell. However, if Elec isn't stunned by it, he can purge his teammates. So it kind of works both ways. But overall, I think Moira is not really something you want to leave out. So I am quite happy to see it and quite happy they picked it. Yeah, I think that uh, Moira is certainly a top tier support pick. And uh, typically, we we see her picked up in almost every game that she's not banned uh, in the blind ban phase. So she hardly ever makes it to uh, to the second ban phase. But now we've got uh, an Aluna pick for BEC and Puppet Master picked out by GCR. So another Puppet Master game going to be you know two. This is two in a row now for uh, the Good Clan rejects. So. Yeah, they did also play Puppet Master earlier as well. Um, they played it with what you got playing Puppet, so I'll be interested to see if he plays it again. I suspect he may do because Rosaro didn't have the best Puppet game last game, so they may switch around the role for the uh, for the Puppet. Um, but yeah, Puppet, fantastic pick. Um, very, very good disabler, does lots of damage. Um, but I would like to maybe see what you got played instead because he is very comfortable on the hero and he proved that he was very good with it earlier today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we talk about... Uh, so one of the things that... One of the weaknesses that Electrician has is through long forms of CC, his tankiness actually isn't prevalent because if he can't recast Electric Shield, he he's basically just a, another strength hero. So I actually really like Puppet Master against Electrician. If you're able to get a good Puppet hold following a stun, uh, Puppet, excuse me, a Puppet show, not Puppeteer's hold, uh, he, he can really be brought down inside of that uh, CC window. And um, 
it, it has it's something that he actually can't purge from teammates as well he can purge the hold but he can't put purge the puppet show so i really really like this puppet pick against electrician definitely the only thing i'd be quite concerned of if an ele electrician picks up an ohm's wisdom on a frost field plate before 28 27 minutes into the game i think puppet it will nullify so much of his attack speed and his you know potential output for damage um because the greater attack speed he has the more rip flash procs that he can make so yeah in that sense elec when he does tank up he can be quite a nuisance for puppet but especially in the early game to you know mid game transition i think puppet does have a slight advantage with the cc effect um, that actually reminds me um, that you bring up uh, Gnome's Wisdom. Gnome's Wisdom is actually one of the best item counters against the burst window of Puppet Master. Yep. As it gives additional armor to the spawned Voodoo Puppet and magic armor to the target that he has the Voodoo Puppet attached to. It's just a really, really great passive uh, aura that just, like, it just has this dual function uh, to kind of negate or at least slow down that uh, voodoo puppet burst, which, you know, as you can, sometimes you can see it. I mean, it just gets one shot by the whiplash, uh, like out of a shroud, for instance. So oh, it's a really, oh, yeah. really neat item against puppet. Yeah, definitely. Um, Volker, who's probably going to be playing electrician, he loves to pick it up. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. It's such a good and really populated item at the moment anyway, that people seem to be picking up in even TMM games. So yeah, Gnomes does have its, uh, does have a lot of positives um very very common so we should be seeing it again this game the pebbles is picked up on to legion and then the gauntlet onto hellborn so that's going to probably be a pebbles against gauntlet matchup which i'm quite excited mm -hmm. to uh, to view that yeah talk about a classic uh strength melee versus melee uh, <laughs> mid matchup right but uh yeah. you know, touching on the bands uh bec goes ahead and gets out uh, arachna zephyr and oogie and on the other side, GCR bans out South Forest, Sandwraith, and Sir Bensington. So I think those are pretty typical bans. Um, outside of the Zephyr, the Zephyr ban, I always have to bring it up. The Zephyr ban is always, I just, I'm not so sure that hero is ban worthy. I'm not sure um, if you agree or not. It's a good, it's a good point. I think it has potential to be ban worthy, <laughs> but I wouldn't say it's a ban worthy hero. No, but I think with the way that um, GCR do run the Zephyr. Um, they do have quite a big threat with Testy playing it, and he does pick up um, lots of team items very, very quickly. Um, usually farms over 550 GPM. So he's always a massive threat, and it's just something that Legion with here is like Pebbles, Electrician, you know, Lunar Engineer with all the magic damage. I don't think they want to be fighting against a Zephyr who has like Barrier Idol. Plated Greaves, you know, because if they're using all their spells onto Zephyr, they're gonna, um, Hellborn are gonna turn and they're gonna, you know, get completely screwed. So, yeah. Final I... picks. Now, if I can just interrupt you, I'm sorry. About yeah, of course. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we've got a Malakin in the hands of Dutch Onage on Big Eagle Crew and Dragon being played by What You Got. So this is a very, very interesting, uh, two con two concluding hero picks here. Um, Malakin versus Dragon. How do you feel about Dragon? I have to say, I love the dragon pick. I think <laughs> I'm not too sure about the way he's going to item build this game. I don't know if he's going to go for more of a tanky presence, if he's going to buy more team oriented items, or if he's going to focus on that mock of brilliance build, pounding out the damage, the the DOT combined with his skill set, um, which is going to be very useful against the PK heroes like Pebbles, etc. Um, but I like it. I love the I love the fact it's going to be in the jungle, which is switching up how they're going to lane because they haven't picked a jungler as of yet today so yeah i think it's i think it's something that might throw legion off guard but i do i am a big fan of it and look at so we've already got you know some action brewing here we've got five man hero train from bec just invading the hellborn jungle here trying to take away some of these ca uh, camps away from dragon and uh you know gcr smells what's up and uh you know just quickly abandons the jungle and uh, I'm wondering what Dragon's going to do. So he's got his medium camp blocked here, which is a very, very important camp for um, for a Dragon player, um, as it's very closely tied to the hard camp, and uh, you can kind of work them both down together. Um, so I'm kind of wondering what he's going to do in response. Do you think he's going to switch jungles? or? Um, I think if he switches jungles, he's going to get chased and boxed out, but it looks like he might consider that. Um... 
I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not too much of a jungle player myself, but I'm sure that what you got does have a have a plan up his sleeve. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be to say this isn't something that he didn't. Uh, th that was unexpected necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's um, yeah, he's quite a versatile jungler. So I'm sure that even if he does get quite a bad start, I think he's going to be able to recover and um, yeah, hopefully have some impact in in this game. Absolutely. So we are going to see an aggressive tri lane trying to kind of punish this track, this uh, jungle pick. So, um, you know, the laning advantage does come out to BEC immediately uh, as they are going to put a, a lot of pressure on the puppet and Moira here in the top lane. So it's they're going to have to play very, very careful. Um, Testy is, pl is playing puppet. and We've got uh, Rosaro playing Moira. So. They're definitely going to be targets here in this early landing phase. And so it's kind of going to be up to what you got to try and uh, to maintain that balance of, uh, you know, the fact that they are kind of are giving up this top lane uh, in order to give him free farm on Dragon. Yeah, I just, um, well, first of all, I agree with what you're saying, but I would like to touch upon mid. I think whoever wins mid this game is going to swing a lot of momentum in the team's favor you think about what both heroes do they're pk initiators they can burst heroes very very quickly um pebble is perhaps slightly more of a threat because once gauntlet uses ulti he's slightly slightly nerfed but pebbles obviously has his combo and his spells available at you know a lot greater frequency gauntlet so, is getting flanked yeah. here by aluna and ng he's surrounded by pebbles and aluna and ng the keg stun stalagmites are going to connect is Gauntlet going to fall and find Bloodlust? Yes, Shorkan on Engineer is going to get the Bloodlust credit. So a quick kill before the first wave is even slain. Coming in favor of BEC. So a commanding lead. So weren't able to spot out that rotation with that uh, top lane, top rune uh, river ward. Yeah, so fantastic rotation. Something they maybe have considered Bill Wisslagen to be quite a threat from the mid lane position, especially when he plays a PK. PK initiator. So um, Moira just... is going to take some pressure from Engineer. He's going to get uh, he's going to get kegged, but able to just evade any more pressure. Throws up the shards of Harkon and walks away. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm right with you. Noob. Bilbo Swaggin, uh absolutely showed his efficacy as a mid player whenever he was playing Pebbles in that dueling uh, Pebbles game for sure. And now this time Sate has got Pebbles in return, so I'm going to try and turn it back on him. I would say. I'm sure he's looking forward to potentially shutting out Bilbo in the mid lane. His puppet taking a lot of heat uh, between an Engineer and a Luna, but there is no follow-up as they don't want to dive the tower. Yeah, definitely. I think now that the Legion did have the Bloodless, I would give the slight advantage to Pebbles. Um, but no, just kind of touching upon bottom lane, Electrician versus Paraxis. Very, very similar heroes. I think this lane is probably going to be extremely even. I can't see either hero killing the other. Um, Raxus has the potential to obviously stop the Electrician stun, if he can time it correctly, um, the grip, so yeah, and I think Electrician's, you know, got enough in him to to survive the Axis and the, uh, the pressure from Raxus, so yeah, I can see that lane being very even, I think it's going to be determined by the mid lane and uh, even the tri lane as well, and if what you got can get farmed, then, you know, perhaps that might turn it in their favour. Yeah, and on that... Uh... On that note of what you got trying to get farm, he actually is getting hunted down by Aluna and Pebbles. Aluna goes ahead and TPs to the bot tower and tries to take away the uh, the other jungle away from Dragon. So now Dragon is kind of forced to rotate back to his own jungle where there are, as we mentioned, two camps that have been blocked. But in the meantime, Puppet Master is taking a lot of uh, pressure here. He takes spells from Engineer and Malik and he's just trying to evade a couple more auto attacks. Isn't going to be able to do it. Ends up falling, but now Engineer taking a lot of pressure from Moira. Gets stunned by the shards of Harkon. Gets killed by the last auto attack, but now Moira may have to pay with her life for getting that kill onto Engineer. It's a two for one exchange. Yep, definitely in favor for BEC. Nice to always get a kill on to, early kill on to Malikun as well. Um, he'll be looking to purchase his boots, which makes him obviously harder to, harder to chase down if they do go for him, so. Yeah, Puppet Master also dying, suffering a little bit with their 185 GPM, but um, yeah. So we have seen him actually couple of kills. now, Moira and Puppet have both decided to TP in abandoned top lane, so a bit of a lane swap coming out here, but Electrician at level 5 probably isn't going to be very fearful of this uh, of this duel lane here, but in the meantime, Gauntlet getting stalagmites done in the mid lane, gets tossed back onto Aluna. 
Aluna going to finish him off with the power throw. And so Satellidium on Pebbles having the game that he wants versus Bilbo Swaggin. It's a grudge match in the mid lane. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely is, yeah. As a, oh, Draconis. Draconis, yeah, I missed it. Uh, gets power throw finished off by Engineer and Aluna. Aluna with the, with the kill credit, of course. It's a double tap for Aluna as he gets it very shortly after that uh, kill on the gauntlet, so. Yes, yeah, so already, oh, Aluna. Whew. Already four minutes into the game, they picked up a kill onto Puppet Master, two onto Gauntlet, which I am quite surprised at actually. Um, and then one onto Draconis. So, yeah, very, very good start from them. Um, Gauntlet, I, whether he can recover or recover and be an effective initiator this game. Gauntlet is, is going to hook Pebbles into the tower, but unfortunately just doesn't have any more follow up spells. But Pebbles has to play a little bit conservatively at the present moment as Gauntlet is getting mana back up and has is ready to combo again. So. Ah! Yeah. yeah, so so I was briefly touching on, you know, if Gauntlet shut down early, I don't know whether he has the oh, bot lane. Shards of Harkon are going to stun the Electrician, and now he's getting Puppet held. But uh, unfortunately, Moira was just positioned very, very aggressively, and actually going to get dropped by Engineer and Electrician, the duo. And so it looked kind of dangerous for Electrician, but, you know, just the fact that he's got the levels right now, that level 3 Electric Shield, really, really making him a tanky presence. So Stalagmite stuns... Stuns uh, Gauntlet in the mid lane. Extra damage coming out from the toss. He is going to get finished off by the power throw. And in the meantime, we have a dead Puppet Master coming out in the bottom lane as they are pursuing this Electrician. Dragon ports in, but unfortunately, they are not going to be able to get a counter kill. There was also a kill onto Puppet Master bot lane as well. Um, and let dive the tower with this grip engineer stun. All right, missed it completely, but Miraxis finds a kill onto Malakin in the top lane. So a very, very much needed return kill in favor of GCR. Uh, they were looking really, really strug like they were struggling. And the uh, hero kill count is kind of not quite evened up, but it's now eight to two as opposed to the eight and one as it was. Yeah, really big return kill. I'm not entirely sure how that happened, um, but yeah, well played from uh, Miraxis. I missed it too. I mean, in fact, it was completely unexpected. That's kind of why I missed it. Uh, I wasn't expecting Malakin to, to find himself in the trouble against Miraxis in the top lane. But, uh, you know, Math Pro doing what he does best. He's a very, very capable solo laner. That is absolutely certain. The Grip is going to come out on the Puppet Master, but the Shards of Harkon is going to cancel him. The Keg is going to push Puppet Master away. And Electrician posturing at low HP, but spells are down for the. Puppet and Moira, so they're not going to be pushing onto him. So a smoked Aluna is following this Pebbles in the mid lane. It looks like they're probably going to be trying to kill this gauntlet. Pebbles throwing the Slagmites. The Infernal Instability Speed is going to be able to get him away. Pebbles is going to get hooked into the tower. Gauntlet Blast is going to keep him there for a little bit, but he's tossed out right now. Dragon is going to fly in. He's going to throw down the throw down the volcano and keep pushing. Pebbles taking dot damage is very low. Gauntlet is going to end up getting the kill. Excuse me, it's Dragon that finds the kill. And Gauntlet uh, barely evades death from the power throw. Well played from Gauntlet. Um, managed to escape the stalagmites from Pebbles and then he just get the get the turn kill onto Pebbles, which is exactly what they wanted because Pebbles was, you know, above, uh, well, around the 350 GPM mark and Gauntlet was struggling. So, yeah, so kind of brought Gauntlet back into the game, who is now level 7, Pebbles at level 6. As there's actually Puppet Master getting gripped in the bottom lane, gets finished off by the Mind from Engineer, and they're pushing on this Moira under the tier 1 tower. Moira is going to fall as well. Yeah, nice dive coming out. That's the, the power of Electrician when you lane him with another, another double stun. He can just uh, dive towers, use his shields, you know, pretty much always survives unless he gets uh, fully turned on. So yeah, I like what they're doing. Loads of, um, loads of pressure which they're putting out, which is uh, great from the areas they've selected. So Puppet, Puppet and Moira are actually just finding having a, having a really difficult time finding a, a home for themselves in terms of the laning phase. They have ported back up to the top lane now. So they don't feel comfortable on that bottom lane against Electrician now. and. In response, I'm not sure. It seems like Malakin has some sort of a sixth sense T piece of the bottom lane at the same time. Yeah, some interesting rotations coming out. Um, the bot you got is now approaching 300 GPM, so he's not he's not recovering too badly at all. I think he is well. 
I'll ask you in terms of what you think Dracona should pick up first, as they are smoking into his woods. But in terms of what you think Dragon should pick up first, what do you think would be the best option? Well, hold that thought because it looks like he's going to be found out. He is going to get stunned by the keg and the Luna and finds himself a very quick death as he was farming on very, very low HP. Uh, well, it looks like he is going Ghost Marchers, which obviously synergizes with his passive as it's based off of attack damage, but I kind of expect a Shaman's Headdress to be his first item, as they are fairly magic damage heavy over there on the Legion side. So do you whether... think... Oh, I was going to say, do you think Shamans will come before Mock of Brilliance, or do you think he's going to look to? Malakin is going to tank the Gauntlet Blast and, and the Quake Stun, and they are going to find a very secure kill onto Malakin there in the bot lane. In the meantime, Moira is going to fall prey to Engineer as they take the mid-tier tower, as, tier 1 tower as well. Yes, smart play from Shawkan on Engineer. He walked into the enemy woods as uh, Satellitium was pushing the tower, used the energy field and um, slowly killed the Moira as Moira, Moira was coming to uh, potentially deny the tower. So yeah, heads up play. And we see a finish Gnome's Wisdom on Electrician now. Maraxis is going to find a lone engineer actually pebbles isn't is nearby but engineer is a little too low for his teammate to save him so they are going to find that pick off an engineer but uh i missed your question about uh specifically about dragon's uh, item progression so following the shamans what you were saying what do you think he's going to pick up so i was saying do you think he's going to go for shamans before a farming item such as mock of brilliance you think going the defensive route is best this game or do you think just going all out farm you know being quite greedy would be a potential option as well oh man it's actually really tough to say um when you pick a hero like dragon it's already a greedy pick so you almost feel inclined to go full greed but i mean as we've seen he has been taking a lot of pressure between uh just from the heroes roaming into his jungle i, I feel like he he doesn't feel safe to pull up 3400 gold for a sword of the high not so sure you feel the same way to be honest i would say with what your first suggestion was about the shamans that would be the best way um just so i kind of play devil's advocate a little bit there but um hey i know, agree completely i mean with... pulling up 3400 gold with this amount of pressure yeah. very very difficult exactly Pebbles yeah. takes a voodoo puppet in the top lane he's very very low but he is going to end up getting gauntlet blasted the gauntlet's going to finish him off with the gauntlet punch and a double kill is going to, well, the other kill on Aluna goes to Testy on Puppet Master, but it's a double kill for the team. Fantastic. And that's what they needed, for sure. Yeah, fantastic rotation from Gauntlet um, with the haste rune. I like the fact that with his ulti, he managed to catch the Aluna as well. Um, that's one of the brilliant effects of it. If you do manage to uh, ulti one and there's another hero standing behind, you can catch the second. So uh, yeah, two really valuable kills. Yeah, absolutely. The the incapacitate from the Gauntlet Blast is like, yeah, it's a very very kind of overlooked mechanic from the spell, but it uh, it can really be like, it can just caught, catch people at the at the wrong moment sometimes, and you're just kind of screwed if you do get hit by it. Yeah, I believe it's a four second four second hold. The energy field is going to catch Maraxis. Maraxis walks out of it. He gets slowed by the sword throw and the energy field. He gets tanks a pebbles combo to his death. Yeah, nice kill. Um, Raxus was the highest farmer, so yeah, they'll be really, really pleased to pick that up. And Pebbles is 230 gold away from his PK, so as they push the tower in, which they'll want to probably play quite aggressive on, he'll then have a PK and he'll be able to rotate, potentially look at the Puppet Master. Yeah, puppet Draconis. Master is getting gone on by Electrician and Luna on the top lane. They secure that kill, but Gauntlet is chasing very aggressively onto Electrician. Not so sure this is the ideal target, but Dragon is flying in. Going to throw down the breath. The Shards of Harkon are going to keep locking the Electrician down. The Mana Sunder is going to keep him from using his shield for a little bit longer, but he's still quite tanky, able to purge himself and run away. Dragon is going to fight the Volcano, throws out a breath, finishes off Electrician, is chasing down Aluna. Shards of Harkon are going to stun through the fog. Aluna in a lot of trouble here. The Mana Sunder is going to prevent him from catching the spell, and he is going to go down. But they do lose the Tier 1 tower in the top lane there. It's, it's crazy, going back to what we said, how tanky Electrician is with the Gnome's Wisdom. It's just, yeah, it's incredible. Um, he does have the Mana Boots, and actually Pebbles, you mentioned that PK was imminent, and it was found in his inventory there from the perspective of uh, Gauntlet, who tanks the combo to his death. 
So there is a PK on Pebbles right now, and a PK on Moraxis has been picked up. So two PKs, one for each side, is, are now in the game. Thunderclaw has been finished on on the Malakin. So Malakin having a very, very good time uh, farming-wise at this point. It's going to be able to comfortably do rotations through the jungle and very efficiently kill creep camps. If this if this game goes to late game, who would you give the advantage to between, let's say, if you had Draconis against Malakin, just as like a 1v1 fight, who would you give the advantage to in that aspect? Uh, oh, absolutely, Malakin. Uh, I mean, Draconis, okay. Matrix actually is going to be used. Engineer is going to be quickly killed by Maraxis, so a nice little heads-up play from Mathbro and Maraxis is going to find that kill onto Engineer. But uh, yeah, absolutely. In this game, against this uh, Legion setup, or Hellborn setup, Malakin, it's all Malakin in my opinion. Um, you know, one of the advantages that... Uh, so, basically, Dragon is... It's not very big burst hero, obviously. It's, it's a lot of sustained damage, and the, the damage that comes out from the Volcano actually is based on max HP, if I'm not mistaken. So, to that, ex to that extent, Malakin being a strength hero you know, kind of falls prey to that a little bit, but he is probably going to be picking up a shrunken head. And Aluna actually is getting gone on the mid lane. He's going to be quickly killed. Engineer is going to be in five man to his death. Murder balled, as we say. And yeah, so, so it's two for nothing. With the walls that uh, Moira replaced out in the mid lane, I think they knew exactly what Legion were trying to do, and they just set up for it and got some useful kills. Electrician has been killed, and uh, Aluna as well. So. Absolutely. Yeah, very, uh, very heads up plays, but like to say, something they were definitely aware of. So, yeah, I really, really like Malakin as the core carry, though, in this game. I feel like he counters most of the heroes, actually, on the Hellborn side. Um, you know, he's not an easy target for a Voodoo Puppet gank, as he has that, you know, natural magic armor, and he is kind of a high HP hero uh, to begin with. Uh, I feel like the only real advantage that they have against Malakin in this setup is the fact that they have some disables via Gauntlet that go through BKB. Yeah. So if you get uh, between that and perhaps an eventual Spike Bola, he might be. They might be able to find some pretty convenient kill windows on him. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point you say about the Spike Bola. Um, when you do have a call like Malakin, that's. Probably the best, in my opinion, counter to it. Um, and I've just noticed that there's an apprentice robe picked up from Maraxis, so he's going to be going straight into that Hellflower. Um, Hellflower is going to be fantastic. Doesn't matter who he Hellflowers, but um, anyone he silences is going to uh, yeah be quite uh, niche. So I like yeah, the Hellflower pick noticed... up quite a lot. Yeah, I think Hellflower is going to be excellent, and it's going to be just a another tool to try and prevent Malakin from having the ideal uh, setup. Uh, in, inside of a team fight, if you can jump on Mar if you can jump on Malakin before he's able to get a BKB off, which I mean, there's no doubt that he's going to be skipping or he's not going to be skipping BKB on Malakin, right? Like there, there's like a zero percent chance that happens. As Maraxis is going to jump on Engineer here at the rib at the bottom river, and Energy Field is going to come out, but that Engineer is going to end up falling. Yeah, just going back to what you were saying as well about the Hellflower. The only problem I kind of see with it is with the Electrician and the Purge, he can purge it straight away. So that's something they're going to have to keep an eye on. Um, but yeah, overall it is such a such an amazing item. So something you'd like to see on Number Axis. Yeah, and just for everybody, ever, so that everybody knows, there is an Engineer with a portal key. Uh, I don't think we had mentioned it quite yet. So that is in the game at this point. So, and then a yeah. second PK on Gauntlet finds its way into the hands of GCR. So, it's two PKs versus two PKs. So, both teams have that aggressive setup. And look at what Dragon's doing, by the way. Something that I said wouldn't happen, or that might be hard to, to see happening. We have a Dragon pulling up 3k gold and is looking to make progress towards a mock of brilliance. Definitely looks like it. Um, that's going to be fantastic. It's, I think, now that he's obviously got the gold for it, I think he just has to, yeah, just has to go all out and buy it. Um, oh, Congor kill, which I, uh, yeah. I missed. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I did see it. I, I just failed to mention it. I was I was listening to what you were talking about. But Pebbles in the bottom lane is getting jumped by Gauntlet and Amaraxis. This is way too much damage and way too much lockdown for him to survive between those two heroes, so... 
that's a big kill for them. So I feel like at this point, if GCR is able to find a kill on the Malakin, they're in a really, really good spot in this game, even though they have a slight gold and experience disadvantage. Yeah, we do see a sword throw from Malakin, but it, it, Maraxis it doesn't get away. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was going to say, with the Mock of Brilliance, um, I think if they're looking to go into a late game sort of um, stage with this, I think that is exactly what they need. I think if they're to go on... Go and build um, mobility items and you know, defensive items on Draconis. It kind of says, okay, you know, Legion, we can take this, take this into late game. We can get a shotgun head on Malakin. We can get as much farm as we need, and Draconis is not going to kill us. So, in that aspect, I like the fact that they are going for the mock, and um, yeah, we'll just see how it transitions. Yeah, I mean, now that mock seems to be an inevitability um, for Draconis, you know, they're going to have that second damage source, so they are going to be more or less running a pretty solid dual core lineup versus the Malakin. Um, you know, as long as they're able to keep Pebbles down, he's probably not going to be able to comfortably get anything past Spell Shards for quite a while, but on the same... On the other hand, we have an Electrician who is starting to make progress towards a BKB, so Electrician is going to be a bit of a presence here as well, so... Though he's not a true core, he is going to be making a presence, that's that's for certain. Jump onto Malakin. I missed it completely, but Malakin actually is able to get the possession off and is able to buy some space for him. He is going to end up getting stunned by Mora, but and the axe throw is going to finish him off. Engineer is going to find a kill onto Dragon, so a very, very big kill onto Dragon found by Pebbles and Engineer. So they trade core for core there, but the fight doesn't look like it's quite over yet. Pebbles is out for blood. He is going to find that stun onto Maraxis. The hook is going to pull Maraxis away from the keg stun. The, the Quake is going to miss on Engineer. Arcane Vortex is going to be able to buy them the space to basically escape and conclude that engagement. Yeah, so it's a good initiation on Samalikan. Um Maraxis and Gortnir jumped to use everything. He managed to ulti, he then escaped with a sword throw, and then Maraxis did finish him off with Moira. So, nice kill on Malakin, and then obviously Draconis was picked up as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a really, really nice axe snipe through the trees there. A, like, max range. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, like it was. That one. Definitely was. Yeah, so we see the uh, Maraxis is. He's got 1,700 saved up, so he is progressing quite quickly towards his Hellflower. 400 GPM, which I'm quite surprised. I'm not sure where he's got the farm for that, but then I do look. Engineer and makes an attempt, ends up tanking the Gotten Blast, is kind of reaping, uh, feeling bad about making that jump, but Gauntlet actually taking a lot of pressure from Malakin, but Malakin getting Buddha Pup, but it is going to get dropped by Dragon. So it's a two for nothing there. They weren't able to get that kill on the gauntlet, so a bit of an ambitious jump for, uh, for an engineer as the, the keg stun is a pretty delayed stun uh, that has to follow your PK initiation. Yeah, so they get two kills, obviously getting the mana cut and the tower, which is fantastic. But no, I was just saying with the Raxxas being 400 GPM, I'm quite surprised because he... But well, I look at his kills, he has five kills, five for one, but um, yeah. I, uh, I like the fact that he's getting quite close to Hellflower, although I am quite surprised he's managed to pick up the farm for it. Yeah, I mean, he is uh, more than two-thirds of the way uh, to his Hellflower at this point. Pebbles... They are looking for this Pebbles. Whew. I wonder... They're not going to find him. No way. Oh, don't... Don't do it, Pebbles. <laughs> don't, don't give yourself away. <laughs> but, uh... Keeping our eye on that, um, one thing we should notice is that Mock of Brilliance has been finished on Dragon, so he is undoubtedly going to be getting more and more farm as this game progresses. He's going to be having a very, very strong uh, farming foundation to lead into some other items. So speaking of, uh, you know, follow-up items to that Mock, what would you like to see on, on Dragon at this point? Um, definitely Shrunken Heads, definitely Frost Field Plates. Um even demonic possibly uh just for the attack speed buff for uh for himself and his team but um yeah i think frostfield demonic trunk and head would be my go-to choices possibly How something, about something like a heart uh yes and no i like the fact that it obviously gives him a lot more tanky potential but i think there are better choices i think if he wants to tank up just you know stacking stacking armor on himself um would be slightly more 
beneficial in my eyes, just based on Malikan's attack damage. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, well, then I think about it. Malikan is obviously going to be building a hyper crown, so my mistake is going to be magic focused. Um, so yeah, I think Heart could be fine, um, but I would like to see something a bit more team orientated. Yeah, I actually really, really like the uh, Frostfield pickup against a hero like Malikan. Uh, you know, we mentioned the how Spike Bola is, you know, one of those ideal items to have in your inventory against the Malikan, but Frostfield plate is also excellent as well, considering how much he's invested into an attack speed build at this point, as he is going for the full Hyper Crown before he finishes another item, and it also um, kind of counters very directly the attack speed bonus that he gets from Hellborn Zeal, so... I do like Frostfield Plate a lot, and uh, it, it doesn't necessarily block too much damage from some of those other heroes on the uh, on the Legion side, as they are pretty magic damage heavy. Uh, that's kind of why I asked you about Heart, because, uh, or even, you know, we do we did mention Headdress. I mean, do you think Headdress is worth it at this point, or should he, you know, if he's worried about magic damage, does he just go into BKB? I think he just has to go straight into Shrunken Heads. Um... Headdress, yes, it's got some potential, but I think there's so many disables from Legion, I think Shrunken Head is probably the only way forward. Okay, makes sense to me. But uh, yeah, so Shrunken Head and, and Frostfield Plate seems to make a lot of sense uh, for the Dragon pickups. Uh, so. I, I would love to see a Barrier Riser onto Gauntlet. I would love to yeah, see that pick up just to give his team more survivability. And then, uh, you know, if a hero is caught, if he pops the barrier, then, um, you know, he's got a lot of potential to keep them alive. And it reduces his um, disable, the amount of time that he's disabled from Legion stuns. So, yeah, barrier would be quite nice in Gauntlet, but then so would, so would a Health Lower, so would a Shrunken. Um, he doesn't have the Mighty Blade, so he's going to go for that BKB as well. Right. And uh, yeah, there's about 2,700 gold that was saved up on Gauntlet. Uh, he spent a little bit of it, so I'm not really sure what... Uh, he spent about 900 of it, I think. I'm not sure what he... Ah, he's also going for his own Shrunken Head, so... Skipping over that Barrier Idol suggestion that uh, that you laid out, uh, I do, which I do agree with. Uh, but BKB doesn't seem too bad for Gauntlet as well, who is probably going to be a main initiator uh, alongside Maraxxus for the Hellborn, so... And speaking of Maraxxus... Um, 3k gold at this point this looks like a finished hellflower if that is the direction that he's taking yeah um he's just about to buy it now i believe as you say 3k gold so yeah, i think he's buying it at the outpost yeah or... okay maybe not not yet i'm not really sure what's happening but he hasn't bought it yet um there's a bound eye on puppet though as well what's that uh bound eye for um <laughs> Interesting. I, I'm quite surprised they have placed it onto Puppet. I imagine it's just so they can do obviously a bit of de-warding de -warding in, inside the jungle. Um, as we can see, there's no Assassin Shroud picked up, picked up onto Legion. So yeah, it's probably just for kind of a defensive reason. Um, trying to count as many wards as possible and uh, yeah. There's the finished Hellflower Armor Axis. And yeah, we do see a, a, you know, on the flip side, we see an Electrician also carrying a Bound Eye, but you know, there's there's no secret as to why that is, you know, because there is a Shroud Puppet in the game, as well as, as you just mentioned, the, the counter warding potential. Uh, it's a very, very convenient thing to have whenever you're talking about counter wards. I mean, it just, in the long run, uh, it can just save you so much gold uh, in terms of, you know, trying to wrest control of the map away from your, from your enemy. I think, yeah, as soon as you see a Puppet Master pick up a Shroud, grabbing an eye at the same time is the most useful way to uh, right Meanwhile now. though, watch out Electrician, you might lose that bound eye as you actually get jumped on by Maraxxus and Dragon and they do find that quick kill onto Electrician. In the meantime, Gauntlet does fall prey in the bottom lane to Pebbles, Malakin, and Engineer but they do lose a bound eye by losing that Electrician so and it looks like they just went ahead and killed it instead of trying to keep it as they do have one of their own. Yeah, no reason to keep it, so it makes sense that they did kill it. But yeah, speaking of the Hellflower from Maraxxus, who do you think is the priority target for using that Hellflower on when it comes to, let's say, a 5v5 team fight? Well, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, you mentioned that Electrician is able to get rid of it on a teammate with Cleansing Shock. And the fact that Electrician, you know, one of the things I talked about with Electrician is he is more or less... 
He's very weak if he's not able to recast Electric Shield, and he does have a BKB of his own right now, so I really feel like they need to try and make a statement and jump on this Electrician with that Health Hour. Well, I mean, what do you think about that? I would say the same. I think Electrician should be Health Hour every single fight. Shut him down. Um, try to eliminate him from the team fight, and uh, yeah, just go straight on to the other heroes. But um, as you say, with the Clinton Shock, it's such a valid tool to pur purge the Health Hour on a teammate, so... I think going for Elec is the best way forward. I agree completely, and we're actually... Watch out, Pebbles, you're getting shrouded on by Puppet Master, and he just gets sniped. His health bar just disappears because of the Voodoo Puppet. And that was like 90% of his HP in one stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has no vestments, no Shaman's headdress or anything, so the, the magic damage transitions onto the uh, Voodoo Puppet is uh, going to wipe him out pretty quickly. So... We've got BEC over here, though. In spite of uh, losing Pebbles right now, they are not... Uh, the Good Clan Rejects are not aware that they are taking this Congor kill, or maybe they are and just opting to take their own. So it looks like we're probably going to have a Congor trade here. 28 minutes into the game. Uh, that is the second... going to be the second Congor kill for both sides. So, yes. Yeah. Um... I like the fact that Hellborn are taking Congor now, especially with uh, Pebbles dead for another 10 seconds. It gives them room to take it, even though Legion have taken theirs. And it stops it stops Legion because Pebbles is dead. It stops Legion pushing towards going for that token as well. So uh, yeah, smart play to go for Congor. Um, and we now see a Shrunken Head on Draconis as well. Yeah, and so now we see Shrunken Head has, come, has been completed on Gauntlet. He's got it coming out right now. Malakin finishes his own Shrunken Head. A PK has been picked up on Electrician, which I really, really like. Uh, we were talking about how Electrician is the prime candidate for the Hellflower Maraxis to jump, as he can do a lot as, in terms of taking away that survivability from Electrician. But if Electrician is able to lead the fight and jump in with the PK and hold my words, as he might get jumped on right now by four heroes from GCR, they are trying to go on him. Hellfire does come out, but the possession Malakin with the BKB is going to prolong his life, but he does eventually fall. Arcane Vortex is going to be able to serve save Moira for a time. Pebbles in the backland is getting, there's just so much carnage. Malakin is going to fall in the, in the, in the front line. Good Clan Rejects very, very decisively winning that fight, only losing Moira. The synergy in there the from of that. The synergy there from GCR is you <laughs> is what I like to name them. Um, yeah, yeah. Syn <coughs> synergy from GCR was fantastic. I liked the way they boxed out the Malakin, so Malakin was left alone, and they had enough damage to uh, to take him down, even though Mal Malakin was in lots of lots of DPS. Um, and yeah, just really well, really well coordinated. Pebbles was caught out, and uh, yeah, so he was he was uh, out of position. Um, but no, nicely played, especially from uh, Draconis as well, doing uh, enough damage to take down the Malakin with uh, the Axis and uh, Puppet. Yeah. So this is just a shrunken head game. We have got five shrunken heads in the inventories of all between all players in the game. Three on the side of GCR, two on the side of BEC. I mean, wow. Um, safe to say. We're going to have some kind of long engagements, I would say, and I hope I can keep up. <laughs> and some of these engagements are really, really hard to keep track of. But uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that we've got five shrunken heads, you know, th there's going to be some uh, core heroes kind of lingering around through some of these fights for quite a while, I would say. Mm -hmm, definitely. I think the team fights are going to go back and forth. I think it's probably going to be a 50 to 60 minute game. But yeah, we'll soon find out. Um, I do kind of hope it is quite a long game because it, we've got potential to see how Malakin works against the Puppet and the Draconis. But I think if it goes super, super late, I would have to give the advantage to the uh, the double core and the Hellborn. Yeah, absolutely. And we do see a Mystic, uh, excuse me, an Acolyte Staff is picked up by Dragon. So he is going to be making progress towards that Frostfield Plate, as we predicted. Pebbles kind of... Trying to, I, I don't really know what Pebbles is up to here in the bottom lane. Just you know, very, very patiently, just sitting here in the trees, um, 
Is this what you want to see from Pebbles? I, I would like to just see some more farming from Pebbles. I feel like he, he really needs to I, just kind of yeah. make some progress towards that next core item. I'd ra yeah, I'd agree. I'd rather see him farm his Shrunken Head um, as quickly as he can. But I like what they're trying to do. They're trying to set up with the Pebbles, bring the TPs in, and then uh, uh, Pebbles again. actually might get found out. Gauntlet is actually going to run into Engineer, but makes quick work of Engineer. He's trapped in the energy field right now. Pebbles jumps onto the Gauntlet, but Gauntlet jumps away. And Electrician is Hellfire right now, gets the shrunken head off, is able to make some, get some distance with the Cleansing Shock as he is very fast, but Draconis ports after him. The Quick Stun is going to miss off of Moraxis. Power throws come in, throwing in a little bit of damage, but Electrician is very, very low. Pebbles coming back in, is going to find a double stun onto Moraxis and Gauntlet. Arcane Vortex is going to catch Pebbles, but Pebbles is completely surrounded. Tanks the Voodoo Puppet to his death. Yeah, unfortunately. So it is a three for nothing. So yep. good clan rejects really, really securing this game here and the best of the final match of the best of three. It's just the coordination is a lot better. Um, unfortunately, the best mid player and the best team was caught out on his own at the end, so he was taken down. But um, yeah, so much damage coming out from the Draconis, Puppet Master, even practicing with his Hellflower. And uh, yeah, I don't think Nidra really handed it at the moment. See another PK, so three PKs. Mora has a PK of her own now. So three PKs versus three PKs, three Shrunkens versus two Shrunkens. There's a lot of items coming out in this game. Yeah, Manikin is going to be under a lot of pressure to carry this game. Um, Electrician is getting picked off. Uh, Engineer is getting picked off very quickly. He's, you know, he's the one that's dealing so much of the damage. Um, because as I say, the other heroes are getting picked off very quickly. And we <coughs> do see a philosophy of plate picked up on two Draconis, which is something we discussed and something we both really like. So that's going to be a really valid uh, item for them. So, you, it was a good point that you put, brought up the uh, the Frostfield plate. It's going to be fantastic versus Malakin. I mean, so now that Malakin, you know, he's making progress towards his next item, what do you think it's going to be? Well, uh, we just, just found the answer. Yeah. <laughs> just see the five brands, so it's going to be a job into Spain. Um, I like it. I like the attack speeds you get from it. I like the extra move speeds. You know, it gives you a bit of HP and stats and everything. Um, it's obviously more damage in range form as well, especially combined with the arc like crown. Sorry, the half hyper crown, not the arc like crown. Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's a good choice. Um, I would like to see pick up a, pick up a symbol of rage at some point as well, or possibly a wing bow. Um, but no, what do you think? Well, I think that, uh, okay, in the meantime, we've got an engineer is going to find a quick death to Gauntlet. Pebble's taking a lot of pressure as well. Is going to probably end up dying to the dragon. And in the meantime, I didn't even know what happened to the Electrician. Where did he die? But they're all, the point is that all three of them are dead with no buybacks. Is this a mid rax 35 minutes into the game? I would say yes. I think they've got enough time and enough damage to take out the rack, so... Yeah, it'd be fantastic if they get it. Um, another really good team fight. Unfortunately, Pebbles blinked in. He was caught by the coordinate of team, so he was really negated in that fight. But uh, yeah, just like the other team, the Rax. So it's certainly not the game. I mean, one Rax does not necessarily mean that you're, that you're out, but it certainly is a bump in the road, to say the least. Yeah, so 25 seconds on both Elec and Pebbles. Um, Many Raxes Gauntlet now, is going to hook Malakin back with a short sword throw on cooldown, but a nice tablet from Aluna is going to allow Malakin to get back up on the high ground. Ooh, that was looking dangerous for Malakin. Really yep. well played by Moira and Gauntlet there. Getting that uh, stun on Moira and then the follow up hook back by Gauntlet. Really, yep. really love that uh, that team coordination. But, uh, I, I, love, I like the on coordination. The flip side, as well. uh, oh, Go on the go flip on. side, though, Luna <laughs> just uh, saving the Malakin. So, yeah, I was but, about. To uh, yeah, I... uh huh. No, I was about to say I like the fact they committed to the range racks as well. Um, I think having the range creep with the extra push potential is always really useful. Um, so, I like that. that I like that they committed and uh, took the second racks on top of the first. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people really value the uh, the melee racks because you know just because the melee creep are much more numerous. Um, whatever it is, uh, Malakin is going to get jumped on and takes a voodoo puppet, just instantly disintegrates. Electrician taking a lot of auto attacks, but he is trying to run away. He's actually able to get some distance. 
he's not going to die. He's going to live. Gauntlet's pushing forward. No, Baraxas is going to jump on the Engineer. They are going to take that kill on the Malik and just quickly exit from this, uh, from this fight. As they look to just, as a team, push the second set of Raxas now. Yep, they'll take it. And it's Malik can't fight back, so it should be Rax number two, which I think will probably secure the game for them. Um, but yeah, Electrician very tanky, as we saw Run away managed to escape, but it, I don't think it changes too much, to be honest. I think Hellborn is still going to push and uh, yeah, do what they want to do. So yeah, and the big thing is Electrician has a shotgun head down. Engineer is going to jump in. He's going to catch Puppet Master. Energy Field is going to trap a couple of them. They have to be forced to walk it through it. But now, GCR knows that that big cooldown from Engineer is going to be on, is not going to be available. So they've got 20 seconds to do a little bit more damage to this Tier 3 tower, but it looks like they decide not to risk it and just to extend their lead on other parts of the map. Yeah, so I had to eat my words there. I thought they wouldn't be stopped, but the energy field obviously stopped the push, um, gave time for Malikan to uh, to respawn and just pushed them back. So yeah, well played there from Shawkan. Absolutely. I would, like, so. I would like to see. Sorry, I would like to see Hellborn go for Congor soon as well. Um, I think they've got enough space to take it, and they could probably take it pretty quickly too. So that would be quite quite nice. And a symbol picked up from Puppet. Symbol and Jinjuro and BKB. I mean, Puppet is very, very farmed this game, and it's certainly a hard target to bring down. Gauntlet Invis going to be passed by by this smoked electrician. Always fun to see that type of thing. But um, yeah, it looks like BEC are pro are setting up for their Congor kind of. Nope, they're pushing out with Veiled Rods right now. So this is a brewing engagement. Electrician is going to go on to Puppet Master. Devils is going to combo. Arcane Vortex is going to save Puppet Master. It's a quick kill on the engineer before he gets his ulti off. Malakin is pushing pretty hard into this into the dragon, but he's very, very low HP. They do find the kill onto Pebbles. Malakin just posturing on such low HP is not quite able to get killed. He is gonna finally die. And Maraxis dies as well, but it's a three for one, and it looks like the next map objective is available for good clan rejects to take, as they do find a fourth kill on Electrician there. I don't know if you saw the. <laughs> there was a big man fight between Draconis and uh, Malikan. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, primarily what I was focused on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was huge. Um, Draconis, you know, saved by the aura from the, uh, the Frostfield, uh, which did negate his attack speed um, on Malikan. So I liked the. Uh, yeah, I liked watching it. Yeah, it's a bit. Of, I mean, it just kind of highlights the uh, the difference in farm between the two heroes um, because that's not necessarily something that I would expect. Uh, I wouldn't expect Draconis to be able to out-sustain uh, Malakin. No, not at all. Um, I do believe Malakin received a nerf to his heal, um, I think, last patch, so I don't think he heals quite as much as we do see him buy back. It's it's more of a nerf, though, kind of piggybacking off of that. The, the nerf on Malakin's healer is more prominent at lower levels. Um, okay. With all max, with max rank, uh, sort of the dam, it's slightly nerfed, but it's basically it was changed from four percent, uh, five percent to four percent at max rank. So it's uh, it's pretty on point from wh from where it was previously. Okay. Okay. But I think it's just the difference in farm and the fact that Frostfield plate counters Malakin so well. Yeah, it does. Um, we do see a heart picked up, as you mentioned earlier, which is uh, something I like to see after a shrunken head because it makes him very, very difficult to kill. Um, do you think Absolutely. heart was a good pick? Do you think it was? Oh a good yeah, pick yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a reason I mentioned it. Um, you know, he he's basically not. It's very, very hard to burst him with the heroes that they have on uh, in the hands of BEC. So, you know, Draconis having the Frostfield plate for to defend against, you know, physical aspects and then the shrunken head to help defend against burst burst magic damage and cc control uh, i think the heart's a great pickup I, I don't ever see him dying through the remainder of this game unless like we have we see a perfect alignment of stars for big eager crew <laughs> yeah i think at this stage in the game i don't think legion have enough yeah, all the all the damage is on malika now because pebbles is getting picked off quite quickly um so yeah draco is Gonna have that freedom to kind of roam around the team fight, pounding the water attacks, and I don't think he's yeah gonna die at, at all. So Gauntlet finds a kill onto Engineer in the bot lane, missed it completely, but 
as you can see the result engineer is going to be picked off so pebbles is kind of smoking after gauntlet here it looks like gauntlet is going to get jumped on by pebbles hold that thought he is going to take a pebbles combo malik and sword throw is coming out the bkbs are burned on pebbles and gauntlet the voodoo puppet is completely wasted actually no it's not it went on malik excuse me so they do find a quick kill on the malik with puppet now Hellborn is pursuing hard. The Arcane Vortex is going to catch up Electrician and Aluna. Aluna is going to fall very, very quickly. Electrician is kind of just chilling in the trees here, hoping that he doesn't get uh, discovered. Satellidium on Pebbles is going to find a kill on the on he's the Gauntlet. He's, he's juking. <laughs> yeah, he's getting chased down by Maraxis right now. But it looks like this is going to be a second set of Maraxis. Maybe. Let's see what kind of defense Big E or who can formulate. They do burn the gl the glyph, trying to buy some time, but Electrician in the back. Looks like he is going to try and PK on the back line, maybe. Electrician is going to go on the back line. Pipe of Master is held as the energy field does come out, trying to control the Hellborn heroes. Engineer is going to fall. Rax is pushing forward. The second Rax, second melee Rax, and range Rax are going to fall. Pebbles is not going to go in. So, for the price of Gauntlet, actually no. Oh, the Aluna snipes are going to catch Mo are going to catch Moira. So, but they are happy to find that second set of Raxes, and it doesn't really matter who dies yeah. on their side, as they do have buybacks on their important core cast. Yeah, the Moira, Moira death is pretty irrelevant at this stage, having the two racks lead now, especially with Malikun only, only on one buyback. Um, the Lunar as well, um, whereas Hellborn have all of theirs and those have got gold pulled up, I think. Yeah, it's probably a game over at this stage. Kongor's respawn, so Hellborn might take that after the Ancient stack is killed. Um, so yeah, that'll be another boost for them. Yeah, the third Kongor is going to come out for good clan rejects here. And, I mean, what's the strategy from here? You know, they don't have a token, they don't have a Kong buff, but they are very, very far ahead. Do they just... Do they just man up and go top lane and force the issue? I would say so. There's no reason why they shouldn't. They've won, you know, pretty much all the last few team fights that we've seen. So, if they just group up now, go to top lane, uh, try and get a pick off like they have been doing on the Pebbles, Engineer, Luna, then... Yeah, it should be should be GG, especially with the mid creeps and the bot creeps pushing in too. I think um, is smoking into the jungle here. He just misses the vision on electrician. Electrician is very very aggressively positioned, but they smell this gank coming as they all abandon the top jungle. <laughs> Pebble, Pebbles is back in his favorite favorite position. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Pebbles has been a tree hugger this game. Pebbles, <laughs> I've seen, I've seen him just chilling next to the trees for quite a while, <laughs> many many times this game. Yeah, he's definitely a fan of that spot. Yeah, uh, so Malikun. See... Sorry, I was about to say Malikun with the firebrand. He's had for quite a while now. He hasn't been been able to finish his Geo Bane. Do you think if he had his drop to Spain, it would have made a difference to the team fights, or do you feel, still think he would have been rolled over? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, obviously it is 66% uh, more damage as those illusions do, uh, at, when those illusions do you know, stay up and everything. But uh, I feel like the main reason that you pick up a Geo's Bane on Malakin isn't necessarily for, I mean, they do add damage, but I feel like it's for the eventual counter to a, um, what's that item? Spike Bola. Mentioned it earlier. Yep. But uh, no, I mean, it, it certainly it certainly could have turned the tide. I mean, uh, just you know, kind of in a specific instance, we saw him manning up against Dragon, right? You know, that extra damage from Geo's made really a big difference uh, in that particular fight. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, he didn't have it, so that's not the case. But it looks like this is uh, could be the final push from Good Clan Rejects since Big Eager Crew's base. Gauntlet is going to find that hook on the Engineer. Engineer is going to fall very quickly as well as Pebbles before they can get their spells off. Pebbles is going to buy back. Malakin is in the middle, but there is just too much damage. He does not have a buyback. And it the is three GG. heroes dead. 
for Big Eager Crew, and GG well played is called out. The concede vote is being called, and it looks like Good Clan Rejects are the victors of this cycle number six. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an NA team taking the series. This is the first time we've seen an NA team. It's It's been EU, 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 EU for the last five cycles. I'm excited as an NA, as an NA, uh, <laughs> in a person <laughs> to see a North American team take one of these cycles. Yeah, congratulations to, uh, to Angry Testy's team. Uh, they played very well game one, game three, and I think they deserve the final. Um, but yeah, hats off to them. Absolutely. Uh, very, very strong performances by both teams and all three games, but unfortunately for Big Eager, they just weren't able to find the victory in the third game. So the series goes to Good Clan Rejects. So, what was it that game that uh, went wrong for Big Eager? I think just getting caught, you know, with. <clears throat> sorry, the first po first thing that I noticed was when Moraxis was caught with the eye um, against the jumps from Hellborn, losing the eye, and then Pebbles got picked off soon after. I think that kind of shifted momentum in Hellborn's favor. Uh, Draconis farmed really well, picked up the items he needed to, Shrunken picked up on Gauntlet, Shrunken picked up on Puppet Master, you know, Legion putting all their damage onto to Pebbles and Malakon. But with um, Pebbles getting picked off so early in the team fights, he couldn't do too much, so Malakon was left alone and, yeah, unfortunately was dealt with by the uh, the Hellborn team. Yeah, Maraxis and Gauntlet doing a fantastic job that game, creating space for Puppet Master and Dragon. I mean, you said it best, you know, Dragon was able to get all the items that he wanted that game. It was just a fierce presence to be reckoned with. Um, I mean, that hero, it, it, we've seen it actually blind banned in some of these games, and we're, I think we're kind of starting to see why. That hero can be really, really frustrating to deal with. Mm -hmm. And, yep. I mean, the Volcano is such an excellent zoning tool in some of these large team fights. But, uh, you know, I think that the MVP of that game certainly goes to Mathbro on Miraxis. That was a, a really, really great showing from him. I mean, just he was playing phenomenally from start to finish. Um, in the early game, it was looking pretty grim for his team, but you know he was doing really, really well just right out of the gate. So I got to hand it to Miraxis there. Oh yeah, definitely. He was you know the saving grace early game with the highest GP up on their team, and uh, yeah, only died twice. Ten kills, fourteen assists. So yeah, fantastic game from him. So that's going to conclude it. Once again, Good Clan Rejects are the victors of this cycle number six, and I'll leave it up to Paradise to see what comes next. Are we, whether or not we're doing an interview or not, I have no idea. Uh, while we figure out, so I don't know. Uh, well, I don't want to fumble my words, but uh, you know, I'm kind of all out of uh things i want to say <laughs> no no i'm uh, i'm at the same place i'm very tired but no i think yeah as we said um massive congratulations to you know the u.s team from the usa and uh canada who played fantastically um i do think they deserve this cycle i was very impressed with how they played against donkey kong um because donkey kong did have a very very good game against hex who yeah who were out of the tournament very very well, not very early, but uh, earlier than they would like to have been. Um, but yeah, overall, very entertaining, fantastic um, plays from many, many teams. And uh, yeah, it's been a great watch. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess one of the things I want to uh, mention is the fact that we have seen uh, multiple teams uh, take the each each of these cycles. I think Big o Eager Crew has taken the most, but we have seen the last cycle was, I think it was Team Tim that uh, was was victorious and now we've seen good clan rejects take one and of course we've seen big eager crew take several so um what this is all building up to is after cycle number eight i believe paradise uh, may correct me but the, the eight cycles that we're having are going to generate more or less the brackets for the big Hoen han omg uh tournament at the end of the year and so this is going to be building up december 12th you said yeah, so December 12th is going to be the conclusion to all of these cycles. We're going to ha have a big grand tournament 
uh, between all of the teams that have won these cycles and, of course, any of the contenders that have shown up as well. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how large it's going to be, but uh, it's going to shape up into a major, major finish for some of these fantastic uh, teams. And so you can kind of view all of this as like one big or just, you know, these bi-weekly events that are just really, really great training grounds for some of these really strong teams to hone their skills and get better leading into this large tourney that's uh, right around the corner. All right, we're making an interview. Okay. All right, so who do I have here? I've got What You Got and Satellidium. How's it going, guys? How do you feel? Hey, John. You're yeah, not, uh, le- not doing too well, but uh, it is what yeah, it is. You know? I should, that was a dumb question, honestly, <laughs> nah, uh, to ask both it's of you. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess I'll start off with what you got. I mean, Chris, what a great uh, Dragon game there in the final, the final game of the series. Uh, you are certainly a top-tier jungler. Is are jungle strats going to be a normal thing from for your team coming out? Uh, to be honest, like we we don't practice them too much, so it kind of affects like our team synergy a bit when we run junglers. But uh, if we can make it out of the early game stages with a jungler, we start to feel really confident once we go into the mid game. If we can keep the game kind of at an even pace. So one of the things I've noticed is that uh, in all game, just about every single game I see you in, there is no Philia blind band uh, because they don't want you to play it. Dude, Big Ego Crew is so rude. They ban my Ophelia every single game. And by game three, I was like, can I please play Ophelia? Like, why do you guys hate Ophelia so much? So but just a they, couple of questions. They just gave me the no. To that end. Um, so... We saw a great performance with Dragon in, in this final game. What other jungle junglers do you think are viable outside of Ophelia and potentially Dragon at this point? Uh, I think Tempest has always been viable, but you there there's games for Tempest and there's games where he's not super good. Because Moira is a super meta hero right now, and Moira I consider to be a pretty hard counter to Tempest just because it cancels the Shrunken pretty easily. But uh, uh-huh. Tempest is a pretty good one. And uh, I think there's some other heroes that can jungle okay, but it does kind of require the proper team setup for them to work. Heroes right. like Wild Soul and stuff, they can work in War Beast, but they're more passive than the other junglers we mentioned. So the team has to be able to not lose the laning phase too hard because those heroes have a hard time coming online like super early in the game. Makes but perfect they, sense to me. But they are viable. I think. And a uh, final question about the jungle, you know, just kind of pivoting from what we what we saw in the game. Um, what's your what's your mindset whenever you have a hero like Draconis who obviously, you know, you want to have this great start because of how great the, the hero can snowball. What's your mindset whenever you are getting receiving so much pressure in the jungle, right? We saw a couple of situations where you got roamed on. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, they blocked two of your camps going in uh, right out of the gate. Uh, Aluna followed you into the jungle, the Legion jungle, whenever you decided to rotate to that side. I mean, what's your what's your mindset whenever that kind of stuff happens to you? Uh, mindset's usually fine. It, what it comes down to is it's it's a lot of watching the map and a lot of team communication, calling out rotations in the early game, and just making sure you try not to give up kills and get the farm and experience and make them chase you around. If you can make them chase you around, then the supports become underleveled, and then you have a, a f- like a fourth hero with farm. Because ideally, you get farm on all three lanes, and then you have a fourth hero uh, giving you an advantage uh, if you can make them chase you around. Uh, but, but in that game specifically, uh, the plan was to try to hit six as fast as possible. And they actually did a really good job of keeping me underleveled. I think I got six, like, either at six minutes or something really slow. And if you let a Draconis free farm, he can get that by like around four minutes or something around there. So they did a good job of uh, slowing me down. But uh, the game mm-hmm. plan was to get the level six and start to make rotations and help the lanes. Absolutely. 
and um, to Sate. So I'm I'm going to take you back to game one, where, and I hope you forgive me for asking this question because it is, um, you know, you, you fell prey to this. But how does how is it laning against something that you don't see in these series very often anymore? A dual lane, something as scary as Pebbles Engineer. I mean, what's the how do you deal with something like that? Well, as a hag, you don't. Like, we lost this game because of the dual middle pebbles. And there's, like, in that sense, if they choose to lane it that way, we're getting outdrafted. As we can't put anyone anything middle. Like, you can't dual lane a hack at all. And uh, Pebbles Engineer has enough damage to kill me from full HP. I'm playing the per lane perfectly, 560 HP. And they, they ding level 2 and they stun and kill me from full HP, and I cannot blink. So there's right. actually like literally no counterplay to if I get pebble stun. So I have to stay out of pebble stun range, and then I can't play in the lane. So mm -hmm. they just killed me a couple of times. Maybe, maybe we should have uh, put uh, Volker for something middle, and I was going top versus uh, nitro. But then again, I I also get stomped versus a nitro, as he can just all walk across the creeps. We yep. kind of just lost in the drafting stage with them having the dual mid pebbles, which is like. If you get that, get that hero a good start, it, like it usually just spirals. He had some very good rotations with the PK. He had like nine minute thirty PK each. I was like, he yeah. was actually going back to base. I'm like, uh, he probably has PK now. And then uh, he, he kills uh, kills a dodge in the bottom lane like ten seconds later. So, so I mean, what's the what's the how do you kind of corral like like yeah words thank you paradise i mean how do you overcome that kind of a deficit i mean like you know obviously it's very frustrating in the moment but i mean looking back at it is there anything you, you mentioned the draft kind of allowed that pebbles to to take over because hag mid really has no response and you're absolutely right i did see a 100 percent uh to zero kill on you and i was just kind of flabbergasted because it was like Man, that that sucks. Like, how can you even play against that? You don't, basically. But I mean, are we going to see kind of a resurrection of the dual lane meta with that kind of thing, or is it specific kind of a, a drafting phase type thing that you have to kind of be aware of? I mean, like having flexible heroes is always king. So if you have heroes that can lane in many different ways, because they could have just had the NG NG Knight to top lane as well and have okay lanes, then Bilbo wouldn't be doing as well middle as I'm a... I can do well against Pebbles with Hag, but they, they just chose to lane it this way. So I think picking heroes in general that can lane different ways, allowing for that rotation to play dual mid is very, very good. A question if I, sorry, a question for Sati, if I may ask. The third game when you played Pebbles, you went for spell shards before Shrunken. In hindsight, do you think going for Shrunken first might have been better, or were you quite happy going for Spell Shards first? I think Spell Shards was fine, because, like, the thing is about this game, I kind of choked this game. Like, uh, the third game, I didn't really have the impact I was supposed to. I did play, I played way well in laning phase, did fine, whatever. And then uh, outside of laning phase, I have PK pretty early, and I just can't, can't find anyone. I have no idea where they warded this game. Like, I'm going to watch this replay 10 times. Because I couldn't find anyone anywhere, wherever I went. They just went back every single time. I was running so much over the map, like just letting my GPM go down and go down and go down. I just couldn't find anyone. And uh, But spell shots would have been fine. I think spell shots are still good because you one-shot waves. And what I needed to do when I couldn't find anyone is just probably dodge. Just farm. Burst waves instantly and, and PK out so they can't catch me. As like my PK was like maybe six or seven minutes earlier than the Gauntlet PK. Yeah, I mean that was one of the things that uh, we we were definitely noticing about you in that game in the game three is you were really you know you were I really love this style of play where you are willing to commit and just kind of sit in a cheeky little spot a little corner of the map for you know thirty seconds to a minute just willing to take that gamble to find like a big pick I'm a big fan of that style of play but it's just, unfortunately yeah, they it just didn't never work out for up. you they never yeah. showed up I was sitting like they have to go here. They have, like, Puppet has to come now. There's no way he doesn't show up. Like, what's going on? And then he doesn't show up, and I'm just sitting there waiting. Like, my GPM is just spiraling. So I just did manage to translate my, my early PK into kills, and 
then they have the jungler in Dragon and farms incredibly well. So we just lost due to me not finding picks, to be honest. Uh, it's kind of on my cape this game. Well, I think you're putting a little bit too much pressure on yourself, but certainly as as the mid player and as somebody who plays mid in, in their games as well, I mean, I think that tends to happen. It's a it's a very very uh, it's a tough tough role to play. Well, I mean, I'll just yeah, shit that. happens, man. I I played <laughs> yeah. really well in the first and second game. Like even with the hack, I recovered well, did good in fights. Second game, I really did a lot on the supports. I just didn't have a good game, and I, I was and I played say... bad, and shit happens. Then we just lose. It's it's what happens when you when you you play at this level. If you don't perform, you just lose, and that's all right. I mean, that's okay. I was gonna say how uh, we should talk about game two because Sate played a really good Lord Sulforis, and uh, mm -hmm. there was one point where Testy was like, uh, "I used all my men on this guy, and he's not dying." It was just like we we felt how tanky Lord was. He, he was a big nuisance for us, and uh, I think he's one of the big reasons why Sandrith got to recover so well in uh, in game number two. So he he made a lot of space for Dutch to to come back into the game. Definitely. Um... And I, I think that Shorkan and Volka did. Uh, we were talking. <laughs> we were. Uh, I think BKB coined them as the Wolf Pack in that game. They were just uh, <laughs> hunting you guys like to no end. Um, but certainly, I mean, Sate on on Salforus, especially with a hero like Salforus, is just one of these heroes that just doesn't die. And uh, I mean, I, I mean, was surprised actually with the, how well I did against the Ragnar. I was like. Man, this is still a tough, ma tough matchup, and I run in middle, and he doesn't do damage to me, and I'm like, wait, this is not a tough matchup. I just yeah, that's got one of the things we first were. Uh... On Iron Shield, and then he can't hit me. Like I don't know, it's super strong. Right yeah, now. BKB and I were actually very impressed by by your creep score in the early landing phase. Uh, you were actually winning against uh, Arachna like pretty decisively. I think you had like twice as many creep kills and like just straight up more denies. So, yeah. Yeah, I felt it was actually stronger than I thought it would. I was like, nah, it's, it's still a rack, and it's going to be tough. But then, like, as soon as I had Iron Shield, like, Iron Shield is just so strong right now. So I was impressed with the Sulphurus as well. I wouldn't, I didn't think I would do it that well. But, yeah, Sulphurus is very good. And we picked it when we saw the raw, as I was kind of predicting, like, a testy raw mid. But uh, you obviously ended up landing it differently. We were actually planning to put Testy on Ra, and then we, um, I think like a last minute pick is we wanted to th uh, pick up the Arachna, and uh, that's more of a Testy signature hero, so we decided to give Bilbo Ra. And uh, yeah, you guys played really well in that game. Yeah, I'm. Uh, so anybody else that has any questions, I'm actually kind of running out. <laughs> Um, no, you're not. Sure, go ahead. So, I, I have <laughs> I have a confession to make. I, I just unmuted. The bot is not rigged, Chris. <laughs> the bot Dude, is not rigged. We, we've swapped. Okay, so for those who don't know, watching the stream, when there's a third game and it's EU versus uh, US, East, US, we roll for the server, okay? So it's a it's a fifty fifty of what server we're gonna play on in game three, and we have rolled four times now with four different players. We have literally swapped the guy who rolls four times, and we have lost all four rolls. So I don't want to say rigged, but I mean we either we all just have really bad RNG, or maybe our fifth player. Uh, I think Look, math. Man. I think math is the last guy to I roll, mean, so he is rolling next time we have a third game. In a series. I will say, like, the servers, like, you, you guys beat us in the first game on yeah. EU, and then we beat you on EU's East, so it was kind of reverse. Yeah, it was time. pretty funny, actually, what happened today. And last time uh, we played against you in semi semi-finals, I think, uh, mm -hmm. we had, we we lost the first game to your Fila, which is, by the way, why we banned it every single time. But then <laughs> yeah, that game, there you had double EU's East, two games in a row. So oh, Okay. All right, fair fair points. So it's we're... a couple of, couple of cycles ago though, so you might yeah, have so we're at least really bad luck lately on the servers. Well, um, I was going to say, you know, the silver lining is that you guys are getting plenty of practice on EU servers. Yes, that is true. You have these new servers too, right? Like uh, the fan server or 
You guys have better ping on these, right? Yes. The ones we used left. today were very, very nice. They f they felt much better than the ones from prior cycles. Mm -hmm. So um, that's good. We we've been noticing a much better ping, and the game feels a little bit smoother for us. So it, it's nice because a lot of the times, what would happen is the games would be super one sided, and at least now we're competing better on the opposite server. So it's it's good for the viewers as well, being able to see close matches. We, as you know, we don't like to get stomped or show stomps. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it, it is tough to play on different servers, and I know Math Pro is playing like 240 ping. I don't know how he does so well with Moraxis on that bad ping, because like uh, in the in in my game or second game with Self, like I think Shaw can miss like 10 compels because of the ping. But uh, Math Pro is just a beast, I guess. He just had such an early PK. He, yeah, can we? He, uh... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, he's he's just used to it. I mean, even whenever he plays US server, he's he's got uh, you know higher than average ping. So he he definitely has. You know, you you kind of wonder what the hell would he be like at a LAN event because he just plays so damn good with high ping. <laughs> it's crazy. I was just gonna say, uh, I think MVP of game three, uh, game three, excuse me, was hundred percent math, bro. He he got a okay. he, like he did really well in his lane. He got us an early PK, and we didn't have the best start to that game number three. That's what I said. And and we were saying, math, you're gonna have to carry us in the mid game, man. Get your early PK and and carry us. And he came through, so he was hands down our MVP in game three. And uh, I think we already talked about it, but in game one, the pebbles from Bilbo. 100% MVP in game one. Oh, so Bilbo was, and uh, Mathro both, <laughs> both playing insane today for us. Yeah. Everybody else played I. They, they did okay. They did what we <laughs> wanted them to do. So uh, no complaints to Testy and Roz. <laughs> nah, the more actually built unstoppable, to be honest. Like, I don't know. I I don't know how you how he did that, and we just couldn't find you this game. Like uh, I just kept running around and could never find you. Like I don't know. I'm gonna watch every single ward you put this game, or Rosaru actually awarded the most, I think. Yeah, so that's that's another thing. We kind of swap our support uh, game to game. So I don't know if that kind of throws you guys off in terms of how we ward and stuff, but I think we all have different warding styles. So we just have really flexible players, which is nice because we, depending on what we want to draft, we. We change who farms and who supports and who, who even plays position for sometimes. So yep. that's a little bit of I a think drafting. Historically, that's interest. something that that's a bit unusual, actually. Yeah, I think. Um, and usually the competitive scenes that I've paid role. attention to in the past, I mean, player roles are pretty locked in. People usually specialize at one thing or maybe even two things, and then they just that's how they shine. And it, it, it's it's not a bad thing because. Having a player play to their best strengths is always a good thing for your team. So it's not a bad thing by all means to lock your players into positions, but it does sometimes make it a little bit more predictable in terms of reading laning phase and stuff from a drafting point of view. It's just one small downside. All right. Well, I don't know if anybody else has any any points, but uh, I nothing is come is jumping in my in my head. So, uh, but uh, I mean, just I'm good. to both of you, I, I think that it it was a, a worthy finals to this cycle, and I look forward to to what is is to come for the next two cycles, and certainly for the uh, for the grand tourney at the end of the year. Uh, I'm looking forward to it a lot, and uh, we've actually seen this. Uh, this competitive scene in i mean i love it i love what's actually taking place in the han community right now um you know scrims are happening out on a weekly basis uh it's bringing a lot of top tier players together uh across teams even um a lot of meta strategies are are kind of shaping up and uh it's really influencing the um it's actually helping you know because as i, I believe you are you have element users ear to a certain extent, right, Wig? Mm, and it's, it's kind of helping uh, sh shape up the um, the balance of the game, even. Yep. Um, Competitive scene definitely influences. Uh, so, and that's something that Han has needed for a while, 
in terms of you know hero balance and everything it's it's always difficult to to see you know what what needs to be adjusted whenever you're not really seeing things happen at the highest uh, level of play and that's just something that this tournament uh, cycle is bringing so i'm loving it yeah the balance matters, matters a lot it, like it's amazing getting to impact it so uh... I hope uh, I'm lo looking forward to the next patch a lot. Like every time there's a patch, it just switches up the meta somehow, and you can play differently, and it's cool. The next patch is gonna be early December, so in about a month, a little over a month, and it's a I don't know I don't think I'm really allowed to say anything, but it's a pretty sizable patch because it's the Han I think it's the anniversary patch, or it's some special patch, so it'll be a pretty nice one. Um, well, it is, the chat is six minutes delayed, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the question is your opinion on playing jungle in the meta compared to how the teams are running tri-lanes more commonly, but I feel like you touched on that a little bit already. Um, well, the um, thing about tri-lanes is, is a lot of the time when you run a tri-lane, it's to get your carry free farm and also to try to like snowball the game. If you win the tri-lane really hard, a lot of the times you snowball the game because you get really big and uh you slow down that one lane and and usually the two solo lanes go like even or maybe uh one or two lanes gets a snowball if we're in control or something but uh when you run a jungler versus like tri lane meta the the jungler or uh like the non tri lane setup forces the tri lane to make a decision do we want to keep the lane setup as it is and you know control the carries farm or do we want to uh like follow them around and stop the uh, the farm from the opposing team because if you run a jungler it, it usually means the supports have to chase you around which is exactly what we saw in that game right so. yeah so it just kind of switches uh, up the play style of the of the game and and that that's why drafting is so important because if you if you pick a jungler that's too passive and your your lanes can't deal with the pressure then you you could just lose right off the bat due to uh, heavy pressure from the tri-lane makeup. I feel like drongles, like either they work really well or they don't work at all. Yeah, they can uh, really be punished uh, so with their weakness. It depends on your players. Like you guys have uh, you obviously, and a very strong jungle player. And we have Shorken that can play jungle, but he is also just like shines on the tech support. So sure, bring him. If he wants to join. Sorry, sorry oh, to shit. interrupt you, Sasha. Okay. Are you are you talking with him, uh, Paradise, or do I need to? Oh, okay. Yeah, but as I said, I think it depends on the players. Like Shokan can obviously play a jungle any hero, but we haven't had the biggest success when when trying it in scrims compared to how well our Dual and tri lanes are doing so. It's just up to the players. Jungle is definitely viable with the right heroes. We've been, we've also played Ophelia with Max on Ophelia, and every single game we've got gotten to do that. We like we blast pick it, and usually their draft is not ready for it, for it, and we just win in ten, 20 minutes or something by taking racks. Yeah, Ophelia the same thing like... can. Oh, sorry, the same thing like is for a Tempest. If you can draft it without it having a shrunken head counter, the, the Tempest. Uh, gets super great value because it's it's like uh, it, it just locks down all of the cores from the other side and allows your carry to uh, out carry multi carry lineups as well. Yeah, for sure. It's like a, a second core that that makes your yeah. main core shine. Like having the, that unstoppable tempest ulti is just such a great tool. But uh, yeah. I mean, this day and age, people are just so good at like positioning. So there's not as many good god holes as we used to seeing. I know, it's sad because they they are nice highlights to look back on. Yeah, five penalties are sick. It highlights the um, the noobs uh, back in the day. Is that what you're saying? Because <laughs> <laughs> the noobs that don't know how to position. <laughs> Just kidding. I it's mean, funny uh... to think about it because the game was so much different from years back. So it's like so much has changed from five or eight or ten years ago to now so many aspects of the game like mechanics wise and it's how the flow of the game feels there was less gpm on heroes and 
supports would run around with boots uh, only for 20, 20 minutes. And nowadays, everyone's got some kind of farm usually. So people are harder to kill and team fights are a little bit longer and stuff. Well, the game has definitely served, uh, changed significantly to, to serve that end, right? I mean, there, there's a lot more uh, mm -hmm. in-game mechanics to to assist support heroes specifically now to, to give them that. Yeah, you know. they have a lot of help now, and they can be impactful in in such a different way with so many more items. And we're seeing people shine at like being super good with tablets like Shorken or or whoever. Like you can do different things with uh, a lot more items now. But I do do miss like one shotting supports that just running around twenty minutes into the game with no boots and no items, just two wards on them. Like it, it's definitely different though. Absolutely. What happened to what happened so. to Testy? CFK. Oh, I already I, I already shouted out Math for game three. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Ma MVP. Math Bro's got plenty of uh, shout outs. I said he was MVP game three, and you also uh, completely independently declared that as well. So I think Math Pro's gotten his props in this cycle for sure, and. Uh, does that sound like jealousy? I don't think so. Why? <laughs> Why would I praise somebody and then immediately be jealous? I don't understand. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, uh, so I guess final question. Um, do you think that these uh, cycles are kind of doing a good job of highlighting which aspects of the game like need to be adjusted from a balance standpoint? If I go first here, I think definitely. As um, I think the cycle that I won, the first cycle I won as uh, with this team, as I when I joined them, I don't remember what cycle it was. Uh, my first and only victory so far. Uh, I just felt like Malikin was unbeatable. Like I think he had like maybe hundred percent win rate that cycle. Just wherever I had the Malikin, you could like it was like hard carry. You could first pick, and having that into game is just like unbelievable. Having 100% win rate on the Malikin, we just felt like whoever first picks Malikin is gonna win if you don't ban it. So, and like shortly after, there came a patch where we we fixed some of the issues with Malikin. Like his uh, laning phase is definitely tuned down, and it's it's doable now. It's a good hero, but it's not as like 100% win rate hero as it used to be. I agree completely. I'm actually glad you brought that up because uh, I actually didn't realize how strong he was myself and my team used to pick it up like religiously. Like we were probably maybe one of the teams that picked it up the most. I know you guys pick it up as well for Dutch quite often, but uh, yeah, I agree completely. And it's, it's good to see the adjustments being made when stuff uh, needs to be adjusted. So... I don't want to, uh, I don't want to pose this question and have it misunderstood as potentially complaining about a particular hero in the series that made the game difficult for you. But are there any heroes that kind of stand out to you right now based off of what you've seen? Because you both you both have played and casted several of these uh, series, right? So you know you, you have like a really really good perspective on some of these heroes that are kind of rising above. It's it's tough to say. I mean, I don't think any one hero shines super hard this cycle. Uh, to me, the most real broken hero right now is is not actually Dragon. As it's Engineer, the hero has too much flexibility being able to play in mid and side lane or uh, mid and support, and the mines just do too much damage. As you saw me just die to the ng ng pebbles combo. I don't think any other support has enough damage to kill me there, but. I mean, I think engine in general is is a bit too strong, but I didn't think it shined too too much in the cycle, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree but... with engineer. I think uh, engineer is uh, definitely a top pick right now. A little bit too much uh, burst damage in the early game, and also one other thing that came to my mind. Is I don't really lane against it, against it much, but from what I hear, the nitro orb walk is like almost an auto win in laning phase. Like whatever lanes against nitro just can't uh, deal with it uh one-on-one -on -one. so maybe that needs a little adjustment 
I haven't played against it in this tourney, but in TMM, if you get against my Nitro, especially as melee hero, but even as a ranged, you know, it's a Rachna. It's like a Rachna, and it just does so much damage. It can just run through the creeps and just punish you for like even trying to like approach the creep wave. It's very strong in laning, but I don't think uh, Nitro is too busted at the moment, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, just just the laning phase, I, I, to my understanding, is uh, unbearable or whatever. Yeah, it is. It is though. It's kind of like calamity. But I don't think Calamity is too too strong either. I mean, the, the laning phase of these heroes is just like what mainly shines. Right. Uh, well, that was my my last question, and uh, I think that it's getting kind of late for you guys across the pond. So uh, I think it is time to wrap it up. Uh, I want to congratulate both of you to making it uh, into the finals of this cycle, and of course, uh, what you got in your team for, for taking it, but uh, I'm sure that Big Ego Crew is always going to be a strong contender, if not a favorite, going into the next two cycles. So um, by all means, I'm really excited to see exactly how you guys refine your strategies going into uh, these future cycles and uh, eventually the Grand Tourney. Yep. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks, thanks for, for having me. Like uh, organizing these tournaments, it was it's always a joy to play. Even uh, though we lost, it feels bad, but it, it mm -hmm. is what it is. It, it's uh, it's so good to get uh, like to be able to compete. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, from me as well. Um, a big big shout out to Hana MG and Eyes of Paradise for organizing these tournaments and uh, for for broadcasting them and. Uh, producing them i mean i think you guys just do an amazing job and i know all the viewers appreciate it as well and especially the players for you know just having that opportunity to kind of sh you know strut their stuff uh being able to play play in a setting where they get to uh you know be casted and everything i think it's a really really cool opportunity for members of the community uh from from you know all all places so once again uh thanks paradise and hana mg and uh, I'll let you take it away uh, as I am. I need a drink of water. My voice is getting fatigued. So <laughs> thanks for having me as a caster as well. And uh, BKB, you're awesome today as well. I can shout out you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, well played to both teams. And congratulations to Goose Clan Rejects. Thank you. All right. Well, that does it. Thank you all for coming in and thank you all players for playing and thanks to all of the viewers for tuning in for tonight. That does it for cycle number six with the winner, which is uh, Good Clan Rejects. For the first time as well, congrats to them and congrats to the US viewers for the first US team to win a tournament or a cycle. And thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you. And cycle number seven, which is going to be in 11 24 2020. And if you want the month of that, that is November 14th, 2020, 1 p.m. GMT UTC 0. That's going to be the cycle number seven. One extra week on this one rather than two because of a patch coming in very soon. Anyways, thank you all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Good night, everyone.